Once again, welcome to Paris and the PokerStars European Poker Tour. The first stop of EPT 2024 has brought us to the French capital and it's day two of the main event in partnership with the Club Barrier. Around 650 players returning from a starting field of nearly 1,750. Today is the day that we play into the money, so expect world-famous bubble coverage later on today. It's James Hartigan alongside Joe Stapleton. Bonjour, my babies. And Griffin Bencher. Salut, everyone. Our second time in Paris, guys. The field's going up year on year. Big increase in the FP FPS main event. Big increase in the EPT main event. And you can be here to watch every single hand live as we play down to a final table, as we play down to a champion. Live all the way through until Sunday, when we will crown a winner. You can join us every day at 12.30 local time. Apart from Sunday, final table day will be live at the slightly later time of 1 p.m. Central European time. Hopefully you can join us every single day this week, and hopefully we can hear from you because we have got the live chat on Twitch. We have got the live chat on YouTube. You can post on X, and of course you can stay across what we've got to say on our Facebook and Instagram pages as well. Registration closing in the next couple of minutes, so the final field size, the prize pool, and the payouts will be confirmed a bit later on today. As I said, around 650 players, though, taking their seats inside the poker room here at the Palais de Congrès. And these are the chip leaders coming into day two. Gregory Fournier, the biggest stack in the room with nearly 235 big blinds. One name I want to pick out in that top 10 is last year's runner-up, Peter Jordner, the Swedish player. Swoon. Coming into play with 286k, 190 big blinds. A player we all came to know and love this time last year, Griffin. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, someone that uh, that definitely stood out with their their presence and uh, a real joy to be around. We spent some time with him afterwards and his uh, after his great finish. Not just good looking, but also good looking. <laughs> there is the man himself. No doubt wearing some expensive wrist candy. Spraggy. Good morning. How are you? We're good, thanks, I've got mate. Thirty thousand chips. Good for you. Safe waste in the day yesterday, you know? Some people are bagging 27K. I'm just ready for 30, he's a game. <laughs> we'll check in on him later on. The newest member of Team Pro, Barcelona 2023 winner, Simon Vitsiak. Leo Margetz looking for her seat at the start of play. A couple of high roller regulars, Tim Adams and Jean-Noël Thorell. There's a former PCA champion, Dimitar Danchev. And last but by no means least, the guy who came second in the 2K FPS high roller, Parker Talbot, Tonka from Team Pro, who will be taking a seat on the main stage at our first feature table. I imagine we'll change feature table 
at least once every other level, try and see as many of the players in the field as possible. But Tonka's on the main stage for this first session, along with Gail Bauman, both of them pretty short, sub-20 big blind stacks. It is Adil Touri from France who will be the table chip leader with 86k, around 57 big blinds, around the tournament average right now. Yeah, you know what, it's just, it's interesting because a lot of the times we just looked at the top 10 there and there are all these, you know, big six-figure stacks. I think it's kind of interesting to start uh, day two here with some shorter stacks. I think we'll see some more all-ins. More um, realistic. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so uh, our chip leader, only 57 big blinds and some really familiar names in the, uh, you know, not in the danger zone, but, but creeping, getting there. So we are going to be starting at right level 11 of the main event, playing my five back. and a half levels today, finishing around Before 11, 11.30 p.m. local time. Blinds are 1,500 with a 1,500 big blind ante. Parker with a little pep in his step today. We saw him sort of skipping in there in the tournament area. He's probably running late too anyway. I mean, how did he manage to finish Perfect. second in something in between day one and day two of the main event? It's pretty impressive. And Damn. cards are in the air. Hand number one of day two of this record-breaking EPT Paris main event. So, it's him. Can we please act? One second. So we have a late arrival. <laughs> who is verifying that they've signed up to the PokerStars Live terms and conditions on their phone, which then has to be removed because they're at the feature table and we don't allow electronic devices at the feature table. By the way, I'm loving the fact that Gail Bauman's got all Dexy's Midnight Runners today. I'm a fan. Dexy's Midnight Runner Runners. I've been a Gail Bauman fan for years. So we have an early position raise here from Alex Glogar, making it 3,500 with Ace King. Mm -hmm. Tonka calling from the small blind with 10-7 of diamonds. Yeah, this is just a little cocky, I think, out of Talbot. I think he's playing with a lot of confidence right now, but this is not, this is a bit irregular. You know, flatting 10-7 suited in the small blind off 17 bigs. Probably gonna be a notch or two out of what you should be considering here. Maybe sort of 10-9 suited, probably the worst uh, that you should be considering at the stack size. Okay, so Tonka flops a piece, bottom pair, but it's top pair for Glogar. Four and a half. But 4,500. Plus. Wow. A pair in the muck. A pair in the muck? I had a pair too, my friend. Better than yours. Yeah, he knows. That's why he pulled this. <laughs> Almost certainly. <laughs> well, I'm lucky that you didn't hit. I had a pair of chance. A pair of chance. Uh, guys, don't forget please to put the cards in the box for you. Come on. Oh, Look at the cards, please. Is this your first time, dude? <laughs> uh, it's starting. Maybe. <laughs> this is actually your first time on a feature? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tonka talking to Gianluca Sedolia, the other Canadian at the feature table. Six pass, seven pass. Hold it around to Sebastian Schultzer. He's out. Eight pass. Ivan Sukov from Ukraine has King 10. Raise 3,500. Raises from the hijack to 3.5k, round to the blinds. Adil Turi, the table chip leader, is in the small blind with Queen 4. He's out. And Gianluca Sedolia in the big blind. Holds 10 6. Oh, wow. You're a little boy. You're 20? You're a little boy. Wow. Parker He's not vibing old today. Old. Coming off his second and place finish. And 2K high roller. 32. 32. Ah. Mm. Very old. Who's the oldest then? Huh? Who's the oldest? You? You? No, no. I'm 40. So, you have 20 40? Okay. Huh? so we share, 18. we share. You have 28. Oh, no. Sharing is caring. <laughs> but we are aging well. 
You guys are aging well. Seven plus. You Thank both you. look younger than me, I think. Thank you, my friend. We'll put the field graphic in when the numbers are confirmed, but right now it's looking like 1,747 total entries with 640 players remaining. 25. You look about 39, 40. Right, 41, 43 plus 4. I mean, I am 38. I would have guessed 1750, so that's pretty good. You'll be all right. Sukov has raised for the second hand in a row with Jack 8 cool. of Strawberries. Tonka with Ace 5 of the same suit flats in the cutoff. Just a flat with sourdough, is it over? The sourdough is time in the sun finished? Five yeah, it's interesting, you know, this is obviously a great candidate to shove in certain situations. Um, Sukov raising in early position. Maybe Talbot doesn't want to just blast it in there and it's too strong in his head to fold. But definitely uh, a little surprising, some irregular play. Um, off this short stack from from Parker, but I think it's he's just so comfortable playing these short stacks and sort of ninjaing around that he's prepared to uh, to call these two big blind raises, see some flops. But that's not the flop he wants. He's about to get uncomfortable. Straight for Sukov. Yeah, and this this should interact with Parker's range a good portion of the time. Um, you know your 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 queen jack suited, your king jacks. Some sort of queen ten suited type hands, but not this time. Nice start. Yeah. Fold two losses. Parker misses two flops in a row, and he just has no idea what to do. That's what you get for chasing. <laughs> By the way, you get ten k more. That's what you get. You get 10k more. That's your allowance. That's the max. Yeah, that's what I can get. Unless I cash something else. If I cash this, then you get 20. But 300k wasn't enough. <laughs> Real B21 on Twitch asking which members of Team Pro are still in. Players who brought stacks into day two. Simon Vitsiak, Finton Hand, Ramon Kalias. Parker Talbot and Sam Grafton and Spraggy, as we heard, brought in at the start of the day. Schultz opening up <coughs> the gun with 10-9 of clubs. Sukov yeah, with aces. Why are you laughing? Oh, Chicky. One bust. Oh. It is possible. You need more chips for so you can double me out. Three bust. One of the, one of the kids is going to double me soon, don't worry. Five bust. Oh, don't do it, Glogar. Not the Queen 10 from the small. Isn't Glogar your favorite card in Magic the Gathering? How old are you? 4-4 four, four with flying. Cool. Now the card is a Glogarian. Oh, okay. uh, you can pass the 45 with the gray. Okay. Appreciate it. <laughs> Ace 5-5, five, five. Sukov flopping a full house. Okay. The other two players are drawing dead. Damn. Couldn't even Dude, get a Seabet okay. out of Glogar. Oh, yeah. <laughs> virtually no way for either of them to even really catch up. <laughs> to get okay. some value. The good news is, is it's like recorded on the YouTube but not like this, so we can go watch it. Right on, turn See five, River five, five would have been pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, oh, good man. for Solza here not to uh, fall into the, the Sukov trap. Okay. Um, you know, I think a lot of, there would be temptation when you find yourself at the bottom of your under the gun range here. You know, want to fold out some some king and queen highs. I think Solza might end up so what's the firing the sometimes the here. Six. But also doesn't want to just get snapped off by two eights or something like that. Repping so thin by this river. Wouldn't you have bet an ace by now? Would you really be going for value with a hand like two queens? But finally, you know, when you do find yourself at the bottom of your range, you have the strongest range in the hand. You got a chance in that one. You know, you don't want to lose its showdown here against something like King Jack suited. So do I. Mm 
Increase 10,000. Pass, pass. Pass, pass. And the maximum. <laughs> that was the maximum for that hand. Yeah. Never works out like that when I do it. Lose the maximum. Do you remember the last time you flatted aces preflop? I actually do not. <laughs> I haven't tried that one in a long time. <laughs> I feel like you have to get aces like a like a a reasonable amount of times before you can even start to think about flatting with aces. Like when you only get them twice a year. Here we go. And Sukov now with pocket eight. He's been involved in the majority of hands played so far. Granted, this is only the fifth hand of the day. He's open to three and a half K. Five pass. Six pass. Seven pass. Thank you. And it's a round to Sebastian Schultzer in the big blind. Ten nine suited. He defends. Oh. Nine suited. Back to back hands. You want to play a. Uh I'm going to play Spade. <clears throat> A7-3, all diamonds. Eights still ahead. Uh, uh, small. Well, not small. 200. 200. 200. 200. Continuation bet 500. from Sukov. 1,500. Gets a fold from Schultzer. Where are some props being discussed? I don't remember how it works. 200 if the Spade comes up. 400 if the spade plus one comes up, 1,000 if the spade plus two come up, and then 5K for quads. He said small, by the way. 2, 4, 1, 5K. I take a three. You don't remember? I don't remember. You have to pick a card. Oh, Ray. <laughs> yeah. One pass. I feel like Tonka has an edge here. <laughs> Three pass. Not going to play the ace five in early position. Ace ten. I'll let you change stuff. For Adil Turi, who's now second in chips at this table. After the last few hands, Yevon Sukov has taken the table chip lead, playing more than 100k. Turi makes it three and a half. Five pass, six pass. is on the button. She passes. Schultzer with ace queen in the small. Oh, baby. And Schultzer only has 15 bigs. There they go. Yeah. He is all in. What does this sweater say? Surf the. I haven't, I haven't been, been able to suss it out. Yeah. 10 bus. We're mm -hmm. coffee. How much is this? Should be a pretty clean fold here for Turi. You know, raising an early position, this is going to be a pretty strong shove. Shouldn't expect to ever really be dominating any aces. Sometimes you are going to be, you know, up against something like king-queen suited, but not enough of the time. Dominated by so much of the value range, you just got to... This is probably the, the top of your fold range. Thank you. And does make the right decision. Ace-jack also pretty close. Nice. Schultzer now playing close to 20 big blinds. It's all a relative short stack. How long do these decks stick around before they die? Not very long. Not very long? Depends. Players abuse them, they don't last very long at all. They are very expensive, so when people peel them aggressively and break the RFID chips in them, it makes us unhappy. And it makes you wouldn't like us when we're unhappy. Makes me want to go down there and stop bending people's fingers, then we'll see what will break. James. Yeah. Sun's getting real low. <coughs> I'm forcing... I'm gonna yeah, that's going to help. I 
I'd like to see you riffle chips without your thumbs. <laughs> Ace King for Adil Turi. Five pass, six pass, seven pass, eight pass. Sukov, six five suited in the small blind. Tempting. Call. He calls. And Sebastian Gall in the big blind has 10-9 suited. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think we're going to have us a three-way party. Oh. A lot of grafting going around. The flop is ace, queen, four. Boring. Uh, this is not boring for the ace to be winning every single hand. This is what you want. Oh, yeah. Raise ace king, flop top pair. Limp aces, flop a boat. Just wanted a little, little spice, you know? I just want ace, justice. Ace, king, jack, two spades. Maybe, maybe this will make Alex come to the next one. <laughs> come to the Continuation bet of 4,000 gets the job done. Turi playing just shy of six deep big blinds, an above average stack. Average right now, 85k with 615 players remaining. Who would have expected EPT Paris to be such a hit? I, I mean, I, I guess the people who planned it. Probably. <laughs> I mean, last year was a hit. This year, a bigger hit. A new and improved. Much better venue, Usually more space, walk, better player experience. So you hear Palais de Congrès, I mean, and you think we might be in, like, a government building. Mm -hmm. Right? I was picturing Congress. It's a shopping uh, mall. Right, three and a half, seven bus. With Chris, a cinema. Don't, don't ignore yeah, the Chris, cinema. Are we going to go see Shen and Shet later or what? <gasps> I saw the poster for that yesterday. I'm in. I would go. I don't. Can, is there any shot they have English subtitle one or no? <coughs> we just got to watch the whole thing in French. I think it'll be a better experience if you don't know what's going on. I kind of would still go. So Glogar's open here with King Queen suited. Schultz up with King Queen offsuit in the cutoff. Which is not good for my baby. Those are three bitten chips. Dimitrios on YouTube asking how many entries. We're getting that verified. We think it's just shy of 1,750 total entries. But when we come back from the first break of the day, I would expect Toby Stone, the tournament director, to confirm the exact field size and also confirm the prize pool and the payouts. So before I got around to Parker here, I was going to remark how strong this is going to appear to Glogar. This is a basically a click. Right, 3,500 to 7,500, only 4,000 more. And on 20 big blinds, a raise like this looks so strong that Parker didn't even hesitate in folding the ace-queen, which oh. would have been something on this flop. He may have even had the ace of hearts. I think it was a red ace. Um, so that's how strong this three-bet looks. Now that we're dealing with sort of a stack-to-pot ratio of, of, of almost one-to-one, -one, you know, Glogar might just have to go with this here, and uh, we could see... You know, a chopped pot or perhaps a free roll here. Well, Schultz is free rolling with the King of Hearts in his hand. Two times out of three, it will be a chop. 3,000 the bet from Schultz. And I think, by the way, Sebastian Schultz's hoodie says, Surf the Sound Waves. Oh. I have a diamonds on the turn. Now an 80% chance of a chop. 
I don't like Logar was really wearing it there. Hey, eh? he was really making it clear that he wasn't comfortable about this spot. You know, you would think you call a three bet. You just have not many chips left behind. Does Glogar ever make a massive fold here? No. Well, you'd be surprised. I mean, Schultz is representing, you know, aces, kings. I mean, certainly I don't think Glogar should fold in this situation. That's not just because I see the hands. You're, you're a bit too high up in your range with the king-queen. Your opponent can have something like ace-king with a heart. And that that is why I would not fold here. So Schultz uh, betting 7,000 into 25,000, leaving himself 12.5K behind. I would, I would exactly think a, okay. a king-queen with the king of hearts because blockers aren't real. Well, here's a question for you, though. Yeah. If Schultz did have ace-king offsuit mm -hmm. on 20 big blinds, would he three-bet minimum or would he shove pre-flop off 20 bigs? Probably shove. Right, so this is this this range that Glogar is, is sort of constructing for Schultz here is very, very strong. Now, again, still too high up in the range here, but is just going to call, keep the bluffs in there. Visibly. Now, now you've pot committed <laughs> yourself to call any river bet. Yeah. Yeah. Seven of diamonds, so no heart. This will result in a chop, assuming we get to showdown. Glogart checks a third time. And Schultz might, might not always bet here. I mean, you know, you, you are going to be getting trapped here by the nut flush sometimes. You know, you are you do want value from your queen jack and queen ten, and there is the check. So this is going to result in a chop pot. You know what they say. Everyone loves a chop pot. That's pretty cool. This was much better. Mm. Why are you fucking around with king queen, huh? Ah. <laughs> Why you make me fold the ace queen? Blockers aren't real. Really? Ace queen, case queen. Yeah, you did. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Parker realizing his. Hard to call it a mistake it's a because it's it's reflective huh? of some regret, you know, a lot of experience and um, and discipline. But not respectful. to overvalue a hand like Ace Queen in a spot like this, early position raise, three mm. bet off twenty big blinds. But you know when you happen to see one of those outcomes where you did have the dominating hand, it's a, it's a bit frustrating when you're this short stack, just ten big blinds now um, for the Canadian. Not me. I, I hate it that one. Fucking hate them. Wants to see a heart. Should be a winner, you know. So Dolia folding that. Jack Five in first position. Round to Gail Bauman. Ace nine. She is the shortest stack at the table, playing ten bigs now. Yeah. And she's all in. Yeah, Sai get ins here in early mid position with the ace nine. Just hoping to get it through. Not doing well against the call range. Round to the blinds. Tonka in the small has already folded. Adil Turi in the big has 7 3, folds as well. One was a red one. <coughs> so, among the players remaining here on day two, with around 600 in the field, we have a few gold pass winners who progressed to day two of the main event. People who qualified via Power Path, like Jeffrey Quinnen from France. Get him, Joff. Fernando de Almeida from Brazil. He won the gold power path and the gold hair dye. That is Samuel Prieto from Spain. And we have got a gold pass winner with a big stack. Noah Chan from France started today with more than 250,000 ships. Noah is a mixologist who qualified via Power Path in France for just one euro. Of course. Power Path runs every day on PokerStars. Your chance to win your way to the biggest and best PokerStars events live and online. Play through the steps 
to win a power pass, bronze, silver, or gold, and a gold power pass could be redeemed for an EPT main event package. Sedolia here on 22 big blinds, just going to defend with the ace and 10 suit. Certainly, an, you know, an wow. argument for how active Sukov's been to consider shoving a hand like this sometimes, but I like this. Keep those worst hands in when your opponent has them and don't get snapped off by a hand like Kings. Great start to the day for Sukov. More than his fair share of decent starting hands, Griffin. Yep. Sorry, I know I'm not Griffin, but... And, again, another full house. Yeah, and another um, tricky check from Sukov. Perhaps just anticipating too many folds on this texture. You know, you are going to get some bluff check raises from some straight draws and stuff like that, but decides to feign weakness and hope for his opponent to, you know, turn a pair. But instead, you just get too strong with this king on the turn. And you probably would have gotten some value on the flop from ace high. Still gets a little bit on the turn because of that sizing. Quite small. So Sugo doing everything he can here to, to get max value against the sort of very bottom ranges of hands he, his opponent's having. King's full and ace is full of fives. Yeah, and got some, some value from 10 high and ace high. On the max again. Yep. Sukov remains table chip leader. An above average stack, 108,000, more than 70 big blinds. Still an hour on the clock, still an hour till the blinds go up and we hit the first break of the day. for Schultzer. Let's it go. Sukov out. Griffin, was it annoying for you when you learned about p position and you couldn't play King-10 suited off suit from under the gun anymore? I was just thinking something of that like that yeah. bit of a morning period where you're like <laughs> oh why do i have to know i shouldn't play this yeah so it's blind v blind stodia in the small king three offsuit yeah if stodia is four i was gonna say if stodia was beside bowman there might consider a shove on 13 blinds but Instead, just finds the raise with the big blocker, gets it through. Got some chat about yesterday's 50K happening in Twitch. A couple of folks asking how much was won. Do you think it's in Twitch or on Twitch? It's the chat. In Twitch I chat. Think so? yeah, on yeah, Twitch. Okay. On t yeah, yeah, you're right. I'm sorry, not Never the 50K, about it. but... Uh, not the 50k, but the, the 2k that Tonka was playing. On the Twitch. On the Twitch, yes. Unzi asks, anyone know how much Tonka won? Yes. Thank you for your question. Thank you for your question. And how did Tonka finish yesterday when the tournament was over? Thank you for your question. Round 
to Turi in the cutoff. Oh, he's folded. So action is actually now on Sedolia in the small. Nope, Turi still has cards. They were covered by the graphics. <laughs> Turi's open to 3K. Sedolia has ace jack on the button. And he is all in for around 20 big blinds. Really too bad when you're sitting here with King Queen. It's just a bit too many chips to call here. You know, every once in a while you are going to be beating a hand like Queen Jack suited or King Jack suited, maybe a King 10 suited that would shove, flipping against a lot of hands like Ace Jack and pairs. But it's just not worth it for that amount of chips. You know, I think somewhere more in the Huge range of 12, 13 bigs definitely can call there. But 20 is going to be quite a bit too much. Is that a heart? No. I don't know what it is. It's kind of like a house. Without a door. Tonka and Gail Bauman, to still the two table short stacks. Ten big blinds each. Chill out, man. <laughs> Sukov playing another hand. And Tonka all in. All in with deuces. Wow. Griffin, yeah. suit up. I mean, this is this is how you want to play your 10 big blinds. You're just hoping everyone folds. I thought Sukov had got involved from first position, but actually Sukov folded. So this is an open jam from Parker for 16K. Turi makes the call. It's a studio flat. And Parker just praying it's exactly the kind of hand like Turi has here. Bowman, though. Oof. You know. Different from the Parker hand he had earlier with Ace Queen. But same, same. It's very tough. You know, you've seen two people enter the pot for 10 big blinds. Ace Queen shrinks up, but she goes for it. Good for Gail Bauman. Wow, third player in with the Ace Queen, and I'll tell you what, Parker Talbot is going to be absolutely thrilled to see that. Good luck, guys. Not only is he ahead, but the outs are being shared by his two opponents. I mean, it's a good scenario for you. They're sharing aces. It's a very good no, scenario. Queens is a fave in addition to jacks. Yeah, but if two people are in, you're so, you expecting someone to have the pocket <coughs> tens, and you got to hope those right. ducks are flying okay. together. Would be nice. Well, of course, if we see some nastiness here, Turi could potentially eliminate two players. Get it out of the way. Gale has Tonka covered, by the way. Looks like we have a flop. Oh no, those are the three hands. <laughs> <laughs> Very deceiving. Two players all in. Gail Bauman and Parker Talbot. Quack, 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 quack. Joe, do the thing with me. Quack, the flop. Quack, quack. It's Jack High. And now, Adil Turi is a 70% favorite to KO two players in this hand. The Tour de France. Three. Do him dirty. Three, five. <laughs> they heard me. <laughs> okay. So, a couple of more outs. Gale has the flush draw. Tonka has the straight draw. Three spades is a big carnage. Two spades. Two spades is a big pair. A little bubble on the side. <laughs> a lot of life for 
Thalman. She was hoping to see a heart on the turn if it wasn't a queen. River card is the ace of spades. It is a double <laughs> KO. <laughs> That's not a good card for you. Oh, man. Fuck you. Oh. He loses. What is that, buddy? And he loses. We lose Gail Bauman and Parker nice Talbot in the right same now. hand. Yes, good luck, guys. Good luck, you. The two short stacks dispatched by Adil Turi, who's reclaimed the table chip lead. <laughs> All right, good luck, guys. Farewell, Tonka. Thank you. You can't win them all or come second in them all. Excellent call there from Gail. Unfortunate not to get rewarded. Can she can she actually fold with her hand? Do you can she hand fold? No, no. Turi now playing. 115k. <laughs> 77 big sure. blinds. So, that was cool. Yeah, for him. So, uh, new feature table after the first break of the day? <laughs> That's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> Still have 55 minutes to play on this level. That's the minimum. Raise at least. Yes. With blinds at 1K 1500, a raise to 3000 is a min open. Sukov with deuces in the big blind. Guys, I miss Tonka and Gale. All in. Sukov shoving on Gloga. Whoa! You win. This is. I know. <laughs> very aggressive well, now stuff. You. About 33 big blinds effective. Certainly something you can mix in with pairs. You think your opponent's going to have a lot of raised folds. But it can be pretty high variance. Thank you to Undersea Monkey for reminding some viewers who might be newer to tournament coverage from the European Poker Tour that empty seats at feature tables are filled randomly by the tournament staff. We can't go out in the room and say, oh, we want to mm. see that player. We want that person on the main stage. Behind. Folded to Sukov, who's got 10 7 in the small blind. You got a lot of gall thinking about raising here. I mean, that's not even his name. <laughs> So we are going to have two new players at the table taking the seats recently vacated by Tonka and Gail Bauman. Which district are you living in Vienna? We'll find out who's coming up onto the main stage in a moment. It's nice. It's a good area. It's a good area. It's very central. And, uh, you can like, basically get anywhere like super quick. Definitely. 
five by six by six. Eight by six. Eight by six. Up on the button. Gonna continue to play hands. Yeah, and electing to size up here with the one high card, one low card. Maybe trying to fold out some hands that might continue to a min raise. I think King Seven is going to be a bit too strong for Tori to fold here. You know, I know I know copy shop. I know inter copy. Man, if you can't uh, get King Seven to fold for the key. size up, why bother? Uh, well, it's the fourth district, I know. Yeah, right. King Seven yeah. flopping all right here with a pair of sevens. Okay. This I recommend. It's also really good. Sukov with that like Queen of Diamonds what in hand. I would hand. go there if I didn't buy a printer last year. There's some path. To success, but this board like is going to hit Tori's range much more. It's a bit closer than mine. Eight and, a half. and you know what Sukov says, if I'm going to try to win this pot, I'm going to do it aggressively. Doesn't make some little continuation bet. And is going to fold out sometimes hands like, you know, let's just say 4 6 decided to call pre flop. 4-6 would continue with a check raise or a call to a small bet, but and look at that, that big bet scares off Tori. Very impressive work from Sukov. Perhaps recognizing that this bigger size is just going to freeze up, you know, mid-strength. I think King 7 probably still needs to be a continue, but it, is, it scares uh, the Frenchman off a bit. Hello, how are you? Uh, doing all right. Yeah, yeah good, good. Gonna be in this hand. We do have an, a table captain here. Forty minutes in. So the two players coming to the feature table are U.S. Pro Byron Caverman, Captain Caverman, and Louis Karam from Lebanon. Uh, that's gonna be your box, and that's gonna be your box, sir. If you don't mind to put your tickets on the side table, please. Thank you. Please keep the cards in the box for a few seconds. So, Karam dealt into this hand. Kavman will have to wait for the next hand. Wow, do they just hate Americans here? <laughs> yeah, and let's be clear about, you know, Kavman's, you know, international success. This is someone that's in the top 50 all time, almost 20 million in, in earnings. So, one of the big dogs. Just the last 10, 15 years. Top 50 of Americans just from having a passport. with the big pocket tens should be pretty motivated to just try to get in those 18 big blinds shut up lop kind of likes this tari guy <laughs> you know we have a mute button for that yeah, exact I'm reason sorry i moved the mic up i'm a little out of practice it's been a couple months i'm sorry guys please forgive me he's a little out of practice at putting james on maximum tilt <laughs> Usually he would make much more noise doing it. <laughs> Three bet does get through. Yeah. So Turi and Sukov are the two table chip leaders. Both play more than 75 big blinds. Sebastian Schultz, uh, the table shorty with 16. There is Louis Karam, who's brought just shy of 50 big blinds to the feature table. And Byron Kavman playing a stack of 97,565 bigs. Looked pretty confused there. Oh, no, he's not. It'd be funny if he was just like, what are these? 
was this worth? I'm sorry, and they were playing a game? <laughs> Two down cards, three. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Two in the pocket. In the pocket, that's right. And these cards, what do we, 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 we hold them? No, the hold cards, that's right. It is No Limit Texas, hold them. And we have blind v blind action. Gianluca Sedolia, eight six of diamonds in the small. Completes. Alex Glogar with king deuce of diamonds in the big. Adam says, I still find it hilarious. This is a European tourney and English is the only language evolved. Allowed. You know what I find hilarious? You banned. Ace, queen, four on the flop. King high, still the best hand. You know, I didn't think you'd get me with that one, and then you said you're banned, and I, mm -hmm. I, I laughed. That was funny. Three and a half. Two and a half. Three and a half. Bet three and a half. Three and a half. Three. Bet three and a half. Two and a half, three and a half. Plus. Any increase, four and a half? Doesn't matter. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think the new dealer should have to sit out one hand. Hello. Hello. I hate to break it to you, but no one actually cares what you think. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Not what only is it, it mean, but it's wrong. <laughs> 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 what is this? Say there what is, everyone's there thinking is, day? To be fair, there is actually one person. <laughs> yes, you're right. So tracking across the room, around 570 players remaining from a starting field of almost 1,750. A reminder that at the start of the second level of the day, we will confirm the field size, we will confirm the prize pool, and we will confirm the payouts. Got half the level left to run. 43 minutes left on the clock. Josh claims he watched this the other day. <laughs> Uh-oh. There's nothing, nothing worse than when the jig is up. Is Josh like one of those people who lie in the water in Minority Report? Is he able to see stuff that hasn't happened yet? What does Karam do here? Calls. Griffin, Josh what? was supposed to answer that. Oh, right. <laughs> Joe Stable and James Hardigan and Griffin Benger, a.k.a. Dory. So Karam calls the 1500. We go heads up to the flop. And that flop is 966. Ace high still ahead. Two thousand apiece. Five of spades on the turn. Karam Ooh. now with the nut flush draw to go. With ace high. Actually has the inside straight draw as well. Yeah. It's all coming up, Karam. The gutter ball, if you will. Hey. Oh. Always coming seven, and that's a straight. Hey. Yes, Dennis Nikolov. Registration has closed. It closed at the start of day two, which is today. Karam betting 7,000. Sukov folding king high. <coughs> oh, 
on to the next hand. After we've wrapped here in Paris, we will move on to the next live event, and that will be in Dublin. We'll be heading to the Irish Open 2024, the 40th edition of the longest running poker tournament in Europe. It takes place March 25th through April 1st at the Royal Dublin Society. You can qualify right now on Stars. If you can't be there, we'll provide cards up coverage of the 1 million euro guaranteed main event over the Easter weekend on the Poker Stars Twitch and YouTube channels. I don't know if I've ever been to that one. You, you, have, you have been there. The Royal Dublin Society, by the way, not a shopping mall. I'm not sure what it is other than a place. What the the, the where the Irish Dublin. Open is? It's like it's just a big it's a big place. Can I tell you all my favorite thing about the Irish Open? The food trucks. Food trucks are pretty good. But if you want a Guinness, you will have one in 30 seconds flat. They have 45 bartenders all just standing on the side of the room waiting to serve you Guinness. I usually don't like my beer flat. Get out of here. <laughs> it's good to be home. <laughs> Ace Jack versus Ace Jack. I'm so glad we didn't invite Griffin to the PCA this year. <laughs> Wait, you guys, there was a. I thought it was. Oh. Turi has opened. Schultz has shoved. All right, Tori. Yeah. Make a stand, pal. Good luck. The Ace 10 was one thing, but this Ace Jack, you gotta let him know. <laughs> Let's get the guys in the booth singing a tune. That's it. Good luck. It's too early, man. I don't like that we've peaked early. Too many tens on that first chop pot. I want to see some, you know, 11s if we really nail it again, you know? Anything is possible! Yeah, like the 2% chance that somebody wins this outright. Okay, so we'll wait for the turn and river to be dealt wait. out, but we know what's going to happen here. The pot's going to be divided equally because uh -huh. this is a chop pot. And you know what they say. Everyone loves a chop pot. Two in the first hour of the day. Let's We're spoiling go. you people. We're spoiling you. We're just chopping it up back here. Patrice has written in with a... Oop. Mm. Can we just get it on camera that Benny Glazer got aces against my kings on the second hand of the day? Would that be possible? Thank you very much. And he didn't manage to stack me. He didn't get all my chips, even though it was aces versus kings. Just checking in on some of the other team pros in the field. We saw Finton there. We're going to follow Ramon at some point in this tournament, it seems. Elias Gutierrez, a.k.a. Theros. Okay, scary. Got a member of the commentary team on day two of the EPT main, Maria Ho. Good glasses. And we have Sam Grafton now at the same table as the newest member of Team Pro, Simon Vitsiak. I'm going to say that table is a strong contender to come up onto the main stage on the other side of the first break. More good glasses. Two Team Pros. I don't know if you're about to do that. <laughs> so Dolia has opened here with Jack Nine. Karam with a decision on the button with Ace Deuce of Diamonds. Everyone folds, apart from Sukov, who's got 4-3 in the big blind. How loose does he want to defend here? Mm. 
So it is raise and take it for Sedolia. <coughs> That is a fair question from Undersea Monkey. When there are two on the same table, how does Team Pro Run Good get allocated? Is it in order of seniority? It's actually based on location. So as Simon is a local pro mm -hmm. and as we're at the French event, he gets the run good on this occasion. Should they be on neutral ground, it would be based on seniority. I didn't know that either, so thank you for explaining it to me. But it makes sense. I should highlight that option 38C is if we are at a non-EPT event, so if it's one of the regional tours, yeah. then they just simply flip a coin. They decide earlier on? Or do we wait to see who starts with the run good and that's who has it? No, before any cards are dealt, it has to be decided. Got it, okay. Schultzer opening here with king six of diamonds. We have got kings for Sukov in the small blind. This dude has picked up a lot of premium hands today. Is he going to flop a full house again? Well, I would, it turned the full house for the Kings the last time. That's true. Flopped it with the aces. That's true. I mean, you know, it's not running that good. Sometimes he has to wait several streets to make a full yeah. house. Well, clearly he is re-raising enough to put Schultz all in, and I doubt he's going to be calling it off with King 6. He has folded. Uh, Griffin stepped out of the booth because we have... A special guest with us here on the EPT Paris live stream. I'll be honest with you, I didn't think he'd be able to join us because I saw him on the player list for the start of day two of the tournament. Burn. But Rory Jennings, welcome. Thank you for having me. I'm honored to be here. I'm in a very bad mood. I'm very upset. <laughs> oh, buddy. Now, Rory, you did regale anyone who would listen <laughs> with the story of how you got eliminated from EPT Prague. That was a good bad beat story, though. I was very upset by that. I'm very upset at the moment. It's, there seems to be a theme. Whenever I play poker, it, it's, it's sort of emotions of like sheer jubilation or, or utter devastation. And right this second, off the back of what happened this morning, you know, I only played three hands this morning. Right. Three hands. I folded twice. And played one hand, and that was the last hand you played? Yes. How okay. badly did you butcher it? Uh, I, pretty, pretty badly, I think. It, it, <laughs> do you know what? In the end, it ended up being just a straight race. It was, it was okay. tens, tens versus ace, king suited. Brian, yeah. you were uh, relatively short coming in today, or no? Yeah, you no. Do, do you know what? I played all day yesterday. Yeah. It was ridiculous. I played all day, grafted, did everything that I could. I was, you know, all over the place, and I finished the day on exactly thirty thousand chips, <laughs> <laughs> exactly starting stack. So, would you have preferred to buy buy in today for thirty thousand, or spend the whole day yesterday having fun? I do love playing. So, yeah. I, I had a, I had a good time yesterday. I met some great people at the at the table. The, the atmosphere is always brilliant. So, I had a, I had a nice day. I just didn't benefit from playing at all. You know what we should do is we should get some members of the Chelsea Football Club to come in and comment on his play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. They could. I hope they wouldn't be as brutal as I am about that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's got to be at least one player who hates you. I'm going to guess that most <laughs> members of the Chelsea Football Club are worse poker players than Rory, and, and that, that, that's, that, that's saying something. But no, in all, in all <laughs> seriousness, true. you've had some decent results, Rory, in the time that you've been playing on the tour. and uh, you've been, Obviously, live stream viewers have got to see you a few times. You're deep running the PSPC at the start of 2023. <laughs> yeah, you one of the best a, days of my life. Big feature table in EPC Barcelona. Uh, last summer, whenever we get to see you play poker, and I'm glad you said that you enjoy it because <laughs> we don't see that in your eyes. What we see is Rory Jennings' stress face. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm full of I'm full of trepidation and fear, but I think that I find it I find it invigorating. Like I really do love it. I don't I don't think I get a thrill. I don't think I get a buzz from anything like I do poker. Like nothing. No, like I've seen Chelsea win the European Cup. And it didn't quite hit me the way that it hits me. Because well, you're not actually on the team. Because I'm not actually doing it, I think. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, but it's like, you know, Chelsea winning in Munich would be one of the best days of my life. But nothing quite hits like... 
the card that you need when it lands on the river. Nothing feels I, like I can agree with that. The few times it's happened to me, it certainly <laughs> is, is an indescribable feeling. James, I actually got to shoot some stuff with uh, Rory and Adam yesterday. And as stressed out as he looks when he's playing poker, those two are absolute professionals at what they do. Do you know? I, do you know what you wouldn't? You may not know this. This could be a huge spoiler for everybody. But Joe Stapleton, elite goalkeeper, <laughs> genuinely elite goalkeeper. I had, I did have one save and one goal yesterday, which, um, which is better than me. I think they went a little easy on me, to be honest. But I think on camera it won't be that obvious. No, you, you were, you were exceptional. We could not keep up. <laughs> I'm glad that you gave the American a role where he could actually hold onto the ball with his hands. Yeah, he could use his hands, yeah, yeah. legitimately. Yeah. It's so funny because one of the uh, goalkeepers, I forget who it was, did a save with their elbow. And I, for Vincent, I believe. Vincent, and I forgot that you could use your hands while in goal. So I was like, <laughs> is that illegal? Is that okay? He used his elbow. <laughs> yeah, is that all right? <laughs> so, Rory, you are one third of the club podcast team. I, Joe, you already mentioned Adam. He's going to be joining us on stream in about 10 minutes' time. Boovy's here as well, right? He is. He is, yes. And um, obviously, we've seen you guys at a number of events, both the EPT and the UK IPT. Um, you do love coming to these events. You do love playing live poker. It's, it's a thrill like no other. Also, they're just such they're such good events. They're so, they're so well. Did, uh, uh, sorry, has Byron Cavanaugh just flopped a straight with a redraw to a straight flush? Sure did. <laughs> he has. I wish that happened to me earlier. You might uh, you might be here for a straight flush, Rory. So you can anytime a cab driver says, "You ever seen a straight flush?" You'll be able to like, yeah, uh, with you two. As That's well. right. It'd be it'd be a symbolic moment in my life. Fingers yeah. crossed it happens. Oh, no, it's probably not going to get that far, is it? Yeah, because Tori has sweet FA. And he felt. <laughs> sweet, did you say sweet FIFA? <laughs> we like to keep it relevant to the guest. I like it. Football puns. Football puns galore. It makes me feel at home. I was playing with him the whole day. I finished 10th. But yeah, so all three of you are here. Yes. And, of course, we're, what, just over a month away now from the Irish Open. Can't wait for that. And I know there's a lot of fun stuff planned for you guys while you're at the Irish Open. But before that, there is something sandwiched in the middle that we want to highlight because we kind of like to self-promote as much as the next man, which is we've got the 300th episode of our podcast coming up, Poker in the Ears. Oh, yes. Live show at the Hippodrome. You, Adam and Boovy, are going to be guests on that show. I cannot wait for that. That's going to be a brilliant night. It's in Lola's at the Hippodrome, isn't it's it? It's in Lola's, yes. That's a wonderful room. Like, it's such a, it feels like such a prestigious location. It's going to be cool, and you guys are big-name guests, and we have a couple other big-name guests that we are not revealing. Ooh. Until the night. Wow, I don't even know. Yeah, I have not even told you yet okay. who this they is, are. This is very exciting. Some folks I'm very excited about. And we've got a game that night, haven't we? There's going to be a, a probably a hyper turbo that night, but yes, there'll be some poker. Yeah, the, the, the actual show itself, um, because Joe and I started working on the running order and so long ago, and we basically kind of stuffed it jam-packed full of great guests and big names, it's going to be quite a long show, so I don't want it to impact too much on the poker afterwards. I want people to still have the chance to play, and we're going to be awarding Irish Open packages in that tournament afterwards. But yeah, the, the show has to take precedence, so mm. it might be a little bit fast and furious, but... Perfect. No no one ever won a poker tournament without a little bit of luck, whether exactly. the blinds were long or they were short. What's, uh, what's your curfew that night? Maybe we can stick around and play like a little private cash game. I, I'm, I can be out all night. Okay, I'm, very I, good. How old do you think I am? <laughs> Indeterminate. Do you think I need to seek permission? I'm, I'm not I'm sure. Out. <laughs> no curfews. I know you're married, so you're at least 18. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm, uh... But then again, married <laughs> people have curfews often as well. Yeah, no, no curfew for me. Just going to quickly check on some of the action from the outer tables. We've got Sam Grafton playing a hand against Patrick Faro. Looks like Ramesh Kelsey also in this hand. We join it on the turn. The board is King Six Deuce Trey with two clubs and two hearts. Action has been checked to Sam. He bets 12k. Is this person watching Drive to Survive? <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> Couldn't wait. Couldn't wait. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got to catch up. New season drops on Monday. 
And so, so uh, now that I have you in the booth here, Rory, the, the, the Continentals, what, where do they play? I, that, that kit that Sam is wearing, I believe, he's got a very eclectic football top collection. I think that's a homage to an old Monaco team. I wow. Think. Oh, wow. I think. Well, two folds there, which means Sam is going to chip up to 63k. So still below oh. average, but healthier than his stack was at the start of the day. And I can confirm that when we go on break in 25 minutes' time, we will change feature table. We'll come back from break with both Sam Grafton and the newest member of Team Pro, Simon Vitsiak, on the main stage. It seems like that would be like a really sweet soccer team from uh, the John Wick series. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, oh. he's amazing. You know, he started today with less with less than me and now look at him guys. he's very good look he's a him. very good poker he's also player. incredibly generous with his time he's so kind you know, you know when I you know when I either want to talk to him about a bad beat story or ask some advice yeah. he's always so so ready to he's help. less generous the less famous you are so make sure that you keep <laughs> your Twitter <laughs> yeah. count up okay <laughs> so uh, Connor on Twitch is asking what date is this hyper turbo because he wrote in caps so you have to right, shout sure, it yeah. obviously <laughs> um it is attached to the live show that we are hosting at the Hippodrome Casino in London on Wednesday, the 13th of March. We're celebrating our 300th episode. It is free to attend. If you are a PokerStars UK player, you can go to the PokerStars lobby. You'll see it in the events tab. It's a dummy tournament, but by registering for that, we will get in touch. We'll get your name on the guest list. You can bring a plus one. We'll have drinks tokens on the night. You get to see the live show. You get to meet people like Rory, Adam, Boovey, and the other guests we've got Just coming. Ableton. Vincent and Spraggy are going to be there as well. Plus, yes, after the show has been recorded, once we've done that live show, you will get to play in a tournament at the Hippodrome. And just on the off chance that you are not in the UK and cannot register for this dummy tournament and you really, really do want to travel to come see this show, let's say you're in Ireland or France or someone that it's possible that you would come out for the show, get in touch with me personally and I will put you on the list myself. Wow, you get to be Joe Stapleton's plus one. Sort of, or I get to be their personal assistant. <laughs> So we've had the opening raise from Turi with ace-6. Karam in the big blind with ace-king. Oh. This still says shivers down my spine. Stressful hand, king. right? Ace-king offsuit. Yeah. No, I'd have, uh, I, was, I was suited. Oh, still, no. still bust. See, that's what I should have done. I just moved all in. <laughs> that's what I should have done, Karam. Sometimes you're just destined to go broke, buddy. It doesn't oh. matter. There's no, there's no like, oh, if I had only, if I'd only gone all in except for one chip, it doesn't matter. <laughs> So I imagine we'll see Turi make this look good and then fold. Respect, man. So we started day two with around 650 players. We're now down to 540, so more than 100 eliminations in the last one hour and ten minutes. You're in good company, Rory. Yeah, buddy. Yes. Plenty yeah. of people. So it makes you feel slightly better. Although I think I could have been the first. Nobody so wants that one. accolade. I, think, I genuinely think I could have been the first person. No, 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 no. You said you played it was the third hand of the day, right? Hand. Come on. Someone would have got out on the first hand of the day. I Guaranteed. think he's probably right. Yeah. I hope you're correct. Thank you. Even if you're just being kind to me, I appreciate it. No, I would be upset to be the third person out. You want to be the first. I want to be first, <laughs> yeah. Because the problem is, if you're first out, though, maybe the bloggers are still warming up and they, they miss it. You don't, don't even, you you don't don't even, even make glory. the poker news <laughs> updates. <laughs> And then you have to bore everyone with your bad beat story personally because no one can read it online. Exactly, and I will. I will do that. Especially when I see you in a lobby when you're clearly very busy <laughs> in Prague. <laughs> Didn't you, you stone bubbled though, right? Or something that like that? That was the worst thing that's ever yeah. happened to me potentially in my life. <laughs> yeah, the aces. Aces on aces the bubble. On a stone bubble. I, 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 look, I have time for that bad beat story. I got time for it. It was terrible. It was so upsetting. You lost a flip, Rory. It was not a bad and beat that, but story. But hold on a second. We, that's the thing is we keep getting this story out like one piece at a time. So by the end of this guest spot, we'll have heard the whole thing and you'll have gotten it in there one yeah. more time. Yes. I, I mean, I do tell anybody that will listen. So it's not surprising that I've managed to shoehorn it into to this. I feel very privileged, by the way, to be here. You know how many times I've... This is like... I remember... I remember when I went into the set of Coronation Street, and I was like, wow, <laughs> I've seen this on telly so many times, and now I'm actually here. It's amazing. I've listened to you two so many times on so many streams, and to, to actually be here, it's a very prestigious moment in my life. We're happy to have you. I mean, they, they kicked 
Griffin out of here real fast. <laughs> get, Griffin, get up! <laughs> Rory's coming in. So we have got a domination situation here. Schultz says kicker no good. I mean, you talk about walking on the set of Coronation Street. You were, was it a child actor or? A, a I was, I was. I did, a, I, did a, I did a bit. I mean, I did... I did EastEnders when I was when I was an adult. Right. I did a bit as a, I did a bit as a kid as well. But I remember I remember going on the like set tour. I had no idea why, but me and my mum ended up in Manchester. And she took me on the set tour of Granada Studios, which where which is where Coronation Street was filmed. And I remember going into like the Rovers Return. I was like, this is ridiculous. I'm actually here. And now that's how I feel with sitting here with you two. Were you in Doctor Who? I was in Doctor Who one episode. One I episode. I did an episode of Doctor Who. Yes. I mean. They've done, what, 8,000 episodes of that show? I feel yeah. like but the most one, of the country. The best one, Joe. Okay. Yeah, The Idiot's Lantern, who, Maureen Lippman. Who, who, was, who was the Doctor? The Doctor was David Tennant. Right. David Tennant, Billy oh, that's Piper a good one. He's, era. he's one of the good ones. Yeah, yeah no, he's Tenet, one of the good Tenet ones. Tennant Piper era. Connor, oh, nice. is, Connor is my favorite Doctor Who, but Tennant's one of the good ones. <laughs> you see, I'm of the Tom Baker, Peter Davidson generation. Oh, yeah. That's the fellow with the scarf, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. K9, oh, the yes, ro robot dog. Yes, yes. Schultz is still in big trouble here and only has 11k behind, 18.5 in the middle. Yeah, you're pretty happy to get it in here most of the time. It's up here, aren't you? Under the gun, plus one, Queen Jack offsuit. Not always expecting that one. Oh, no. There it is. Mm -hmm. Rory, you're going to be here for someone else's bad beat story. Oh, this poor guy. I feel your pain, my brother. He's drawing to two outs. He could hit an eight on the river. Come hey, on. Come on. Power of positive thinking. Come on, Schultzy. Six percent. Needs a date with an eight. It's not that hard. You just have to be on TV. Ask Rory. <laughs> <laughs> the river card. Is an ace. So we have just lost Sebastian Schultzer from the EPT Paris main event. And at this point in time, we have to lose Rory Jennings because we have to make way for one of your club colleagues. Mm, this is an Im this is an improvement. You've gone from a Nokia to an iPhone here. Adam, McC <laughs> Adam McCola is on his way in. <laughs> Thank you for having me. This is this has been a wonderful experience. Really enjoyed it. Well, we'll see you again very soon, Rory. If not before, then I mean, obviously, we'll probably see you around this event. But if not before, um, at the Hippodrome in mid-March. I cannot wait. I will see you then. We just lost Nokia as a sponsor. Sebastian Gahl now playing 59k, still a below average stack, 39 big blinds, 17 minutes on the clock until the end of this level, until we hit the first break. And as promised, Adam McCola now joins us on stream. Afternoon, everyone. How are you doing? Hey, buddy. Good see, it's not good to see Stapes again, though, I've got to say. <laughs> not after he beat us at our own game. Dude, this, this is related to the football match yesterday, These guys right? are so sweet. I was not expecting them, A... They're very talented athletes. B, very nice people. Like, I, they could have made me look so foolish yesterday, and they were all so nice to me. I couldn't even believe it. I always thought Americans didn't do sarcasm. <laughs> <laughs> so I was, I was actually just uh, explaining to James how talented you guys are, not just athletically, but good at, like, hosting and doing content. You especially. You're, oh, you're you. a one-take dude just like Hardigan. Yeah, we, sometimes. I wasn't this morning. Okay. I wasn't this morning. We were we were by we were by the Louvre, trying to do some filming for for the video we're making with stars, and I got every take wrong. So you I think I used all my one takes. Okay, with you're you. a human being. But do you, you were find, there. You put the pressure on me. Do you find Adam that it's either one take or twenty? There's no in between. Yeah, right? never, it's never two. You either nail it the first time, or it's basically just like an hour of just failing, yes, failing, failing. Yes, that's yeah. exactly how it goes. Yeah, he Usually nailed it the yesterday. Last. Yeah, it was good fun though. It was really fun. Good, great fun. What's going on anyway? I've missed a lot of the action in the last hour. Well, Who's let's talk about what happened in your event first. One second. Yeah, we've got action from one of the outer tables. We're checking in on Sam Grafton once again, and his opponent is Patrick Faro, and Faro has moved all in. Sam bet the turn for 10K, and Faro has shoved for 52K. The board is 7-6 trade deuce. 
Now, I've been doing this a long time, and my read here is that Sam doesn't have it. I love Sam, you know. <laughs> we all he's, do. He's a man after my heart. I absolutely adore him. But look at that face. I don't see that very often. Oh, I see that pout, though. Oh, yeah. I see that a lot. The squid has a great pout. <laughs> man of many football shirts as well. Fifty two thousand total. Sam already has ten K invested. He calls tables eight and over pair to the board. And it looks like ace five of diamonds for Faro. There are two diamonds on the board, so he has a wheel draw and a flush draw, but it's a brick river. And that is going to see Faro KO'd, and that is going to see Sam Grafton up to 130k. He's too good. Love that. Oh, no, Faro had him covered. He's too good to make that fold, and he's too good to get out drawn. I, I no, love that. Faro is out. Love that. Love to see Sam doing well. So reminder, we'll check on Grafton and Simon Vitsiak after the break. 15 minutes time, we will take the first hiatus of the day. And when we come back, we'll change the lineup on the main stage. We're going to have Sam and Simon headlining the feature table. Do you remember when Rory was on the feature table in Barcelona? Yeah, he, he, I, I think with Rory, he's a, he hasn't got a poker face. His poker face is, oh my God, what is going on? Yeah. So then when you put him in front of cameras <laughs> when he has to keep it... That's double trouble for him. But it was ridiculous. I mean, who was at that table? Patrick Antonius, Robin oh. Olatalo. There was a table of crushes, and Rory was the chip leader. <laughs> uh, no one was more surprised by that than Rory. Yeah. yeah. He, he, show, he wears his emotions on his sleeve, for sure. Every single hand. I love to watch him. He's one of my favorite players to watch. He's a great player to watch, but yes, would probably need to rein that in a little bit if he yeah. was ever going to go far. Yeah. yeah. We, 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 we obviously were highlighting Rory's success, but I mean, you've had a couple of final table appearances, right? Was it a UK IPT last year? You were at the yeah. final table? Yeah, I've, I've been struggling on the EPTs. I've not cashed one yet, but in the, in the UK IPTs, I've been doing a lot better. Brighton, when Spraggy won, which yes. was great to You're see. Yes, you yeah. I finished third then, um, so that was a huge result for me, and it was something that I didn't think was possible, to be quite honest <laughs> with you. Like, I really didn't, and when you're there and people are just getting knocked down, you're like, hold on. This is getting real, guys. Those are really fun events, too. Uh, yeah. yeah, amazing events. Um, I love the UK IPTs and the Irish Opens coming up next, which is yeah. really amazing as well. Um, yeah, those are events that I absolutely adore. Because you guys, you guys were at the Irish Open last year, right? Yes, we yes. were. It was really good. We, we, we played football there as well. We were a little bit more successful then, though. It helped that Finton was in goal then. Now, again, I'm not going to give away too much, but I know this year there's a lot of fun stuff being planned for the Irish Open. It mm -hmm. seems to me that they are definitely going to keep you guys busy. Yes, we're very busy. Uh, <laughs> like I say, we, we don't want to give too much away, but during the week at the Irish Open, we've got a lot on. Um, it's going to be us, us guys from the club pitch side are going to be there as well. Um, and we're going to be doing loads of bits during the week. So I'm really, really excited for that. And it's, it's like a month away now. If that. Yeah, just 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 over a month. Right? I think yeah. it's the 25th of March is when it starts with yeah. the main event kind of kicking off towards the end of that week. It's yeah. going to be all of the same poker football content you're used to, but with an even bigger hangover than usual. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Irish Open is definitely one of my favorites. Yes, <laughs> I, 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 I had a long run last time out and I was just sat there at the table, Guinness in hand, cards. In, I was just in heaven. Yeah. I think I was in poker heaven and I didn't know it. It was a really fun tournament to commentate as well, and I'm not going to lie. We had a Guinness in hand every once in a while as well. Yeah. So 12 minutes on the clock, 525 players remaining. Uh, I am hearing that the field has now been confirmed as 1,747. So that's up on 1,606 entries from 2023. So almost 150 more entries year on year. And off the back of the first break, Toby Stone should be able to confirm the payouts. We'll find out how many players are going to get paid. We'll find out what min cash is worth. And we'll find out what the winner's going to receive on Sunday. We are going to make the money today. We'll play through the bubble probably during the final session of the day. Five and a half levels being played on day two. Adam, how many of those entries were you? Two. You are bo both of them. Okay. Yeah, I was... I was I was very disappointed yesterday. I was walking around like a man that had been absolutely battered. Um, but that's what this game does, man. I've, I've been playing 
for, since COVID now, so I haven't been playing an awfully long time, but the emotions you go through are just, it's on a roller coaster. And one day you're thinking, this is so easy, this is fun, like everything about it's amazing. And the next day you're like, I don't want to see another cards. Like, I really don't. So, but now I'm ready to go back in again. I like, actually have a really difficult time controlling my emotions when I play, which is part of the reason I limit the amount that I do play. I, I can't handle that up and down feeling. Yeah, it's it's a crazy one. I've, I I feel like it's closer because of the mental side of it. Yeah, I know it's you know, not considered, but I feel like it's a sport, man. Because you're doing so many hours, the mental fatigue that you take on, you feel battered. There's definitely a physical aspect to it, more than you would expect. Yeah. Until you've done it, especially these large field high buy-in tournaments. Uh, you would not. You would laugh at someone saying, "There's a physical toll <laughs> yeah, yeah, in a yeah. poker tournament," but it is real. Especially after we've just said Guinness in hand, right? Yeah, yeah, right. yeah right. chicken fingers <laughs> in the other hand. Yeah, <laughs> but this is a sport. It is a sport. <laughs> well, darts is a sport, so you know. So what are the next few days looking like for you? Are you playing any more tournaments? Are you going to try and see some of Paris? Are you doing any more vlogs, for example, out and about on the streets we, we've of We've been Paris? making a vlog which is still being made as we speak. Um, and we've been mooching about Paris. So we are by the Louvre earlier. We've done the yep. Eiffel Tower. We've Arc de Triumph, all of that. Um, Good use of the word mooch, by the way. Yeah, I, <laughs> I use that word too much. But no, I'm, I like I'm it. A big Mooching fan. around Paris. That's, a, that's good. That's yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's going to be the tagline for next next year's EPT. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come mooch around Paris with us. <laughs> yeah, so w I think we'll do a little bit more of that. Um, I went for a walk earlier. I got devastated, man. So I put in like best sandwiches around because you hear the bread and the cheese and everything. Yep. So I went on a little walk. Got there. It's midday, lunchtime. Guess what? It's closed. Oh no! You gotta what, love. What's all that about? You gotta love the uh, strike again. The work ethic. <laughs> well, they got. That's probably their third cigarette break of the day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what? The people who make your lunch can't go to lunch. <laughs> <laughs> so that was fun. I had a really amazing burger here a couple years ago. I think the place is called Schwartz's, and there's one nearby. If you want to check that out at some point. Okay. We've gone three way to this flop. Turi has not connected. So five somehow still ahead on a king eight six board. It's a weird one though, because I can imagine he doesn't feel as strong as he is right now. No, no, you hate it. I'm checking every day of the week and twice on Wednesdays. Board pairs on the turn. Can you imagine Rory with two fives here? <laughs> He'd be standing out of his chair. <laughs> He'd be dripping. His hair would be Fall all over the place. Yeah, hair falling on the table. You know, we had the suggestion the other day, Joe, that we should bring back the heart rate monitors for players. We should just <laughs> do it for Rory. Yeah, yeah, I think you'd need a few heart rate. He'd break a few yeah. of those. It's like every time he has cards in front of him, no matter what the hand is, it's like massive spike. <laughs> did he give you his bad beat story, which is actually just losing a flip? Yes. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he I got a lot of time for bad beat stories. <laughs> no, it was a stone it's bubble. Not, it's not a bad beat story. He lost a flip. With aces. Didn't he have aces? No, no. no the, the, Ace king versus tens. Oh, no, here. Today. No, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. In the last EPT, he bust like stone cold bubble against fives with aces. And the guy hit a set. <laughs> Rory never looked so de well, devastated that he did that day. It's not funny, but it is. <laughs> Deuces gets it for uses. Who's in bluff? Questionable. Seven eight. I hate when I see, I see guys that taking chips off me. <laughs> Whatever. That's emotional. <laughs> like it takes a, it, I, my goal is yeah, to one day play enough poker that I don't take it personally yeah. every single yeah, yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Every time. I'm just... Oh, the for you? It's bad as well when someone keeps... Like, are you, like, are you like, bullying yeah. me? Like, is, is this something personal? What's going on here? It feels personal. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to embarrass myself on the TV table. Yet. <laughs> Make a hero call. Is Spraggy still in? So Spraggy, I believe, is still in. We haven't heard of his demise. He did buy in at the start of the day. So it started with 30k, which was a 20 big blind stack. Oh, here's a question for you. Amongst, I guess it was just me and Spraggy and Fenton yesterday kicking the football around with you. Mm -hmm. Who's the better footballer of the two of them? I think Spraggy. 
Didn't Sprague used to manage a football team? Yeah, but you don't have to be good at something to manage it. Just like yeah, you have to be good at something to true. commentate on it, right? <laughs> <laughs> Am I right, guys? <laughs> um, Spraggy, we played a tournament once, and Spraggy was on real, scored a hat trick and everything. Really? So okay. I've got to say Spraggy is deceptively good. Because you look at him and you think, no problem, him. I'll sort him out. And then, oh, he's got a little bit of something. Okay, and there's a little deception But Finton's there. good as well, although we beat them last time out, so, you know. And who's the best in your crew? Does Lawrence seem pretty good? I'd say me, but I think all three of us would say me to that question, <laughs> right? You'd, you'd ask Boovy, you'd ask Rory, who's the best foot? They got me. Last time in Cyprus, though, we played a tournament, and uh, one of our producers, Elliot, came with us. Yeah. And he was the best player on the park. Elliot? Yeah, we beat France, we beat Argentina. I went head to head with Papo, which was a daunting experience. And you guys had a little Yeah, a little little bit of heat on the touchline. <laughs> that was scary. Now every time I see him I make sure we're still friends. Okay, right. right. Yeah, we're good, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Please like me. <laughs> you should hear what he says about you behind the scenes. <laughs> I can't understand it though, so it's, it's cool. Yeah, it's right. I just yeah, yeah, yeah. smile Spanish. and it's, it's all right. So we have had Did a shot towards El Diablo <laughs> from Sedolia. Turi opened on the button with seven. Sedolia in for 35 and a half with fours. Turi obviously in no way of knowing that he has a, his opponent crushed. Get the badge in. I thought you were showing me, you know. Oh, you see anyway? Oh, a minute. Uh, yeah, thirty minute know. delay. You'll find out about, yes. out about it during the break. Sure, I'll show. Mm? Sure. Yes. Okay. Fold. Fold. Yes. Fold. Wow. Oh, yes. Turi annoyed. <laughs> Fold sevens get shown fours. Nice. Look, a uh, four could have been coming. That's how I like to look at it. As this uh, level draws to a close, I do I want like to highlight version. one more time that we are still asking people to register for the live show at the Hippodrome on Wednesday, the 13th of March. Rory's going to be there. Adam, you're going to be there. Yes, I know Lawrence is coming wait. as well. And the Elliot's live show be there. is on the 13th of March. We're asking you to register now. Yes, however. don't wait until the 13th of March. We'll have closed registration long before that. And you do oh, register via the, the PokerStars event. lobby. It's basically been deployed as an event, as a so dummy tournament. If you register Surviving. for it, it's free to register yeah, for, by the way. Uh, we will if you don't lose, it's, it's a win. be in touch with you via email. A member of the production team will get in touch. We'll ask you to confirm your name, the name of your guest. We'll put you on the guest list. Bonjour. And you can come along on that Wednesday, see the live show, and play some poker at the Hippodrome. I heard there's going to be some big guests there. Any, any tips or hints on them, or we still got to wait? I put a hint out on the podcast that I guess I could repeat now. Yeah. I would say to re-watch the 2017 Netflix movie, Win It All. So Texas Hold'em movie. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a lot of Hold'em in it. It's about gamblers in general. But uh, that'll be, that'll be one, of, that's one hint about one of the surprise guests. We'll have, we'll have to be participating in that show. Really looking forward to that night, though. Yeah, so and I was thinking, great. if you don't have a curfew that night, maybe when uh, the tournament's over, the tournament should finish about 11.30, maybe we get like a, a fun low-limit cash game. Me and you, Rory, James, Spraggy, Finton. That sounds amazing. Lawrence, if he wants to play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds good. Minutes. They've sure, given, they've sure given us the next day off, so I'm kind of like, let's go for it. Let's yeah. make it a night. That's the, the only excuse you need. Now. You've got the day off. Yeah. So... A rare occurrence for us. So Gal opening with aces. Turi three betting with ace eight. God, blockers are so real. Glogart <laughs> with ace queen folds the small blind. By the way, we have a new player at the feature table. Julian Sitbon has just sat down. Hasn't been dealt into this hand. Action back on Gal. This is the pretend I haven't got Ace's face, yeah? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what am I going to do with these deuces? This is me <laughs> looking very concernicus. <laughs> Good fold the Ace Queen, by the way. It's funny because he looks like Clark Kent and his hand is Superman. 
What would the, what would the German version of Clark Kent be? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> I guess it's Sebastian Gal. <laughs> there is the re-raise. Four bet to 18,500. Well, there is queen for you. And you have something. Play one hand. At least I'm going to play one hand. <laughs> Nothing really strong. My friend. Barons. Exactly. I don't know. I'm going to play one hand at least. <laughs> Give you credit, yeah. Are you using this one or the other one? Sorry? Are you using this one or the yeah, other one? I'm using this. This is yours. Too. You think so? It's mine? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh. Speaking of emotion, Tori may be a little tilted she after please folding the seven, the seeing the, the fours, re-raises ace eight offsuit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I think we're going to get in one last hand. There's uh, 25 seconds left on the clock, so we are ticking into the first break of the day. And a reminder that during that break, we're going to change the lineup on the feature table. We're going to take Sam Grafton and Simon Vitiak's table. So two members of Team Pro, including the newest member of Team Pro. Simon was announced on Monday. First day of our live coverage from EPT Paris. He, of course, took down the Barcelona main event, EPT 2023. I heard all the team pros get free snacks at the snack bar, so that's pretty cool. Free snacks is, is a huge. Delightful. They just taste huge, so much huge better when they're yeah. free in it. Aces again, this time for Byron Kaverman. Cool. Do something for Adam in here. Come on. Put a little show for McCullough. I didn't see aces once yesterday. Sad times. Can we stand up? <laughs> see ya. Graham with yeah, six, done, yeah, five yeah. of hearts. Yeah, I love you. Uh, you don't want to do He this. thinks Caverman's doing the old last hand before the break. I'm going to steal the pot. Don't do it. Uh, no, six, five. There's decent equity against aces. I say decent, I mean, it's still like, you know, four to one dog, but better than having kings or queens. Played football against uh, Sitban as well. He's a very passionate man. Although we did beat his team, which was nice. Three way. I think he nearly killed Rory. I was going to say, when you say, ooh, ooh, when you say passion, I hear he screamed in our faces. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So bottom pair for Karam. We only know one of Sitbon's cards. We do know that Kavman is still ahead. What Sitbon's other card? Guesses? I mean, it can be a pretty wide range once the small blind. I think it's going to be a lot of suited hands. Queen. Queen 8 suited. Yeah. Queen 9 suited. Queen 10 suited. All of the Queen 10, Queen Jack. Queen Jack could be interesting, top pair into whoosh. Karam asking for the pot to be spread, not flicking his chips in. Full bottom pair once you call with 6-5 suited. I guess you're looking for a little more equity than just bottom pair. A couple of hearts would be better. Does fold bottom pair. Ace is good enough to get two folds. And that's going to take right? us to the break. So at this point, we say thank you to Adam McCollum. Thank you very much, Pass guys. Our regards Appreciate to Rory you. as well. And uh, if we don't see you before, Hippodrome, Wednesday 13th of March. See you at the, the event 300 podcast, is it? Yeah, amazing episode. See you soon. Our thanks to Rory and to Adam as we hit the first break of the day. And these are the stacks of the players we've been watching over the course of the last 90 minutes. A reminder, there'll be a new lineup at the feature table when we come back from break. It will be a 14-minute break, and then we'll bring you more live action from day two of the Paris main event here on the 2024 season of the Poker Stars European Poker Tour. See you shortly. So we are starting this hand about 42 big blinds effective. Peter Jorgna is the shorter of the two stacks. 
Well, they are raising with 7-6 off suit. Seems pretty standard. Yep, lots of raising from position. Heads up, you're going to be very aggressive. Jorgna with a hand he can defend quite easily. 10-6 of hearts. And he does defend, calling for an extra 400k. And we will see the first flop of this level. And that flop is 10 high, 10 5 3. So it's top pair for Jorgna. Belair does have a gut shot straight draw. Yeah, absolutely. These are boards you want to see bet very aggressively. You have gut shots, heads up, you're in position, you have absolute position against your opponent. So even though Jordan does have a top pair, a C-bet here will take it down a lot of the time when he hasn't connected. Also sets you up for bets on later streets as well, James, if you want to try and convince a five or a three to fold. So I do expect a continuation from Balea pretty much every time. Two million in the middle. Uh, Balea does make a C-bet of 600,000. And with top pair, just a call from Jordan. Yep, I think with a hand like 10-6, you just want to play it slow here. Oh, but wait. That is not a call. Jorgna check raises with a pair of tens. I mean, check raising top pair is never going to be a bad thing to do, James. It's just that it's probably more conventional when you check raise when you have a stronger kicker than a six, especially as the six gives you opportunities to turn in river. Sorry, backdoor some straights in this particular situation. Okay, so the raise is to 1.5 million, 900,000 to call, and seems that Balea is planning to make that call. I really like this float, James. With the six of spades in your hand in particular, you can actually represent much stronger hands on later streets if the spades start to fall. If your opponent slows down, they might just have pure bluffs that you can get to fold as well. Makes the call, and we go to the turn. I'm calling it, Nick. Action card, four of diamonds. <laughs> that would be quite the action card. Oh, come on! <laughs> I got the right color. I didn't get the right suit, but I got the right color. The commentator's curse strikes again. James Hardigan is to blame. It is a turn straight for Balea. And as I said, Jorgna now has the straight draw to go with his 10, so he's going to be of even course. more sticky in these situations. Of course. So 0%. He cannot win the pot outright. But of course, a rivet 7 would chop it. I mean, a deuce would be disastrous for him. In fact, a 10 or a 6 would also be disastrous on the river. Yeah, I think the 10 more disastrous than the 6 because, of course, he might give Balea some straights if a 6 falls, but the trips are really hard to get away from without losing some more. So having check-raised flop, Jorgna barrels turn for 2.6. Yeah, full 50% pot on the turn, and there's so much in the middle now. I mean, heads up, EPT main event, you just turn the nuts and you're getting led into. It feels, feels pretty fantastic, James. And remember, this heads up battle is worth a huge amount of money. They both locked up 780K, but the winner gets 1.17 million. And before you ask, no deal, because deals aren't allowed under French gaming law. Balea not interested in a deal when he's got the nuts on the turn. <laughs> I'll take all of it, thank you very much. So you know he, what? Yep. I'm, I'm feeling another prediction. Okay. I think it's always coming seven. Oh, man. I think we're going to see a river seven. I think we're going to see another dramatic chop. That would be pretty wild. I mean, this is just, <laughs> this card is such such a such a strangely action-y card, actually. It's so, so weird how the four seemingly innocuous just creates so much more additional action. If he just flats, SPR is still above one, James, so it might be tricky to get the rest in on the river. But if we see Jorgna lead river after having a, called the turn from Balea, it's going to easily go in. SPR way less than one. Looks like he's going to try and raise right here right now, though. That's one way to do it. So Jorgna leading the 2.6. Balea raising. And just going to verify the size of this raise. 5.6. Yeah, very small raise. 4.6, sorry. I think he was thinking along the lines that I was thinking on the turn here, James. He's going, how do I get the whole stack on the river? And if he doesn't raise right now, there's not always going to be SPR less than one, which is one of the easiest ways to guarantee an all-in less than pot. And he's made it a size that Jorgnik just can't fold. I mean, you have top pair and you have the straight draw. 
Yeah, and of course, he can't see that one of his straight draws is no good and the other would just chop the pot, so... It's just, yeah, it's just too small for him to fold because he's thinking his opponent might have a strong hand here, but he's thinking his straight's going to be live a lot of the time if he can get there on the river. Time bank cards being played by both players. Remember, the shot clock continues. 30 seconds per decision. You need more thinking time. Play those time bank cards. Buy yourself an additional 30. Well, that is a call... This hand is going to the river. We have got 16.2 in the middle. Jordan has got 9.3 behind. And I'm telling you, it's always coming seven. We are going to be singing. This is going to be a chop pot. That would be another very dramatic chop pot. The second of, of today, in fact, if we see that card fall. River card. Is the four of clubs pairing the board. Okay, so my prediction of the turn was substantially better than my prediction of the river. But what is interesting here is action is on Jordner. Can he make some kind of blocker bet here? This is so weird. SPR is so low now, guys. He's got 9.3 million behind. There's already 16 in the middle. I mean, I think Jordner just wants to try to get to showdown as often as possible. I mean, all the, uh, so many spade draws have bricked. Some of the hands Balea might semi-bluff raise the turn if bricked as well. You know, what if he had like a six of spades or something like that? I don't know. Maybe that's a hard card he might just... I'm not even sure if he'd play it like that. But in any case, Jorgna obviously has a hand that can win at showdown quite easily. I'm assuming he's going to just check here. All in. He moves all in! What? And Balea cannot fold this, surely. This is an HTC situation. This is has to call. I know the board's paired, but his hand's too strong. That was so unexpected from Jorgna. He has so much showdown. Is he kind of turning his hand into a, pl a bluff, James? Balea asked for a count. I don't see how he can possibly... F I don't think I can fold this one. He doesn't think he can fold. I don't think he can fold. HTC plays here, and if That's slash please. when... Balea makes this call. We will have our winner. Makes the call, and it's over. Congratulations. Year of Romania. We have our first ever Romanian winner on the PokerStars European Poker Tour. Razvan Balea takes down the first ever EPT Paris main event. Peter Jordan is the runner-up for 780 grand. Razvan Balea, who qualified for $530, will cash out for 1.17 million. Wow, what a result. Year of Romania. Congratulated by his wife, Andrea, and his friends, other members of the Romanian poker community on the rail. Wow, what a final hand, James. What a final hand here in Paris. My dog wants to say hi as well. <gasps>First ever EPT winner from Romania. Razvan Balea, welcome to Poker in the Ears. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Thank you for being here. The year of Romania is real. And um, yeah. I, I just got to know, look, I know we talked a little bit right after the event. You're on stage. Obviously, we did a quick interview there. We might retread some of the same ground. But look, I don't admit to this often, but I've been saying it's the year of Romania for a long time, and you're the guy that did it. You did it, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's got to feel great. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, actually, I just uh, thought about it, but yeah, it's it's like a dream now, <laughs> and uh, it's a dream come true, and uh, now I just want to take it a bit easy because a lot of stuff are, are coming to me now, you know, like at media attention and uh, friends and all over yeah so well, i'm really happy that i managed to do this
I mean, I was going to say enjoy the attention, but I also completely understand where you're coming from about wanting to take it easy because you are someone who works really hard at this game. You are a grinder. You put in a lot of hours as a player. You study the game. You put in a lot of hours learning about poker and you're a poker coach as well. How do you have time to do anything else? Not much time. I don't have much time to do anything else, but now I hope uh, I will have some time as well, more time than before, because yeah. now I achieved uh, something great and uh, now I have some money as well and I can do more stuff with my life as well. Yeah, it's pretty hard to be a poker player these days, but it's yeah. amazing. It's amazing when, when you achieve great things and... Uh, now my dog wants to say hi as well. <gasps> oh wow! Look at that pooch. This is this is Ace. This, this is, is my Ace, Ace the dog. All right, Ace. Yeah. Of course, yes. This is my yeah. my my Ace from my you know my from my hand. <laughs> oh, Ace up to your when sleep. I, when I need an Ace on the river, I call him. <laughs> oh, <laughs> fantastic! Very cute. <laughs> So I know that I'm sure part of your approach and part of your coaching would be to teach players to uh, keep their emotions in check, right? It's something that all poker players have to do. Um, obviously, keeping the bad emotions in check is what's most important. While, while you were having that sun run, were you allowing yourself to feel the good, positive emotions, or is it still no emotions? Yeah, I think I think you need to accept every emotion that, that is coming to you, right? So I learned during these years and especially last two years that uh, I had a lot of emotions while I, while playing, while studying. So I I learned to how to accept them, and this is the the most important thing I think not only in poker. So if an emotion comes to you, just stay with it a bit because you can't avoid it. You can do. Uh, I had times that I was playing some games after a bad session, for example, just to forget what was going on. But I learned that you need to accept it first, and uh, then it will go away. And uh, you need to be prepared for what is coming, right? Yeah. Overall, looking back at it, are you happy with how you play? Do you look back and say? wow, I made a lot of mistakes and I was just very fortunate. Or do you actually think this was one of the best tournaments I've ever played from a theoretical point of view? Yeah, I think this one uh, was the best tournaments I ever played for sure. Excellent. And, yeah, the, and the best focus I ever had in a tournament. Yeah. For sure. And of course, we have to talk about the final hand. Um, and I always find it much more interesting when the final hand does play through the streets. You know, often it's a coin flip, it's an all-in pre, and yes, it's dramatic, yes, it's suspenseful, but when it comes down to that river decision, it just makes it all the more meaningful. And I just want to know what went through your head at the moment when you made that call on the river and without showing his cards, Peter just said, congratulations. That was, uh, even now, it's an amazing feeling uh, when I think about it, uh, when he said congratulations. Uh, yeah, it was uh, like a fully relief and in the same time, a big joy that I knew that time that I'm a champion, I'm an APT champion. So, yeah, um, I I never thought to fall that hand for sure, but I wanted to take my time because it was a call for the, for the title, right? So, in general, uh, I take pretty fast decisions because I play a lot online so I need to take decisions more fast I like to play fast but uh, that time I I thought that I should properly take my time and uh, and adjust the ranges properly and yeah I never thought to fall for sure Welcome back to Paris and the Poker Stars European Poker Tour as our live coverage of day two of the main event continues in partnership with Le Club Barrier at Le Palais de Congrès. That is the venue hosting this year's European Poker Tour and the start of day chip leader is still tournament boss. Gregory Fournier with 440k and last year's runner-up who we saw during the break, Peter Jorgner. 
a top five stack right now. And as we return from the first break for the second session of play, we are going to have a new feature table, a new lineup on the main stage. We've got not one, but two members of Team PokerStars Pro. The Squid, Sam Grafton, and the newest player on the roster, Simon Vitsiak, winner of EPT Barcelona 2023. It's James Hartigan alongside Joe Stapleton. Hello, my babies. And joining us for the first time today, Nick Walsh. Hello, hello. Thank you so much for having me. Interesting. A few people mentioned Brian Paris during the last level, and now here he is on the feature table. Pretty cool. So we're aiming to change feature table whenever possible to showcase as many players as possible. We've still got more than 500 remaining in the tournament. So every time there's a break, there's a good chance that we'll change the lineup. As we get closer to the money bubble, world famous bubble coverage during the last session of play this evening, no doubt. And very soon we will learn what they are playing for. We are expecting the prize pool announcement, the confirmed field size. We think, Nick, it's 1,747, which is up about 150 on last year. Yeah, and slightly lower than what I was guessing it was going to go to, but still an absolutely amazing field and really shows that there's a huge appetite here in Paris. So did you take part in the sweepstake? I did. And what was your number? 2,050. Wow. Joe, what was your number? 1,850. Do you know what my number was? Uh, I assume it's close to 1747, or we wouldn't be talking about it. <laughs> 1,750, I believe that oh, makes me a winner. Oh, no. Unbelievable stuff, guys. He's ripping us off. This is where Toby comes out and says, actually, there was an administrative error, and it's actually 1,707. And I have to surrender the title to Benny next door. So we'll get the action started in just a moment. We will be playing 1,000, 2,000 blinds with a 2K big blind ante. This will be level 12 of the main event and the second level of day two. Well, it looks like Toby Stone, the tournament director, is in position. He is ready to confirm how many players entered this year's EPT Paris main event and, crucially, how much money is in the prize pool and what they are playing for. Attention, main event players, we have a confirmed prize pool for you. We had 1,747 entries, breaking the record for EPT Paris once again. We generated a total prize pool of 8,385,600 euros. We'll be paying 255 places with a minimum payout of 8,650. The winner of EPT Paris 2024 will take home 1 million 287,800 euros. The prizes will be up on the screen shortly. Thank you for your attention and enjoy the rest of your tournament. Thank you, Toby Stone. We'll see you later on for the Stone Bubble. So confirmation, 1,747 entries, 511 remain returning from the break, 255, roughly half the remaining field will get paid. A min cash of 8,650 euros. Can we just repeat that first prize? More than 1.25 million, 1 million, 287,800 euros. Yeah, absolutely massive. And that's what we want to see. You want to see big prize pools, and it doesn't come much bigger than that. Huge field, huge turnout, huge prize pool. Those are all the payouts for the top finishers. Six figure scores for everyone who makes the final table of this year's EPT Paris main event. Did I hear 255 get paid? Yes. Love it. So half the field to lose, and then we will be in the money. With five and a half levels to play today, we can expect the bubble to burst during the last session of play. As we get session number two underway, a reminder, the blinds are 1K, 2K with a 2K big blind ante. Frankie B says, Alan Kessler is not going to like that payout structure. To quote Dua Lipa, one kiss is all you need. <laughs> now, guys, I don't know if we've had a chance to talk about this yet, but obviously Simon Vitsiak, uh, newest member of Team Pro, 
Was that the hoodie that he was wearing last time we saw him competing at an EPT? I believe it's the hoodie he was wearing at the final table of the EPT Barcelona main event. Right. Well, he took it down. Take it down, Simon. I know, I know. Is it Simon or is it Simon? Simon. Simon. Yeah, as you'd expect. <laughs> I think he's fine with the name being anglicized and sure. being called Simon. I don't think he's offended by that. Me too. <laughs> there he is, Sam Squid, the legend. Got a big stack there too. 69 big blinds. Nice. Yeah, Sam had a decent first session. Six, Is currently an above average stack. The tournament average being 102k with 511 remaining. Action folded to Sam. Raised by 1,000. One. Ten pass. One pass. Three pass. Easy to fend. 54,000. How many big blinds is that? 27. Ufano. Be careful. The Spraggy is a danger hand. Yes, Isaac, Crafton did get a near double up before the break and busted a player. Oh, it's a three bet with a seven. Interesting. And Sam is in with Queen Jack offsuit. No, he folds. Yeah, clearly the right play there. Good job. I always forget that a re-raise is allowed. I'm more of a call, miss, fold kind of guy. <laughs> miss, click, fold? No, 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 intentionally. <laughs> Pretty quiet at this table. Perhaps we'll convince Sam to get a little bit more chirpy for us. Put on a show, Sam. Come on, represent. Dance, monkey, dance. Indeed. So the raise has come from Lars Tungle. Four and a half K with Jack Tem. And then we have Ramesh Corsi with the Grafton. 10 9 suited. Calling in the cutoff. Vitsiak folds the big with Queen 3. And we are going heads up to the flop. I much prefer the Sam Grafton here, here. even though we can see it's dominated. 9-10 seated just feels so much better to me than Jack 10 off. <laughs> well, well, well. That's well. why. Domination, rotation. Best five and a half. 5,500. Called by Corsi, who is a 4-1 to one favorite here. Yeah, I think this is uh, this is fine to see bet. You got two of our cards to the board. You'd probably rather have a spade in your hand here from a theoretical standpoint, but it is tricky to navigate turns if you don't improve here or you don't find a queen, perhaps, James, to get like a straight draw or something like that. Under these circumstances, he is going to fire again. I don't think I dig this as much as the flop see bet, though, just because a lot of the stuff that called the flop is just going to always continue to turn, especially if they have a spade yeah. draw. It's going to be like one over card to the board and a spade draw a lot of the time, if not two. So it's going to be a lot of 9x. Sometimes it'll be set of deuces, set of trays, and there's the 10. Oh, and that might cost Tungle more chips. Rivering what he might think is the best hand top pair, but Corsi improves to two pair and is facing a bet of 8,500. Tungle's kept it relatively small. Considering you bet 11k on the turn. Yeah, this is screaming weakness for me, James. I think he kind of doesn't know what to do on this river, so he just wants to put out a bet and hope he just gets the flat. But there's definitely a raise here from top two. There's no chance you're not going to try and go for value on this spot. What's the size? 17 and a half. And Tungle quickly calls. Wow. Pays off the value raise. 
Yep. You were no good post flop. So I think I think what should have happened there is Cossie should have gone a little bit bigger, James. When you fit when you're facing three barrels in that situation, your opponent is gonna have plenty of things that still want to call a raise on the river and don't don't forget he probably ends up having some over pairs there once in a while as well i'm not sure if that's the sizing that he uses that's how he structures it if he had aces or kings or something but regardless i think maybe a little bit more pause on the river and a little bit of a bigger bet size would have uh would have potentially garnered him a couple more chips uh joe i need two things from you yeah buddy i need you to translate this question yeah and then i need you to answer this question philip says what is that for fish table jack 10 off open from hijack Um, I guess he's criticizing the play of raising Jack-10. Okay. What do you think of raising Jack-10 off from the hijack? Seems fine. Thank you for your question. <laughs> yeah, really does. Now, the call of the raise without really thinking about it on the river, uh, I think is a little bit more questionable, but... <laughs> Ufano is giving me Razvan Balea vibes with the hat and the sunglasses. Just saw a clip from that actually just now, didn't we guys, oh, during the break. Someone's eating a packet of biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's getting the McVitie's hobnobs out. The snacks in this country are pretty good. That Mike really, really wanted to hear that. Wow. Guys, can we talk about these glasses for a minute? Those are styling. They're like art deco. I are those like glasses singular or glasses plural? So Vitsiak completed with the Spraggy. And has flop best, pairing his seven. Lev Margolin with just queen high. Action goes check, check. Vitsiak now a 92% favorite. Check. Don't embarrass us, Simone. Check, check. Six. Six. Seven, eight, eight, yeah, four. it's a, a four card straight, but neither player has a straight. Pair of seven still good. Wait, I only counted four. Okay, yep. Story checks out this time. And a bet from Vitsiak on the river of 2,000. Pretty straightforward. I really enjoy that we get to start these events earlier, James. It really is cool to see this deeper stack play. Yeah. It is very frequent that when you see coverage of any kind of poker from any sort of tournament series that we get towards the final table, which of course is where all the money's won. However, it is cool to see these guys, lots and lots of tournament earnings under their belts playing these stages because I think everyone kind of knows what stage they're most comfortable with. Some people are a lot more comfortable on final tables. Some people really know how to play the, the early game and not the mid game. Seeing them uh, here on day two at these stack depths, I think gives us a lot of insight as well. But a lot of it's super standard as well, right? A lot of, the, a lot of it is stuff that people will be studied on. Oh, hey, Ufano. Folds Queen Nine from the cutoff. Simon Vitsiak on the button. Jack Eight of Clubs. Definitely a raise. You gotta love these combos from position. What is this fish table? <laughs> Margolin folding the small blind. Sam Grafton in the big blind. Ace Jack. Pro v pro action. 
Yeah, haven't seen anything from Sam just yet. I do. He might just want to three bet this right here, right now, guys. He might just want to say, "Look, team pro, team pro, violence not allowed. <laughs> Don't get out of line on the button." Then why is he getting violent? Message yeah. received. <laughs> Message understood. Yeah, I think that's fairly standard stuff again. But uh, these guys are very confident. And I imagine they will not shy away from going to war if needs be. Sam takes this one, though. Sam Grafton, 137K, just shy of 70 big blinds. One of the biggest stacks at this feature table. Average right now is 106,000. 493 players remaining. Paris name. Oh, okay. I thought it, I thought it was because of you. No, no, no. It's okay. for sure so that they can have fun with like yeah, the yep. Paris and Paris. Yep. You know, it's well, you just guys, like you guys are all welcome then. Yeah, Joe, I, Joe, I naturally assume Joe, Joe, like, Joe Stapleton's gonna. Like, I'm gonna come assume. to your defense here, Joe. I, I actually think that's a really cheap gag, and I think you're above that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> I'm definitely there not above a, it. There was a Tom Bahamas <laughs> at PCA. And oh, he, he always okay. gets the picture table, you know. Um, there's no no one Barcelona, but there's a, there's a, a Martin Prague. A Martin Prague is right on the surface. So he, he always <laughs> Barcelona is not a surname in Spain. Nobody, nobody, no, no, it's a name. The girl Barcelona. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do miss Tommy Doville. Oh. King Queen seated, very pretty. Currently dominating the King Ten. Straight draws for both players. King Queen still ahead. Check. If you're gonna be, if you're gonna miss, miss with a draw to the nuts and a backdoor to the flush. King Queen suited going absolutely nowhere. It's just whether or not he wants to flat or check raise. I way prefer uh, just a flat here, though. I think it's uh, it's going to be the best hand some of the time, so you don't necessarily need to be turning it into a bluff. We probably see a lot more check raising with hands like seven, eight here. That's a good turn for King Queen. Very good, especially when your opponent has King Ten. Check. Yeah, it just feels like a really, really clean C bet on the flop with the King Ten continue on the turn. Why do I suddenly want a slice of cake? Madeira. <laughs> uh, this stack depth, I wouldn't be surprised for him to go close to pot on the turn here, guys. Oh, 11 and a half. Okay. These guys are pretty deep. I, I did think we would see more sort of pot, sometimes maybe over pot turn, but I don't know if this is the right combo for that kind of action, but certainly want to continue turn here most of the time. 11 and a half is the bet. I think Paris just calls here pretty much 100% of the time as well. I don't know if you want to raise this turn too often. Does call. A river. Five spades. It's about as bricky as it gets, Joe. Yeah. Oh, man. Madeira has definitely got to be tempted to put, try and put in a perceived value bet here at this point. He's loading up. 41K in the middle. Looks like 20 something. 27. Value cut. 27,000. And honestly, at this level, guys, I just don't see King Queen ever doing anything but call. Yep. Call. Nice hand, sir. Good job, Paris. Hey Joe, you know how, you know how 
James is like a walking <laughs> EPT almanac. Yes, and he just all he he knows who won every year and, and all that stuff. He knows as almost as much about EPTs as he does about cake. <laughs> Well, if Brian Paris goes on to win this tournament, oh, yeah. it might actually be an easy one to remember yeah, the first moving forward. Like all in, all in, all in, all in. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Who won in Paris last year? Is that nah, your question? Uh, <laughs> e. Maybe now. I mean, the headlines write themselves. Brian takes down French EPT. <laughs> Four hundred and eighty three players remaining. Two hundred and fifty five will get paid. World famous bubble coverage incoming this evening. By the way, we did get an update during the break. Maria Ho did not make it beyond the first session. But Maria is going to flick it in, as uh, they're fond of saying, in the mystery bounty. Oh. So no Maria on the mic. Later in the week we will hear from Ms. Ho. Ace Queen versus Ace Queen. Well, Golan has raised in the cutoff to 4,500. Sam on the button. Sam with his uh, patented ultimate pout. It's one of a lot of millions, James, that pout. Is that how he earned the nickname the squid? Is it because people think he has that kind of like <laughs> kind of suckery kind of look? Looks like a sucker to me. Uh oh. Brian Paris, ace king in the small blind. Man, what a great spot for a squeeze here. Definitely a spot where he's going to have some squeeze bluffs as well. So Paris now 82 big blinds, guys. Sam is 62 after he puts in the three bats. Margul in the shortest with 21. I think you, you just slam it in here a bunch. Yeah, I don't know if this is I thought maybe just a four bet not all in, James, perhaps. <laughs> but, you know, same thing. It's all good. There's loads and loads and loads of dead money out there. Margolin makes a really good fold. So I'm just counting out his stack. I don't see him making the call here. Blame you for this. You said you wanted to blame you. Yeah, don't smile. Yeah, you enjoy it. Thank you for the people. All into call. Ace queen offsuit. So, James, I, uh, we've already, already spoken kind of about, I kind of expected him to four bet this, not all in, in this spot. I think when we do see these huge over bet, four bet squeezes, it does tend to track towards ace king a lot because people just hate seeing flops in these situations when they know they can take it down pre. I don't know. I don't imagine Paris does the same thing with aces, for example, so I think it does start to narrow it down. If he isn't his value part of his range, it's going to be ace king a ton. Wow, Sam calls it off, and it's a domination situation. Sam Grafton, a huge underdog here. Doesn't look happy, and of course, being dominated is not ideal here. I'll be honest with you, I was not expecting that call next. I wasn't either. I, uh, I don't know if perhaps they have a little bit of history before. But when I see somebody rip in 82 big blinds like that as a them. squeeze, run out. <laughs> I, I'm thinking it's going to be ace-king a ton. It's just, yeah, a bit of a sad story. Sam's equity reduced by a queen folded pre. Eight trait deuce. Not looking good for the squid. 9% shot of winning the pot outright. Drawing to two outs. Five of clubs on the turn. Few chop opportunities. Queen.
Green for the win. Four also saves him. Seven nice. on the river, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Sam Grafton is eliminated. Run it up during the first level. We got involved in that Here huge pot against Brian Paris. <laughs> and Paris delivers the knockout punch. Is that uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, Absolutely nice. huge okay. pot there for Paris. Now up to 155 big blinds. <laughs> wow. A huge, huge stack at this stage of the tournament. And, uh, yeah, I mean, look, maybe Sam's thinking he's going to have jacks a bunch. Maybe he's thinking... He might even have a, a pair as weak as 10s, but again, I don't know if that's the action necessarily that we're going to see. Once he's put in that 3-bet, if he does think he's going to be up against some pairs, he might end up having the right equity against range to call. But, you know, he took a shot. GG to Sam. And, uh, yeah, nice hand for Brian Paris. Just absolutely mountains now. 311,000. Yeah, that's nearly three times average. Mini Cooler asks, we can get him in the booth now, right? Yeah, generally speaking, when people boss 5K poker tournaments, I don't think it's a good idea to tap him on the shoulder and say, hey, do you want to go and do commentary? Maybe we'll hear from Sam later in the week. It's always a pleasure to get Sam in the booth. Great to get insight from that guy. I was on the wrong side of it today, but great ambassador and a great poker player. Unfortunately, it wasn't his day today. Very curious call, though, and obviously we'll have to ask him about that at some stage. As we get back to the action, about 30 minutes into level 12 of the EPC Paris main event, as we see the last remaining team pro at the table, Simon Vitsiak, open with king-queen. Ace-three suited for Margolin. Dirty Bird Chirp. Is Griffin playing? No, Griffin was here during the first level of the day. And he'll be back for the third session of the day. Oh. But a big blind defend from Ramesh Corsi. Nine, six, five on the flop. Corsi flops best, two pair, checks it to Vitsiak. Well, Simon has picked up a diamond draw on the turn. It went check, check on the flop. I think Corsi is likely to lead the turn, and he does. 6,500. I think perhaps you want to find a slightly bigger size here with the 6.5. I just think that um, probably what you end up doing here is punishing a bunch of diamond draws, right? If Vitiak is checking the flop, he's going to have ace diamonds, king of diamonds, queen of diamonds in his range. And I think the way that you get max from this combo is on, on turns where you can actually get those kinds of hands to call, but so you want to really punish him with the bigger size here. Vitsiak being Vitsiak just decides he's going to go ahead and raise him on the turn, which throws a spanner in the works completely. But also you have to ask yourself, if there was a bigger lead, does Vitsiak find this raise at all? Perhaps he was perceiving cost he would be um, putting in a, a larger size here if he had a hand as strong as two pair here and that he's trying to pounce on that weakness now with the King of Diamonds blocker. Corsi counting out chips for the call. And we go to the river. Corsi better than a Two to one favorite. Fades the diamond. Of course, he checks. Does Simon want to fire again here? Continue telling the story. I'd be interested to hear how many flush draws Vitiak would actually check on this board, James. Because you have to imagine a decent chunk of them are going to be two over cards and yeah. a diamond draw, which kind of don't hate betting ever because you can get folds in the flop, but also, also you're going to have tons of equity against the kind of hands that will call or potentially check raise as well. If he wants to continue telling the story, this is the time to do it. And there's 49K in the middle.
I mean, four cards straight out there. Potential diamond flush out there. 32,000 the bet from Vitsiak. And Corsi folds the best hand. Oh, the man. bluff gets through. Yeah, very nice work there. Max pressure. We've got a new player coming to the table, by the way, taking the seat vacated by Sam Grafton. It's Govert Matal, an EPT legend. has been on the tour for many years and had a deep run in Prague at the end of the last season. Uh, by the way, a few people asking about mini EPT. There is no mini EPT online series during this event, but I can tell you we've got a couple of free rolls at the weekend. Uh, you may have heard, but the Sunday Million celebrates its 18th anniversary in April. This will very much be the must-play tournament of the year. 8 million guaranteed, at least 1 million up top. $215 buy-in, so it's a classic Sunday million. But we are giving you the chance to win tickets for free. If you can't satellite in, you could win a free ticket. In a free roll we're running on Saturday, we'll run a free roll again on Sunday. Free rolls for live stream viewers, giving you the chance to win $215 tickets to that Sunday million anniversary on Sunday, April 7th. I think I might try and win it this year, James. What was it, 16th? I don't remember. I don't remember where I came. Yeah, I do something like that. I don't. I, I don't like to talk about it. All the viewers will know. I just don't like to. Don't like to bring it up. Don't like to brag. Suffice to say, we will stream the final table of this tournament on Tuesday, the 9th of April. But hopefully, you can play either. Someday, I'm rich enough to move there, but not yet. Satellite in, <laughs> buy in directly, or win your ticket in one of the free rolls we're going to run this weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Christian on YouTube, do the blinds increase with time? Yes, thank you for your question. Six By the way, thank you to Jan from the EPT media team for a great hashtag fun fact. Now we know the field is 1,747. Jan has confirmed that EPT Paris 2024 is the sixth biggest EPT main event in history. Right. And it is the biggest EPT main event outside of Barcelona. All of the main events in the top five are Barcelona's. 2016, 18, 19, 22, 23. And then sixth on the list, EPT Paris 2024. Too bad poker is dead, guys. Oh, I'm really excited about that. I had a really good feeling coming into, uh, coming into Paris that we were going to Smash some records. The smash some records we did, and I can't help yep. but think, James, moving forward, that will attract more players in in uh, years to come. I would love to see Paris compete with Barcelona. I think that'd be great. My forecast for the FPS, by the way, was two and a half. If we're lucky, maybe close to three, and it was what four thousand one hundred forty nine. Just nuts. Just nuts. That's you know, those are Vegas numbers. This is insane. We are going three way to this flop. Margolin's raise called by Corsi and Ufano. King 3-3. Three, three. Okay. 10 still good. Eight. I think he's going to get it done here, James. Ufano could have gotten out of line there, potentially tried to rep a three or something, but. So a short while ago, a few hands ago, we lost Sam Grafton from the feature table. We asked him about that hand, calling it off with ace-queen against ace-king. Yeah, I think it's pretty close call. Maybe I should just, I should just fold. It did feel like he had ace-king, and yeah, he's going to show me a better hand quite a lot of the time maybe maybe a mistake but uh we'll see we'll see um I'll, I'll i'll have a think about it and take a look at it but uh yeah just sad to bust because i was really enjoying myself like lovely bunch of guys on the feature table and yeah it's always uh, a sad moment to exit a tournament like this Petit paris is absolutely great fantastic fields huge first prize great structure everything you expect from the ept uh, paris is just going to grow and grow i think Sam's going to take that hand to the lab. Yeah, yep. can see what the computer says. He's going to he's going to put it in some test tubes. Um, he's going to light the Bunsen burner. 
I still have visions when people talk about, like, you know, running simulations of those old school computer data banks from, like, the 1970s, <laughs> the big reels going around. I've got, I imagine, like, every every hacker scene in any film ever where they just got, like, you know, P equals MC squared and pie charts yeah, yeah, and yeah. stuff. And, like, the matrix drop down letter categorization thing. I'm afraid, guys, the widget is a very simplistic algorithm. All it does is it looks at the number of players remaining at the end of every level. It does not do hand rages. It does not do equities. That's what you're here for, James. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's, <laughs> I'm more of a feel player. Yeah, Nick. yeah, yeah. Sure, sure, I'm sure. I'm more about staring into their soul. Yeah. Put, putting them to a decision put, for all their <laughs> chips. Putting them to a decision for all their chips. For yeah. me, it's about who wants it more. Exactly. And in that hand, Brian Paris just wanted it more than Sam Grafton. Yeah, you could tell. Galchad well. saying... Is it just me, or did Sam seem in shock that he busted? That was a very muted exit interview for him. I don't think anyone's ever in high spirits when they bust a poker tournament. And, you know, I think Sam takes it better than most. But, you know, there's always going to be a massive element of regret when you're no longer in an EPT. Yeah, especially one as big as this. Don't forget, guys, we talked about the payouts earlier. Over 1.2 million euros for first place. Well, this hand has gone to the turn. Vitsiak still ahead with queen high. Fano was the pre-flop aggressor. He continued the flop for 3,500. And he's going to barrel the turn, and this could get it done. Yep. Vitsiak folds. Nice work. Yep, seems like a great board for that. Having the ten of hearts is cool, too. If you want to put in those barrels. Adversario asks, is Maria still in the field? Sadly not. We covered that one a short while ago. Maria not in the main event, but is going to play the mystery bounty a bit later on today. Win in 99 says, how is Brian so handsome? Genetics. What about Govert Matal? Handsome for a man. Pocket fives. Really enjoy seeing Matal play. He has been a feature on these tables for some time now. Seems to travel with us often. And look at this. A Gibbons. He limps under the gun. And we get the all-in from Lars Tungal. He was the short stack at the table. 14 big blinds have just gone across the line. Six yeah, I mean, didn't seem like he was concerned about that limp under the gun, James, at all. Perhaps he thinks that Metal might have a hand exactly like this to be finding a limp, as we do see a lot more opening, a lot less gibbons from that position. But I don't know, it could be very strong as well. Just limp folds the fives, fair enough. Gets it done. So we've established that Brian Paris is the table chip leader with 311,000. But he is not the tournament chip leader. That honor still belongs to Gregory Fournier. Came into day two as the big stack. Is still the biggest stack. Is it coincidence that his family make the cards used in EPTs? I don't think so. <laughs> I have no idea, by the way, if he's in any way related to the Fourniers who make playing cards. Oh! We are following Ramon out of the door. Ramon Kalias eliminated. Well, that's not good, is it? W words that we very frequently don't have to say. He's just always in tournaments. He's never eliminated. He looks confused about it as well. <laughs> Never see him bust. Back to the action at the feature table. Madeira raising with 8-6 of clubs.
I'm with you, Zikat. I have never understood the saying about have your cake and eat it because who wants a slice of cake that you can't eat? What, do you want to just stare at it? Watch it go stale? No, I'll have my cake and, and eat it. And if I don't have cake anymore, I'm happy with that because it's in my belly. <laughs> Making me feel very smug and self-satisfied. <laughs> this is a very cake-heavy uh, stream so far. Blame Madeira. So Mattel folding the King Jack there, guys. And I'd be interested to see that range because I think there's a chance that needs to sneak in as a call or a three bet or something there. Um, <clears throat> when we have the big blind ante in play, there's so much additional dead money to play for and you just have better odds to be in the pot pre-flop in the first place, right? You need less equity in order to enter the pot because the, um, the pot is already somewhat more inflated than it would have been if we were doing the classic ante situation. I would like to say hello to my Pablo and Alvaro songs. Or we say that in the TV table, and then I go to, to, to fall. Pablo and Alvaro. <laughs> oh, oh, bless you, Pablo. Right I like him. Right he can stay. <laughs> That's nice. I think we'll take the rest of them. Yeah, we're going to keep an eye on Margolin here. Looks like he's just a little bit on the snug side, ever so slightly. Blind be blind action. Sorry, excuse me. Yes, blind be blind action. Govert Metal. Brian Paris. 10 8 suited for Metal and small. So, Mattel starts the hand with 13 big blinds there, James. I think he might be missing a shove. I think the 10-8 suited is meant to be all in there. Uh, blind be blind. Need to pull the trigger on those situations. I think it's probably a slam dunk shove. Just to try and get that pre-flop fold equity. Maybe never came to 7 and 9. Probably. I never received that hand. We have too much time out of our houses, mm. our family. And Three we need pass. Four pass. Every time. Five pass. King ten of spades. For Simon Vitsiak. Three, four thousand. That's a race. Okay, Mattal. 13 big blinds, pocket sevens. I think this needs to go in the middle, James. They're all in. He what? is all in. He has been triangled. One pass. One pass. Action back on Vitsiak. He faults. I prefer a call. Do you think so long? Hmm? Do you think long? I prefer that you call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Four hundred and fifty players remaining. Two hundred and fifty-five making the money, sharing in that prize pool of more than eight million euros. Hand number 52 now. Raise, 4, Raise from Madeira has the snowman's num num. Madeira starts the hand with about 80 ish big blinds. Five, Six, Lev Margolin with ace four. Pretty reasonable fold. Seven, there it is. Round two, Ramesh Corsi in the big blind. King Deuce, he faults. Badira second in chips at the table right now, but trailing Brian Paris by some margin. Well, we're going to go to the outer tables. We're going to check in on our chip leader, Gregory Fournier. Oh, wow. Well, Terry Vlatstos has raised here. Fournier three bet. Dinesh Alt has moved all in. Sam Greenwood now to act. 
He reshoves. So action back on the original Razor. Terry Vlastos. I mean, what's he thinking about here? Well, he folds, and that's a fold from Fournier. Oh, no. So it's Alt versus Greenwood, and Sam Greenwood has just tabled aces. I need some help. Nasty Minder needs some help, James. Alt has tabled ace-queen. It's a king-high flop. A six on the turn. A four on the river. Good luck, and guys. That is the elimination of Dinesh Alt, Sam Greenwood winning the pot. Is that Alex Kulev as well? That's a strong table. Yeah, tough one, and uh, great time to find aces. Back to the feature table while we pick up the action on the flop. An under the gun raise from Jorge Ofano, called by Paris in the cutoff, and Tungle on the button. Check. Paris with the best hand, top pair. I'm a bit confused how Tungle got in this pot, James. Um, he decided to call a raise on the button with ace three. That's how he got in the pot. Oh, that's that's unfortunate. Don't like that. So Ufano raised under the gun. Tungo called on the button. Kazi, sorry, Madeira. Oh, Paris called. Tungo called. Got it. Okay. Obviously, a spot where. We're going to see it continue. Probably a continue from the King Queen again here. Very, very good on this board most of the time. Effective stack here is approximately 29 big blinds now. Um, I think you need to size up on the turn in order to get the rest on the river. So I wouldn't be surprised to see closer to, closer to pot again here. Thirteen and a half. Smaller than expected, but I think probably a really good size to continue getting action from a 10, James. I think you just got to close your eyes and make the call here, James. I, I You just got... A pretty strong hand, and at this level, you're going to get bullied off. If you're going to get bullied off ace-10 here too often, it's going to start getting pretty ugly. We can see isn't the best hand, but plenty of combos that are semi-bluffing here on the flop and the turn. I mean, imagine if Paris just has ace-deuce of clubs even. That's, uh, that's a turn semi-bluff now, where it was just the stone-cold bluff on the flop. But uh, sometimes it's appropriate to exploit and make some... Tighter folds against opponents if you think they're not capable of putting in more aggression. Great fold, though. It does actually make the right fold on, on this occasion, but I was was surprised to see the fold regardless. And Brian Paris up to 330k, still table chip leader with 165 big blinds and still half this level to play. Uh, we had Rory Jennings and Adam McCullough with us during the last level of play. Both those guys are going to be joining us at the Hippodrome Casino in mid-March 
for the special live show celebrating the 300th episode of the Poker in the Ears podcast. It's going to be a poker tournament afterwards, more guests to be announced. It's free to attend. If you're a PokerStars UK player, you can register now. There's a dummy tournament in the client in the events section of the lobby. By registering for that tournament, you're expressing your interest. We then email you, we get in touch, ask you to confirm your attendance, confirm the name of your plus one, and we'll see you at the Hippodrome on Wednesday, March 13th. Thank you, Chad. I know Ace Deuce of Clubs was impossible. You know what I mean. A turned flush draw. You take my point, chat. And also, what day is it, James? Today? Yeah. It's a Wednesday. It's now. not Saturday. So no. just watch it, chat. By the way, everyone, before you start bigging up Nick Walsh, this is the guy who RSVP'd yes to the live podcast. Oh, no, stop it. Before remembering that he'd booked a vacation that week. I, I've... <laughs> I know he's only teasing, but he knows I'm a total Boy Scout, and it really upset me. I was, I was like distraught. I was, re I was like, I, I can't believe Nick, I'm letting I, James down. This I, is terrible. I, I, it's it not being funny. Look, I've, I've worked around poker players for two decades now. This is completely normal behavior. <laughs> I know, but I, never mind. <laughs> That really stressed me out, honestly. I feel so bad because it's going to be such a good event. If you guys want to be involved, make sure you follow the rules. Get yourself signed up properly so nobody is disappointed on the day. We need to go back to having the giant calendar behind you where you can track your movements. <laughs> Should I send you my live location? You guys <laughs> <laughs> so Margolin opened with King-Queen has been three bet by Corsi with Ace-King. I do have a little plan in mind anyway about that, James. It's 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 kind of a holiday, but I'm also in some ways doing a bit of a recce as well. Okay. I'm thinking about trying to create some cool content surrounding nice. poker and travel. Nice. If you guys want to get involved with that. Ace King takes it down. Easy game. Corsi now second in chips at the table with 83 pigs and above average stack. The average now 120k with around 440 players remaining. John Delano has it right here. Nick Walsh was just so excited for the 300th episode that his ability to think clearly was impaired momentarily. Exactly. Exactly. Well, let's welcome back someone who will be at the Hippodrome on March the 13th because he is my work husband. It's Joseph Stapleton. Hello, my babies. Yeah. Wait, what's a vacation? Nick, I'm sure you just mentioned it. Where are you going? Going skiing. Mm, the Alps? French Alps. All right. Hopefully there's some snow there. Here, here's a little, here's a little something to help you, help you on your way. Thanks, buddy. I think that's your own 50 euros probably fell out of your pocket. but <laughs> I think it probably did. In fact, I think it might be the 50 euros you gave me at the bar the other day. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Os, os. The one country I can get away with saying that. There's nothing you can do about it. Couple of osses here. Uh, Joe, we just missed... Or you just missed Nasty Minder busting Ace Queen versus Aces. And somebody was recalling one of your jokes. Nasty Minder is pretty much everyone everyone's uh pretty much everyone's online handle is one of my favorite stapes jokes of all time. A nasty Minder is something that you'd find in my internet search history. That's the one, I yeah. yeah. I, I I knew where he was going with that. All right, we're going four ways to this flop with a couple of real pukers. Eight deuce and nine five. Nine five somewhat connecting with this board. Blocked by that eight. Looks like aces are still going to be the favorite. Uh, just to just to jump on this really quick, Joe. This was a limp from Matal. So it was, in fact, sneaking in there plus one. And <laughs> finding himself in a four-way pot as a result. Is that a double gut shot with the nine five? A double gutter, sure, yeah. A double belly buster. Nine 
five cracking aces would be one heck of a highlight. And don't forget, guys, Metal just 16 big blinds behind. I wouldn't be surprised if we just see him bang it here. It's definitely a dangerous board. There's a lot of players involved in this pot. Go over it, Metal. Ow! No banging. A smallish raise. That gets rid of Kausi. Yeah, and I think against this small raise, Joe, it's probably an incredibly easy call for the 9-5 with the double Gutero. You pretty much know exactly what you're looking for, and it's pretty much going to be the, the nuts every single time. Now, Chad, I know it won't always be the nuts, but you know what I'm saying, the effective nuts here. Mm -hmm. Just has a great price to try and see the turn. Given the fact we did see a limp here as well, Joe, you got to imagine Metal is going to be in here with aces sometimes, kings sometimes, sometimes a set of sixes, sometimes a set of threes. We've seen him limp in fives before, for example. So definitely we'll have some smaller pocket pairs that have connected like that, too. So well, the no matter what, your straight draw is good. That, that's what I'm saying. And the benefit of this actually is that when you get raised there, if you know, you know if you hit your straight, you're going you're gonna to get paid, too. That's really nice. But now... What happens every time you have a straight draw? <laughs> I, I never you make a pair. You, you can you give me a straight flash draw, straight flash draw, street flash draw. Always a pair. And uh, and it's never any good for me personally, Joe. But it's always coming seven, seven of hearts on the turn. Now a bang it in. Seems reasonable. Are you worried about running into a seven here? If you're Mattel, you're just like you know what, my dude. I have aces. If you have sevens, it God bless. You can kiss your Oscar bye. If I if I kind of know Mattel, like we've kind of seen Mattel quite a lot on EPTs, I think there is a chance he might just slow down here on the turn. Yeah, it does make the check, plays it pretty cautious. I think he knows that it perhaps Six, seven, eight, uh, not a particularly good turn for him when your opponent is going to lead. Straight. It looks like it. It should have been. No offense to the aces. And at this point, I don't know. It, it, people might try and bluff here on the river with the 9-5. I wouldn't be pulling the trigger here, though. I think the raise on the flop from Metal is going to be a lot of strong stuff, some of which that might even trap check the turn. Don't forget, Metal's only got 22k behind Joe, so he can check the turn and still shove for less than pot on the river here if he had pocket sixes, pocket sevens, pocket threes. So I do think that trying to turn your hand into a bluff here is probably not advisable because I just don't think Metal is going to have a hand that he's going to want to give up that often you can take the person into consideration a little bit too right Mattal yeah. not exactly the kind of player that is all in. yeah Mattal moves all in with the best of it nine high will not be a call uh, Mattal's not the sort of player that's sweating sweating the min cash here that much I don't think you're going to put pressure on him the same way you might be able to with a Joe Stapleton on the other end of that hand yeah and also, I don't think he's the kind of player that's going to be in there with some weird bluff on the, uh, on, on the yeah. flop. So, just a lot of value. We're headed out to an outer table. We've got Noah Chan versus Sax Kostya. Full board has been delivered. 5-7, queen, 5-8. No flushes, no flush draws that got missed. Looks like Noah has bet 12K. Action on Zach's. Noah, the player called must show first, is going to show a queen. Nope, jack eight of clubs. An eight is good. That's why he asked queen. Because the queen would have been good, and the gold pass winner continues stacking chips. Ooh. 
with a slick look to the camera. <laughs> And we have a big hand in progress back on the main stage. Oh, uh, Natal is up to his old antics again, Joey. Another limp. Natal limped ace king. Tungle to tungle. Jams for 26-5. Pocket. Tens folded. All right, Kelsey. Oh, did call. Sorry. Tens are in. A little behind on the graphics. Sorry, gang. And then Mattel now all in. Uh, I don't think you can fold at this point. Oh. Yeah. Okay, okay. He's like, yeah. all right, how much is this going to cost me? I called <laughs> once. I'm going to call more. Yeah, he knows that this can be aces and kings and like stuff like that, too. But he does have the best hand now for now. Uh, uh, king also. Needs to win the flip against Ace King and avoid the six while he's at it as well. So he has to win a flip and also win as a big favorite. Tungle did actually manage to get a fold by going all in versus the limp from Mattel in a previous exchange, Joe. There are the equities, 45% for the 10. That's pretty good in a three-way pot. This total pot worth over 100K. What's that? You looked at, the, looked at the side pot, looked at the pot, and went, yeah, I'm over not adding, 100K. I'm not adding those up. No. <laughs> I'm not adding those up. Oh. Nice. Yeah, I had four. Let's run it out. Oh, ace right, right in the window. Tungle. Likely headed for the exit. Kelsey's tens do have everyone covered. I, was, I thought you were going to raise, and then by the time I saw you limp, I had already started to like make the fold motion, so it was too late to switch. Two players looking for two outs each. River card. Nice. Safe for Ace nice. King. That's going to be it for Tungle. A nice heater. He's going back. Yeah. You cannot destroy the metal. Like it was welcome to the Tungle, and now it is welcome to the rail. Mars Tungle eliminated. Double up plus for Govert Matal, who's now got 135,000 in chips. Four big blinds. He had four big ones and came back to win. Almost a triple up. Happens. Yep, Those he's been employing that limping tactic a lot. We saw it with the aces. Yeah. We thought we saw it with the ace king. He's been doing it with some small pocket pairs. And it's paid off on this occasion. Definitely a very nice little scoop there for Mr. Mattel. And Ramesh Kausi. Still with over 100,000 chips, 55 big blinds. Like, how, how much was first in the 1K? Four, 470. Wow. Yeah. It's really nice to see the field sizes there. Yes, the record of the FPS. Uh, record, yeah, so yeah, record, yeah. record. Everything's a record nowadays, and this all, is a record too. It's good to see. Online is really good. Die, but, yeah. Yeah. Online is dead, not die. <laughs> All right, take it easy. <laughs> uh, that's an immediate disqualification. Pocket eights for Jorge Ufano. Yeah, live is live is huge. You don't play the good series. No, I played the um, the Vegas. Master Classics in uh, November. Nobody in Vegas. I mean the oh, and live. Ones. No, I because I'm resident in the Netherlands, so I'd have to pay the taxes. Yeah. Our goal and with King Jack offsuit in the small blind. Yeah, because that also breaking fuse, uh, right? Breaking records. That's right. Brian Paris does live in Amsterdam. Govert Matal, repping the. Flag of the Netherlands. This 
is really interesting, Joe. This was basically the exact same setup about one orbit ago. Mar Marglin folded King Jack in this exact spot when he actually had slightly more chips. Huh. Now, now he's decided he wants to be involved with a the small one. a bit of a feel player. He's feeling it out. Seven, five, four, two spades. Top pair for Mattel. Over pair for Ufano. Pocket Ace loves a bet here. Nice and chunky as well. I think you want to go over 50% over here just because you do get so much action from the 5X, the 4X, sometimes the 6, sometimes the 7, sometimes a combination of all of the above, sometimes the spades. You're unblocking the spades. Just feels great. I'd love to see like 7.5 here or something like that. It would be cool. Give me a smidge more. All right, we get it. You know how to spin the chips. Let's uh, figure out an amount. <laughs> <laughs> Is that 10? Seems right. like more than 7. Yeah, that's good. I dig it. As long as it's big, more than 50%, I'm happy with this. Speaking of smidge, have we seen Podrick O'Neill? Uh, I saw him at the players' party. Well, I did, too. I mean, have we seen him at the tables yet? Not in the main event. I have it. doesn't mean he's not there. I think he's still in. Wish him all the best. Our EPT prog winner, of course. An all-around lovely, lovely guy. Man, is Gover ever just soul read this and just fold top pair? <laughs> Seriously, it's just Razvan Balea, final table, EPT Paris, last year. Oh, the opposite. All right. Matsal gets it in for quite a few big blinds. With a no good top pair. So, didn't ship it when he thought he would ship it. Shipped it when no one thought he would ship it. <laughs> Way to keep him guessing, Govert. Ufano, the 80% favorite to bust Matal. Yeah, 80% feels pretty good here. Still 20% of the time we're going to see it go Matal's way, though. So it's best of luck to both players. I mean, you would hate to see someone run up their stack from short stack to 50 bigs in two hands and then give it all back on the third one. Tennis spades on the turn. It does add nothing for Mattel. It's so big sweat. You're just sweating this so hard. And I have the ace here. Oh, yeah, yeah, was River card. I mean, even with the ace king versus ace queen, it's, a deuce. Like, it's just like the cards come so slow. Yeah, yeah and the other thing like. Oh, I see. Yeah. Ufano didn't have any chips. That's what's yeah, going on here. Yeah. That makes we more did. sense. Yeah, we did. Like, yeah, he still had like 20 big blinds though, right? Yeah. Tortured. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I got. I respect yeah. that. You're like, you know what? I'm not gonna play this game with you for two more streets. Here you go. I, I, I honestly don't think it's that bad. Let's figure out of my sevens. I do think that when he sizes that way on the flop into two players, though, Joe, he is gonna end up being slight, like on the stronger side in general, though. Because if he does have a C bet there. Life, yeah, he probably yeah. has true, a hand yeah. with yeah. equity, yeah. if not already I something no made. That. Life is already so made that just, I think yeah. maybe I'm going to find a call up, on that right? flop yeah. a little bit more yeah. with Queen so 7 fast. reassess it's later on. <laughs> and the suffering. But <laughs> I think <laughs> just the check shove yeah, is probably not that yeah. wild either. But as you pointed out, it was for uh, sub-20 if your blinds are in that region, something like 25 maybe. Certainly not as... Wild as I was making it out to be, given the effective stack in right. that situation. Quite right. Got the job done. Yusef Ben Surfa. Do we still have that surfing hoodie at the. This guy's been surfing. Yeah, I must have had about 22 big blinds to start the hand, something like that. Anyway, on to the next one, hand number 58. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> 
After that hand, Ufano is up to 45 big blinds, 90,000 in chips. Mattel down to 94,000. Hey, Stapes, Dark Quester says, Come on, Stapes, look at the stack sizes. Hey, Dark Quester, <laughs> take a look at your band. <laughs> He's not wrong, but also your band. Duck Win Hong says, Such a bad price structure. No wonder no real pro, pro plays here. ROI pretty much non existent. You know what else is non existent? Your chat privileges. <laughs> what is he talking about? Yeah, banned. We can't go to a table without seeing several extremely accomplished, <coughs> well known pros. <laughs> Ufano back in action with Jack-10. Margolin, the razor. Nope, the collar on the button with Ace-Jack. Queen-8-7, two diamonds. Forty Niners fan says first place is going to be like a couple hundo thousand shy of a milli. It's actually over a milli, buddy. It's one point two eight million euros, which is even more dollars, Joe. <laughs> That's that is that is correct. That's some Joe Stapleton math right there. Ufano. Continuing for 4,000. Margolin does have the Ace of Diamonds. And the best hand. Does fold the best of it. The power of the sea bat. Pranov says, I can't imagine what poker would be like without Joseph Goat Stapleton. I can tell you what, there'd be a lot less mistakes in the commentary booth. <laughs> fewer? Fewer mistakes? There, there, there'd fewer. Be, there'd be a lot less joy, too, Joe. That's true. I bring the joy. True. And the boners. <laughs> <laughs> it means mistake. I don't know. If you... <laughs> Absolutely right. Hand number 59. Pocket sevens for Afano. Going to have to continue getting involved. Shelf side. Why is everyone this table so boring? I don't have time for this, you guys. I mean, this is... Get over yourselves. All right. Pretty easy shove here. 15 big blinds. Oh, I thought he was going to fold for a second. <laughs> he does seem somewhat unpredictable. There it is. Yep. I think Margolin's been playing fine so far. Like I said, just a little bit on the snug side, but a wise man once said, tight is right. That's right, Susan. You heard me. I bring the bees. There we go. Back on Ufano. This guy's like, can I just have a minute? Can I just have a minute? It is an interesting one, Joe. Sevens probably does end up being a call here. It's, eights definitely feels like a call. Nines definitely feels like a call. Sevens is probably borderline, but I think also when you're thinking about the player, if, you, if your perception of Margolin is that he's on the tighter side, you're not feeling nearly as good about the call. I would be really on the fence in this spot. It is only 15 big blinds. You have already put in an initial raise. Should you be wanting to flip here, Nick? Because I got to tell you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this 
Margolin character on Ace King specifically? Because first of all, that's what you do. You pick one hand that your opponent has. <laughs> you don't think in ranges. You and you think if the they hand. have it or don't have yeah. it. Yeah. I, I I honestly don't know what. It's I, a drawing hand. It feels like a guy that doesn't want to draw. Yeah. And says, "Let's put it in preflop." The thing is, I don't know if I want to flip. I I I might actually find a fold here. To be honest, guys, it's it's tough when he's shoving cut off as well, Joe. He's just not going to have. It's going to be stronger than, than you'd want. If this was button versus small blind or something, it's a very different proposition. Mm -hmm. I like the fold, actually. I think that's pretty good. I don't know. You think I would fold. So cool has a good point, though. Seven's normally a borderline, but it's EPT. It's always coming seven. He should have considered that as well. No, it's at the break. No, not at the break. A bit later. Daddy, right? So, yeah. What do you pay? Yeah. 30 minutes, right? 30 minutes, yeah. 30, yeah, so what 17 to the break, just around, the break, the about break. the break. Yeah, end of the break. Yeah, 10 minutes. Ah, I don't want to say. It's half an hour. It's half an hour delay. Ah, yeah, yeah. No, right. So, yeah, 17 minutes I, to the break. I don't mind what he has. I don't know. If pre then later is better. We're going to leave, right? I mean, the, I, we leave here in after, before the break, right? Yeah. People, we're here the rest of the day. Yeah, really. Joe's got to make more jokes about my last name. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't done any. It's so obvious I can't think of any. Very easy, but for me, that I don't know. It's more difficult. Yeah, here's stuff. I don't know. It's probably close. Do you and Paris have like history, Joe? Uh, the whites do get pretty intense <laughs> after a while. Yeah. <laughs> he's expecting. He's expecting the, the the memes. I think I have annoyed Brian Paris in the past. Is all I will say. Oh, that's a shame. But I, I'm not saying whether or not he was right to be annoyed. I'm just. I'm not arguing that fact. Oh, it's all good. Madeira raises. Kasi likes to flat here. That totally makes sense. Looking for a seven. <laughs> That's only 30 minutes. You'll see it soon. That's a tricky one, though, Joe. Kasi's definitely going to probably end up putting in a little bit more chips on the flop here. Madeira under the gun will have plenty of non pair continuation bets on 955. Where are we at? We're quite deep here, though, so maybe just the one third continue from Aces. Oh, it goes check, check on the flop. All right. Oh, no, no, there's some yeah, doubt. King of Clubs is an opportunity for Kwasi <laughs> to uh, potentially get away, but it looks like he's going to load up and fire with the sevens. Coin flip, coin flip. Coin flip? Classic coin flip. Yeah, okay. At this point, probably just see a call a bunch. I know it's not the most ridiculous raise, I suppose, but if you're checking the flop, obviously you might be concerned about some 5x in the big blind defender yeah. range. So I probably keep it keep it cool here. Cool indeed. Queen of clubs on the river. Aces, way good. I'm not sure if I like the lead from the sevens on the turn here, Joe. When your opponent's checking the flop, he's going to have ace king. He's going to have maybe king queen once in a while. Might even have a hand like King Jack. Yeah, I don't know. It's you a shouldn't bit of a... be trying to get value out of those hands. No, I'm, I'm the, on the turn. They, they're beating you, aren't they? Because he'd have. Kings oh, on and, the kings turn. Sorry, yeah. sorry, you're right. Excuse me. But uh, you know, even a, a queen <coughs> turn is kind of a danger card. I think when you when you aren't getting bet into on the flop. Ninety-five hundred. A little value on the river. And if Sevens is going to lead that turn, I think they might be tempted to call the river. Not that I think you should, but it seems like that temptation may have been too great. Didn't want to get bluffed off those Sevens, and instead... Terrible. <laughs> what did he say? Uh, did he say terrible? I might have said terrible. <laughs> yeah, I this is you had earlier. I, I didn't queen. say terrible. I certainly <laughs> yeah, yeah. didn't say terrible. For sure, no. he had kings, and he's, just, you. Like, he's acting like it's a interesting huge line there, Joe. <laughs> so it was the first hand. 
Yeah, it was the first hand of the day. Yeah, Check like, on the flop, raise, obviously, three gets bet, a little bit more action. Cold call, so. cold four bet, and he's just like. Check perhaps actually was arrested. the route to max value. I think it's. Yeah, yeah, at the least, first hand I played. At least two times. I had it two three time, times yeah. today. Three times today? Yeah. yeah. Life is easy. Three hours. Yeah, it's a good once, one. Once every hour. Sorry. Yeah, that's good. That's a good yeah. run. Yeah, very good. Yeah. King Jack suited for Mattel. Limping again. Limping is pimping. His raise button grayed out. <laughs> A little smile there from Paris. He knows that this can be very strong. He's seen it before. We've seen it before. Chad's seen it before. The whole world's seen it now. Action on Yusuf Ben Serfa. He's going to... Ooh, is going to raise, going to attack that limp. Yep, just goes for the 3x. I dig this. You want to size up when there's a limper. I don't imagine Mattel's going anywhere, though. Would love to see a flop with King Jack suited. Yeah, it does make the call. Queen, Trey, Deuce. Just one heart. We've got the wheel draw for Ben Serfa. Ace high, also already good. This is a lovely board to continue on, Joe, with the gut shot. Very dry as well. Going to get plenty of folds. I think if you bet ace-5 here, you probably end up betting the turn a lot, too, if you get action, because Mattel's still going to have fours and fives and sixes and sevens and that kind of thing. And those are combos that you definitely want to try to get the fold, but the flop is going to be enough. So there's a guy named 49ers fan in our chat right now. What do you think he's talking about? Of all the subjects he could be talking about, including the thing that we're watching right now, what do you think 49ers fan is in our poker chat talking about? I'm going to have to leap in here, Joe, because I need to come to this person's defense. 49ers fan was initially talking about the poker, but was then riled <laughs> by someone who referenced that the 49ers are, quote, good at losing Super Bowls. And 49ers fan, understandably, okay. felt the need to come to the defense of his beloved franchise. But it is undeniable that they're good at losing Super Bowls. As I responded, eight Super Bowl appearances, five and three record. Oh. I think a lot of NFL franchises would take that record. That's a lot of Super Bowl appearances. Well, bear in mind that they went 5-0 and in their first five appearances, right. and they've gone 0-3 in their last three. You know, that's why it looks a little bit skewed. But also, how good is Carl Shanahan at choking in Super Bowls? Remember when he was the offensive coordinator for the Atlanta Falcons, and they had, like, what was it, a 27-3 lead at halftime and still lost? <laughs> I don't remember that, but I'm not as old as you are. <laughs> it was like, what? Less than 10 years ago. We all know it's scripted anyway. Illuminati confirmed. The Illuminati kept it real close this year. I, I feel like they would have maybe... I mean, they, they're really playing with fire. <laughs> I mean, we all know Taylor Swift just had to make one phone call to the Oval Office. Biden pressed the button. Next thing you know, overtime. <laughs> Chiefs win. <laughs> I mean, I've read some really wacko theories over the last few years, but this one might just take the biscuit. <laughs> hey, look at the field size. 409 of 1,747. 409, the 409ers. Right there, the Illuminati confirmed. Oh, God. Also, with a field of 1747, that's only two away from 49. Yeah, right. Ooh. Exactly. So all the signs are there, guys. Speaking of Uf, Ufano, pocket force. 
Hamo, it's EPT, guys. Nobody in Europe cares about American football. Incorrect. You're back. Uh, uh. This was the biggest, biggest uh, viewing audience for any Super Bowl ever, right? It was like up 10% from last year or something. Crazy. And I imagine that had a lot to do with European viewers. And Taylor Swift. And Taylor Swift, yeah. Eight, five. By the way, I love the way that Taylor appearing for, what is it, 24 seconds of a three-and-a-half-hour broadcast tilts so many incels. <laughs> wow. Now incels catching strays. <laughs> What's going on in his hand? Well, it's been folded to Ufano in the small blind. He called... And Simon Vitziak has raised with Jack Six in the big blind. Ufano calls. I'm a big fan of this. King Jack Ten. That's a pretty horrible flop for a pair of fours. And sure enough, Vitziak has a better hand. Pair of jacks. Yep. I think uh, it's just to see how he approaches this because I think the C bet gets the job done a ton of the time, a lot of the time indeed. But also. You do have showdown at this point. I don't think you need to be betting. I think I end up checking second pair, especially with the six kicker quite often. So I approve. Ugh, terrible. Terrible run out for force. Opportunities at least. Broadway. It's an interesting one, guys. When it, when it goes limp, raise, call, and it comes this run out, and your opponent checks when they have the opportunity to see that. Alarm bells are going off for me. They're going to have... A lot of showdown here. Ufano. No, I said alarm bells. I said alarm bells. Okay, he's not hearing them. Gets the job done? Wow. Nice work. I take it back. Ufano, also, Ufano was on the right track. Also alarm bells. When you get bad into there. That's a nice <laughs> move. Be nice to have a royal flush on the stream to cap it off here. Ufano looks like he should be taking pictures of someone with a telephoto lens from a cafe across the street. Alan Clark, not the politician, not the film director. What's the correct hashtag for tweeting the commentators? Anyone? Hashtag Pokestars TV. But Alan, if you've got something to say, Alan. question, comment, just stick to the YouTube chat. We read that. Just like this comment. Question. Ish. If Taylor Swift was behind these guys at the main table cheering for her boyfriend, I wonder how much TV time she would get. All of it. I wouldn't give a monkey's what hands people have. I wouldn't care who's at the table. Just Taylor can. I would actually have to limit the amount of time you are showing my girlfriend, Taylor Swift. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I'd have to wonder why she'd be out there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if Chad knows this, but... James Hardigan is a massive Swifty. Team I Taylor. remember this event last year, Nick. You were with me in the booth at the time. I yeah. was handing out bands on both platforms, left, right, and center, for people coming at my girl Taylor. Yeah. Do you remember that? You see that psycho in the chat named, like, Taylor Swift fan 47 who would only write in Taylor Swift lyrics? For hours and hours at a time. I will allow I, it. I, I remember It was that. back when Daniel used to be on the streams with us. That's how long ago it was. Got to set mine this for show. Doesn't have that many big blinds behind, but does have a fantastic price, especially with that big blind ante in play. It's good to spend, I mean, try to spend at least 50 Jason says because him being a massive Swifty is the yeah, least yeah, surprising thing I've ever heard. Fair <laughs> comment. Yeah. Fair comment. It's true, actually. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's it. I live in St. Paul. Yeah. Table tennis champs is obviously Swift is a good singer, but there is too much yeah, talk about her. Yeah. Strongly disagree. You're banned. <laughs> it is. Jacks with no heart, Nick. You you, you go pretty hard here. Over pair. Charge a heart. Honestly, I'm I am probably betting. Wait, there's another one. 
Carbon Khan. I don't know who Taylor Swift is. Your band. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. D Y O R. Yeah, Joe, I think we do bet like, here. No, no. And I, I, I don't think we want to go no, particularly gonna, big, no, though. I think it's fine. I you mean, can get away with a smaller one here. And also, what you don't want to do is have a huge bet when your guy just has the, the made flush right here, right now. I think a 6,000 is a perfectly sized bet to. Yeah, uh, get value so and also like, yeah, to and get some more information as well. Not a huge fan of betting yeah, for information, cool. uh, yeah. quote unquote, but for I think on the, under these circumstances, that's reasonable Asian. for this size. But it's one of the best I heard. I, mean, I think Margolin should be folding. There you go, taking it down. D did yeah, well to get the sevens to fold with the seven of hearts. That was interesting. Yeah, I hate folds. Trey, never heard of Taylor Swift's Taylor Swift song. Thankfully, you bad. I thought you had a good hand, but I didn't know if you had a heart or not. Keep them coming. I had a medium pair, but I also had heart. Yeah, yeah that's good. I like yeah. it. I had a heart. Well, I like outdoor. To so quote Captain America, can I can do this all the time. I knew you had a good hand, but I didn't know if you had a heart. Just going out, you know, for a walk. And <laughs> nice one. Are you raising? Well, I wasn't going to raise. I, might, I, I shouldn't. I don't know. I would say in Brazil is worse. Yeah, I think it's worse. I'm off the I don't mind. Yeah. All right, moving swiftly on. Yeah. Yeah, number 65 now, guys. Yeah, exactly. That's the idea. Yeah. Should just spend a few. Yeah, a lot of That's it. That's the plan. Enjoy a little bit. How many hands have had aces since I've been back? All of them? All my days. And it's ace queen. We've already seen the ace queen aces encounter, didn't we, Joe? That's how Nasty Minder got eliminated earlier in today's action. Blockers aren't real. Blockers aren't real. So Yusuf here starts the hand with 60-ish bigs, a little bit more. 62, 63, something like that. Paris got to be loving this action. Paris, our chip leader here on the feature table, 158 big blinds. I believe this is the spot where we see the four bet not all in. I think you get away with something like... 30k here would be perfectly reasonable. Love moments like this, you're just thinking about all the chips you're going to win. <clears throat> no more hands. Go over. Tal observing that this will be the last hand of the level as Brian Paris shoves on Ben Zephyr. No. <laughs> no. No. And a quick fold. <laughs> Really interesting again, James. We saw the four bet oh, not jam no? from the ace king earlier in the small blinds no, no, where he stacks no, 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 in graft in. And then so in this fun. case, again, not opting for the three bet, not all in again. Or sorry, yeah, the four bet, excuse me, not all in. What's up? Very interesting. To, I'll be interested to hear his perspective on the jams versus finding some smaller three, uh, four bets there. So we come to the end of this level, and we are going to be bringing these guys back to the main stage after the break. We'll have this table for one more level. And right now it is Brian Paris, who is the table chip leader, with 333, 338,000, 135 big blinds, and that's at the new blind level. Only one short stack at this table, Lev Margolin. He is approaching the danger zone. Danger zone! More action from the Paris leg of the PokerStars European Poker Tour when we come back in 18 minutes' time. See you then.
Well, it's hand 234 of the final table. There is the shove. King 10 for O'Neill. The call, the compulsory call. Oh, my word, he's not even live. He's got 10-5. Yep, and look, he's doing the right thing here, guys. O'Neill needs to shove any two. Yeah, Keita needs two. to call any two. It's just <laughs> the absolute dregs, <laughs> bottom I'll stand for the first effective time. stacks. Well, if King 10 holds, and that will happen three times out of four, we have a champion here in Prague. That was the turning point. Yes. Yeah, well, look, it's not over yet. A good observation. Can I have a five on the river as well? <laughs> We've seen a lot of chip swinging in this final table at this heads-up battle. Five is not beyond the realms of possibility. It is not, no. Time to run the board. Deal the flop, turn and river that will decide their fate. Queen at 9-3, King High still ahead. John Kite looking for a five. Three outs for the Norwegian. Turn card is a deuce. He only stays alive if the river is a five. O'Neill on the verge of victory. Can I use my river luck? Like last time in the tournament. You've been lucky so far. The river card is a nine. Again. It is over. Again. Congratulations to Porig O'Neill, the winner of EPT Prague 2023. Unbelievable stuff. What a comeback story. A million and 30,000 euros. So the guy who came into the final table with two-thirds of the chips in play is the runner-up. The guy who came into the final table with just 12 big blinds is the champion. Unbelievable stuff. I'm so pleased for both of these guys. An absolutely monster, monster score. Commiserations to my friend John Kite. Could have gone the distance. That heads-up match easily could have gone either way. Both players playing stellar poker. And Podrick O'Neill just clinches it in a couple key hands and that is that celebrating that with his friend mark mcdonald the man known as smidge online a very popular member of the irish poker community the second ever irish ept champion after steve o'dwyer winning the title here in prague and that first prize of more than a million euros daniel raises to three thousand Okay, Melee's gone. Yeah, you thought if you could have a rush that you know. Action folds over to Tony G who makes the call. Two strong hands going into the flop. Queen six jack. King of the world. Check by Tony G. Tony G's missed. Daniel's gonna fire with top two. Bet's 5,500. Tony's looking to make a call here. Tony has two over cards even though they're no good. He's really only looking for a 10 to make a gut shot. There it is. Faster than you can say Andrew Lloyd Webber. Tony checks his Broadway. He's got the stone nuts right now. Daniel bets 14 grand. A raise to 50,000 by Tony G. A quick raise to 50,000. Tony's the kind of player that could be doing this with a worst two pair. He could be doing it with a draw. He could be doing it with flat out nothing, but a raise that big, that fast, usually means only one of two things, a monster hand or a monster bluff. Daniel makes the call. Tony using his hand to keep his mouth closed because it's probably watering right now. The river gives Daniel a full house. Now, even though Daniel knows he has the best hand, he's still trying to put Tony on a hand. Tony checks. By determining Tony's hand, he can judge how big a bet Tony would be willing to call here on the river. Daniel wants to make Tony G the honorary mayor of Value Town.
Bet 80. Negreanu makes it 80,000 to go. Snap call from Tony. Negreanu shows him the bad news, hands him the keys of the city. Yeah, Ace King. Yeah. Well done, Dan. Well done. Thank you. Sick one there. And I had a. Point. I didn't think he had Ace King. No, I know, I know. He played it good. Nice deal. Sorry, Tony. You played it good. I had a point. I know that. Oh, look at this one. That's me and you. I got to raise yeah, it. No. 1,200. When is high if it's called predictable? I have many things. See, if you re-raise, then you build the pot so big, and then you're going to get bluffed out in a big pot. Oh, boy. Vanessa's got pocket rockets. Uh, I'd say it's the perfect time to listen to Tony and re-raise. <laughs> Just call it. Keep the pots low. Exactly. I bet 2,000. Yeah. It's fair, you know. I, th I think it's better than betting in the dark. Tony bets in the dark and flops two pair. A dark raise, that, that's hard in commitment to the game. OM Tony G. Karma has left the building. I think we're about to see two people committed to this pot. Vanessa raises to 5,000. I want to raise it again. Tony re raises to 20 grand. You can get it all in. Tony G sounding very confident. You ready? <laughs> Tony G is capable of this song and dance, whether he's strong or bluffing. Vanessa is going to have a hard time getting away from this one. You ready? If you win the hand, you keep me quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Don't believe you. That bluff I'll call. That bluff I'll call. Tony just added unspeakable equity to this pot. Vanessa calls. Tony's bombed the flop, which may make Vanessa think he's on a draw. An ace on the turn. Russo has top set. Hello, Nasty. As Tony G would say, ace from space, and Vanessa has gone from zero to hero. Tony G does have a flush draw. 10,000. And bets 10,000. You could shut me right up. How? Well, by taking, being, being all in and winning the pot. Punch in the face. Can I just push a button? <laughs> that ace dramatically improves Vanessa's hand, but if she put Tony on spades, he just got there. She just calls. On spade watch. I check. Tony checks in the dark. The river. A sick card. The five of hearts. <laughs> now you've got to show some, some guts. <laughs> Can you bet this or are you going to make a really weak check now on, on the end? Go on, Vanessa. You can do it. For Vanessa, best card ever. Full house over full house. All in. Cool. Ace is full. Wow, very nice. That's the best. Very nice. You got screwed? I got a full house, too, on the end. Wow. And a flush draw. See, that shut me up. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Vanessa. Vanessa doubles through. I got lucky, obviously. Not really. I mean, it's... Uh... We took turns getting lucky. <laughs> I got lucky to get the aces, you got lucky on the flop, I got lucky on the turn. I haven't won one hand when I like I'm being good. So. Ace Jack offsuit for Phil Locke. Strong starting hand, he's gonna continue to play passively. So it's just a call. Tony G, queen three on the button, makes the call. Phil Homies in. And Ernest Wiggins. I'm gonna go against my better Jasmine with this one. He wants to play. E dub, E calls. Daniel Negreanu. Straddling this hand. Raise. raise. Announcing a raise. Daniel's last to act because of the straddle. He's going to see if he can get rid of some of these limpers. I think that's right, right? He's raised to 5,400. Clears out Phil Locke. Tony G calls here. How much? Because his hatred of money builds by the second. Phil Helmuth folds. So's the loose cannon. So Daniel's managed to eliminate three of the players. I have no idea what you have, just for the record. 7-8 jack is what we have on the flop. Daniel has the best hand with king high, but Tony has flopped the best draws. Daniel does also have a gut shot draw. Daniel checks. Tony checks. Daniel makes it straight on the turn. Daniel checks. Tony bets 25k. Daniel lets Tony do the betting for him. This is a frustration bet from Tony, but he still has two monster draws, so this is also a semi-bluff. Daniel could already be beat by Queen-10, but he does have the second nuts, so it'll be hard from the fold. He does not fold. He calls. The river card. Jack of diamonds as the board pairs. Checked by Negreanu. 
Check by Tony. I go straight. Unbelievable. I mean, why can't I hit one time? It's like, mm, I can't hit one hand. Blade is so big, like, can't hit a hand at all. Well, Daniel scoops up a nice pot of almost $64,000. Action begins with Vanessa. King Jack calls. Daniel, suited connectors, raises to 1600. This pot's already started to get juicy. Eight, eight for Seaver. Including Toady G in the big blind. There's three players with money in this pot so far. There's about to be four. Scott could be considering a re raise. Nope, just a call. Could be getting out of line, though. No. Brunson folds. It's a good time for me to get out of line. Every time is a good time for you to get out of line. Folds to Tony, who's suited, and calls. Tony stays perfectly in line. I don't see Vanessa folding. She might be thinking about a squeeze to see if she can take it down pre-flop. There's a call. She probably figures that a squeeze wouldn't get many of these maniacs to fold. Okay. So four to the flop. Eight tray seven. Scott Seavers flopped the best hand with three eights. Tony has fired four thousand. Vanessa folds. Tony's semi bluffing his flush draw. Daniel with middle pair. Daniel knows Tony could have anything. He's not likely to fold second pair on this board to one bet. There's a call. After a bet and a call, Scott knows there are a lot of cards he wouldn't like to see at the turn. Looks like a raise. I'm all in. Daniel's out. I call. Scott calls. Wah, wah, wee, wah. That's bad. You got flush draw there. However many times you want to run it is fine. Uh, once. I, once is fine by me. Three eighths. Wow. Flush draw. Thank you, Daniel. That's nice. Good luck on. Ouch. Harsh. A spade is coming for sure. The board cool. might pair, but I. Just, there's like no way. It's, you're, you're so due to hit a flush. Like the you're so due to hit a flush. Like it's <laughs> I haven't hit one. <laughs> I'm happy to go home. Actually, Scott Seaver is the one that's all in right now. Tony, I really do like you, but I'm, I got to admit, I'm rooting for myself. I want a spade to come, nothing personal. No, that is something personal. No, I don't really care about you and your money. You have plenty. No, that's a different way. I'm, I didn't say personal towards me. It is personal. So Tony's going to need to hit a spade or running straight cards. The turn, a nine. No, now you need a six. That'd be much better. Six would be much better. Lots of outs. Come on, dear. Let's do it one time. I don't know. Us kids on the internet talk about too many outs syndrome. When you pick up this many outs on the turn, it never hits. Right. You need to be like cut down to two outs going into the river to hit it. I, I believe you. <laughs> I know, believe it. I, it's possible. It's do. science. It's not <laughs> impossible. It's mathematical fact. This is a classic too many outs syndrome right here. Truth be told, Tony's only picked up one more out. Right. The river's the three of diamonds. Too easy. Tony, She's one consistent. One. Well, thank you. Action begins on the loose cannon. Aaron Jensen from Seattle, Washington. Folds. Obviously now I have to be raising. Yeah, I agree. You got saved off the of fun. Trapped. How to speak Australian. Trapped is the same as stuck. Okay, thank you. Action folds around to Todd Brunson, who's got a hand. I think we're going to see Todd Brunson come out of hibernation. Calls. Do, how bad is it? Are we low or are we... <laughs> <laughs> we could have the same hand. That's right. Then just give me the pot. The flop. 4 8 10, top set for Brunson, who checks. Tony bets 2,000. Date with a night. The poker poet laureate's betting second pair into the rockiest player at the table. Todd's got the nuts and he knows Tony's reputation. I'm going to fold if you raise. Okay, Todd raises to 6,000. <laughs> that makes it easy. I right? can't fold. <laughs> <laughs> Tony calls. I got to see the turn. <laughs> Tony must think his eight's good, but Todd's been playing really tight. The turn. Deuce of hearts. Todd's got Tony drawing dead. And Brunson fires 12-2. Todd's still got the nuts for this board. He wants to make Tony pay to continue to draw. All right, I call. Tony calls. Not sure why Tony's calling. His eight is almost never going to be good in this spot against a guy with an image like Todd's. The river. Four of diamonds, giving Todd Brunson a full house. Todd's got to be thinking Tony's got a better hand than he actually does, so he may think he can get paid on a decent-sized value bet. The bet is 21-2. Michael. 
Tony calls. Wow. Tony may have leveled himself from his own table talk. Todd wins a pot of 82,000. Just wait for the nuts. Just play the one hand. Very nice. Action on Tony G, and he raises to 1,500. Vanessa folds. Daniel suited. Gets out of here. Seaver also suited, but he's playing. Calls. Todd folds. And Aaron Jensen, the loose cannon, also suited, but he folds. On the other end of the spectrum of Todd, we've got Scott Seaver. Tony can be pretty sure ace-jack is ahead of his range. King, queen, deuce, all clubs. Top and bottom for Seaver. Too easy. Tony's got a gut shot and a flush draw. And fires 3,000. Pretty sure Scott knows he's ahead. Comes over the top to 11,000. With no club in his hand, he's trying to protect his two pair. Tony doesn't really have anything except for a draw here. If he's not folding, he must be trying to think of a way he could make Scott fold. Scott's capable of making a play, but I don't think he'd do it against Tony in this spot. Tony re-raises to 40,000. I'm all in. Scott's all in. Tony right. calls. Run it once again? Or? Yeah, yeah. Okay. He has two pair. He has the straight. The straight for sure. Tony, you have a straight. No. You have a straight. This is, again, a too many out syndrome. I wish he just had ace jack no club, but then I'd be in trouble. Ace jack with the club, though? Too many outs. Scott and his friends contend that too many outs can actually hurt you. Kind of like how when you have kings, there's a 90% chance an ace will hit. You think you're going to hit this one for once? I do. Uh, He's so due. It's unbelievable. Jack wow. on the turn. Okay. Now it's an ace, wow. jack, ten. Well, like you said, this is way Please. too many outs, Syndrome. Way that's too many that's outs. This would be sick if you don't hit this. I'll be really annoyed. because it's gonna be This, this is just an advanced needle, by the way. There's no reason to do that. Because he's, like not, he's not hitting it. He has too many outs. He's been missing so much. I know. No, you don't. <laughs> you haven't seen all Oh, this. I meant today, at least <laughs> I know. Tony has picked up some more outs in the turn. He can make a better two pair of trips in addition to a straighter flush. So the river, a brick. Unreal. Well done. You never, you never win any hand. Not crazy. That's it. Sorry, Tony. I'll talk to well you. done, Todd. Welcome back to Paris and the Poker Stars European Poker Tour. It's day two of the main event in partnership with the Club Barrier at Le Palais de Congrès. We return from break with the same lineup at the feature table. Brian Paris is the table chip leader with 135 bigs at the new blind level. The newest member of Team PokerStars Pro, Simon Vitsiak, is one of the shorter stacks, but still has more than 30 big blinds. 1K, 2.5K, with the 2.5K big blind ante is what we're looking at for the next 90 minutes. It's James Hartigan alongside Griffin Benger. Bonjour, mon amis. See, can you move me? Thank you. It's tough. That's French, because we're in Paris. It's going to look strong. No matter what I do. Yeah, you can put me in my pocket. My pocket is true. Yeah, there's queen. Off? Yeah, OK. Come on, and you're folding that? <laughs> to him? <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> I don't know him, I just didn't understand why. What do you have? Four bet show and decide. Ace Jack. Ace Queen. Sorry, Ace Queen. It's better for me. I wasn't trying to get paid by Ace Queen, I was trying to get paid by him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Queens Plus, Ace King, Jacks. Fewer than 400 players right. remaining in the main event as we start the third level of the day. Level 13 of the tournament. 1,747 total entries. 255 are going to get paid, so we are going to make the money tonight. A bit later on this evening, we'll have world-famous bubble coverage as we play through the bubble. We played to the money today. Yeah. We're going to try to. Yeah. It's going to be long. Not necessarily. Oh, it takes just forever. You know it. You know, you know how it is. <laughs> Don't be such a pessimist. Sometimes the bubble can go quickly in big fields. Six months. We've seen it happen before. I showed the money. I feel like starting a new level with bargain aces. I would say 
11.30. Right, on the button, the too. Oh, so we can dream away a little bit more if you want. Yeah. 8 past. Yeah, the, the three now, yeah, 11 at midnight. Brian Paris is going to be very happy to take a flop. The beautiful, the stunning, the elegant. Yeah, Jack yeah, 10 suited. Oh, well, that's not the flop. Yeah, fortunately for Brian, he has missed completely because Margolin, with just 11 bakes behind, will be looking to get it in here. Yeah, and also fortunate for Brian, I think. No room to, to get cute. You know, maybe if you're in, against a bigger stack, you might entertain the idea of getting a little cheeky here with some check raises since you have, you know, some decent backdoor outs that makes the correct decision. Brian Paris, someone I played a lot uh, against online back in the day when I was grinding the tournament schedules regularly. B. Paris goes by. So you can't miss him. It's going to say. Nine suited for Jorge Ofano. And oh, what a difference suited makes for Ufano. The hand previous folded the queen 10 off a seat better. But once the spades were dealt and the notch was down to nine, he then elected to raise for he could make a flush tonight. Round to Govert Matal, who folds the button. It's Brian Paris's small blind, eight deuce. Nah. Yusef Benzerfa is in the big blind. Ace king of spades. Stack of 30, the yellow. Is it 30 yellows? I have 100. 100 total. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, catapult, you're a bit late to the party. Tonka was on our feature table at the start of the day, did not make it beyond the first level of the day. I believe that both Vincent and Spraggy are still in. In fact, Spraggy, who bought in at the start of day two, so started with 30k, which is what, 20 bigs? Span it up to more than 150k. 100 That's 100 here. About a three and a half X three bet here out of position from the big blind. Should scare off Ufano. Ufano. Winter555 says, what about Marley? I believe there is a Bob Marley movie. Yep. About to come out. As a matter of fact, there's a theater right next door, and I saw it was playing there. Thank you for your question. <laughs> they do love those biopics lately, huh? Been loving them for years. Used to be a guaranteed way to win an Oscar. Just play a real person. In fact... Very strong chance Killian Murphy walks away with the Best Actor Oscar it's for true. playing a real person. It's true. Another contender in that category, Bradley Cooper for playing a real person. Five Reviews weren't great for the Marley one, though, from what I saw. And I yeah. I missed the mark on Amy. Did you see the trailer for that? Yeah, right. She doesn't look remotely like Amy Winehouse, but I actually quite like the actress. She's in a series called Industry, British uh, stock market series. Five 
Paris has raised the button with Jack 10. We're round to Ramesh Corsi in the big blind, who has Ace 10, suited in clubs, the crunchiest of all the suits. Yeah, a bit of an awkward stack size here um, to, you know, is going to decide to pop it up, which should get Paris out of there. But it's one of those hands that, you know, if you had 20 big blinds here, you just happily shove it in on the button open. But when you're, you know, in that 35 range, maybe you do just want to play it as a, a three bet call off. Get those worse hands. Sometimes you'll get a reshove from some sort of sour, sourdough hand like an ace five suited. But Jack-10, happily in the muck, or unhappily. We've only got two players at this table with above average stacks, Madeira and Paris. Average right now 135,000 with 389 remaining. In this huge starting field of 1,747. We established during the last level, Griffin, this is the biggest EPT main event outside of Barcelona. It's the sixth biggest EPT overall. Wow. The top five are all Barcelona main events. Now, how close was this one to dethroning one of the five Barcelonas? I think it still had some way to go. Yeah, so number five on the list of biggest EPTs of all time. Let me guess, 1931. EPT Barcelona 2016. Okay, not that far off. Oh, 1,785, yeah. Of course, the record still held by EPT Barcelona in 2022. Nearly 2,300 entries. That was the event won by Giuliano um, uh, Bendinelli. Giuliano Bendinelli. But, of course, it was Simon Vitsiak, who's currently at our feature table, who won the second biggest EPT of all time, Barcelona 2023. Yeah, and played like an absolute boss. It was super fun to watch. Last hand of that tournament, particularly entertaining and great to hear Simon's thought process, both immediately after the tournament and in follow-up interviews. We spoke to him on the Poker in the Years podcast afterwards and went through that hand in detail went through many of the hands he played on his way to victory mm -hmm. under 400 players remain from that 1747 player field 388 right now. 255 will get paid. Yes, Australia's main event in 2023 was huge as well. The FPS main event here in Paris, more than 4,000 runners. We watched the final table of that one play out on Monday. Congratulations once again to Matthias Milhusen for taking that down for nearly. Half a million euros, 470k was the first prize in that FPS. Right, five and a half. Three and Zerfa raising here with King Queen. Madeira in the small with 9 7. Yeah, I think Madeira is going to probably play a little bit of a mix oh. here. Sometimes maybe going to throw in some raises like to mix in some calls with hands like this sometimes at this stack depth just so you can kind of balance your range right your perceived range from these flats are going to be so many hands mm. you know like your queen jack suited and your you know, maybe your king 10 suited so mixing in some nine seven suited calls gives you more board coverage split five asks is maria ho playing yes but not this tournament she's playing the mystery bounty as we go to a queen 5-4 flop with two spades. Okay, top pair versus flush draw. Let's be having you guys. Such a TV hand. I like when TV hands pop up, you know. I do love seeing every hand, but every once in a while, it's like, I'm, not, I'm in a TV hand now. King of spades.
Two different avenues Madeira can go through now. The Brazilian can, of course, just call and look for that flush. But mixing in some check raises, and it sounded like 18,000 was announced. And the reason you want to do this sometimes is, you know, you force out those hands that are just c-betting like an ace-10, put a lot of pressure on a hand like two-eights that, you know, might call this check raise on the, on the flop, but then you can keep betting on the turn. And even with Ben Zerfa with top pair, you're going to feel a little uncomfortable as we go down the streets, right? You're basically drawing dead against the top of what Madeira is representing, those pocket fives and pocket fours. Cool. There is the call. There's also a chance at additional outs for Madeira. Some straight draw outs, something like a... But the five peels off. Really a lovely card for the Frenchman. Yeah. Because it makes it less likely your opponent has something like pocket fives. And Ben Zerfa is now a four to one favorite. And you know, I don't think Madeira's going to fly off the handle necessarily. It's deciding to continue. But is very aware that Ben Zerfa's range is much stronger now that he's called this check raise. He's not calling those check raises with, you, with your ace highs. And in a lot of ways, I think this sizing, which is actually a tad bit less than the actual check raise on the flop, Really just some, some price setting from Madeira saying, you know what, I, I want to see this river card through. I recognize you're probably not going to fold, but I don't want to have to check fold here to a you know, 25,000 chip bet. I'm going to make set the price 17.5. So Madeira at rivers are no good pair of nines. Yeah, but a card I think Madeira is going to feel super comfortable in just checking because you are now beating those bigger spade draws. You know, something like an ace-jack of spades. King-ten of spades. All those kind of combos you've now gotten there against them. that Ben Zerfa is having a look here, right? Recognizing that if Madeira did have something like, you know, the pocket fours, the pocket fives, the five four, probably would just be betting the river, but decides not to go for value with the king queen. Can't blame him as well. This pot was getting a little scary. But would have been interesting had he made a bet. Maybe yeah. Madeira makes that call with the river nine. Maybe. But it does say... Yusef Ben Zerfa chip up to 172k. Now playing close to 70 big blinds. He's second in chips at this table behind Brian Paris. 15 minutes into this new blind level. An important question from Cow Chad watching on YouTube. With Benjamin making a deep run. By the way, I do not consider this to be a deep run. We're not even in the money yet. With Benjamin making a deep run and Marley not, does this mean that Ben has reclaimed the title of Spraggy after losing it last EPT? Well, first of all, we've already established this is not a deep run. Secondly, and I agree with Ed, our moderator on this one, he has to make it to the final table I, to, reclaim, exactly what I was to reclaim the Spraggy. He gets, he gets it back if he makes the final table. Correct. No pressure. Ace King for Brian Paris. One pass. Has been called by Ramesh Corsi with sixes. Jack ten in the small blind for Ufano. Yeah, you're just in that set mining territory with that 
40 big blind stack on the, at the cutoff. Some consideration here between flatting and three betting. I think Simon's going to be aware that Paris is raising quite wide on this massive stack. That this flat at the cutoff is probably not a trap. Probably a hand that would fold to three bet pressure. So some consideration in making a squeeze there that of course we see would not work against the ace king of Brian Paris. But definitely part of the thought process there. 10, 10, 4. 6 is still good. And in the grand scheme of things, Griffin, there's not a disastrous flop for 6s. No, it's actually, you know, one of the better ones behind, you know, a pure 6 and a straight draw. Yeah. A paired 2 card over. Definitely easy to play with. Paris is going to start with a bet. Because you want to fold out some equity from some hands that can get there, you want to be able to represent a stronger hand than, say, a hand like sixes on future streets. And sometimes you're going to get called by a worse hand like an ace queen or an ace jack. In this case, he is behind, but a lot of ways to win, especially with those clubs. Not anymore with the clubs. Yeah, so Corsi now a three-to-one favorite. And Brian Paris is going to have seen this spot a million times. Check. Going to Check. recognize that it's going to be ahead some of the time here, but probably is not going to fold a f face, get a fold from a hand like a pocket eights or nines or even sixes. And, of course, sevens could also fill up something like a pocket sevens. I wonder if um, Corsi can find a value bet here, Griffin, because well, the double pair board might get paid off by ace high. Definitely a bit thin, yes, I. but I, I, I agree with what you're saying. It would have been a cool little value bet. I don't think that Paris's particular hand would find a lot of calls because of that ace of clubs. Yeah. Um, makes it less likely that his opponent has a flush draw. Corsi now hovering around the 45 big blind mark. 377 players. That right in the center of our feature table is the newest member of Team PokerStars Pro, Simon Vitsiak, a former EPT champion. We start the day with 15 former champs. Davidi Katai has just been eliminated, but we still have Porig O'Neill, who won the last EPT in Prague at the end of 2023. Arseny Kamatsky, a previous Sochi winner, took down that event in 2018. Alexi Boyka. Won his European Poker Tour title in Malta in 2016. Robin Ulatalo is a former EPT London champion. His victory came back in 2013. The same year that Demeter Danchev won the PCA. Also the same year that Tom Middleton Won an EPT title in Barcelona. Can I guess the next one if there's another one? Okay. I can tell you that the last former champ we're going to check in on is Anton Wig. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. Anton Wig won in Dortmund in 2011. Wrong year, wrong location. Copenhagen 2010. Thank you for playing. That was close on the year. Griffin, you'll be taking home $0 for your charity. <laughs> I was actually just playing for myself. <laughs> Either way, zero dollars. <laughs> Not being funny, if you're playing for charity, we do the classic thing where they go, we don't want you to leave empty-handed. Right, right, you know, right. You, you've played an appalling game, but we're going to take pity on you and make sure your charity leaves with something. But when you're playing for yourself, screw you. Yeah, you yeah. leave with nothing. If I was playing for charity, be like, because you were within two years, <laughs> you get a platinum pass. <laughs> king, king eight on the flop. Corsi. Boom on course to win another pot. You know, sometimes when you make bad calls pre-flop, you get rewarded. 
And frankly, this is just um, a loose call here at the hijack facing the end of the gun open. Not how you want to play um, a 40 big blind stack, but sometimes you just flop trip kings. And with that under the gun range, Gobert Mattel is going to come out firing. Bossy and effect coming up. Disaster striking for Mattel. You've now jumped in front of a hand like pocket nines, something like an ace eight suited or a eight nine suited, but you're still destroyed by a king. So how is Mattel going to proceed? Is he going to set the price here? Now the problem with betting here is that. Your opponent really shouldn't have much of a bluff range, just a lot of hands that are going to check back or bet for value that you're crushed with, right? The king is going to come out firing here for probably a bet somewhere in between 12 and 18,000. So maybe you do want to just set the price yourself. And Mattel does that under half pot, 13 and a half thousand. That is going to be near min raise to 29,000. Very unorthodox, right? Wouldn't really have a bluff in this spot and play it like this. I think a bit more reg uh, regular to just sort of call the turn here, but Mattel facing this like in raise, kind of just like ugh, like need my hand here. And that is an experienced man with some good instincts. All right. Like one in the Is it a fool? I love you guys. <laughs> <laughs> no tune anyhow. I love you. Enjoy the moment. That's it. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. And that's the smile of a man who's having a great one time a, playing on the EPT. One hour and a half to see that. Maybe you you love to see it. So it's good. Good. We are, we are all friends. We have a good time, but we are, we are very quiet. That's it. His internal emotion. Ten pass. One pass. So round two, Fano in the cutoff.
Seven Don't think Mattel is going to fold this suited connector. Go, go, Govert. Oh. Defends with seven four. And there is a seven on the flop. Natal now an 85% favorite. He's always coming. The seven. That's four and a half. Two pair on the turn, but does provide a double gutter here. A two for the okay. wheel, six for the back end straight. Barry Greenstein makes an appearance. Now, obviously, Mattal has a lock on this with two pair, but this could cost Vitsiak some chips. You know, as a beardsman myself, I like the way Gower Mattal's beard sort of comes in here, the stubble. You know? 6,000. 6,000. Oh, find the check race, brother. Do it. You know two pair is good against this size. Twenty or more. Ooh. I think this is a bit too much. Yeah, all into call for Vitsiak with that rivered top pair with a pretty poor kicker. You know, might have gotten a curiosity call for Somewhere around 20,000. I think that this is going to not do the trick. Yeah. But it does look bluffier. You know, it does look bluffier than 20,000. Now, does my opponent really just have 8 6 here? Ace 5, Ace 7. Seven four. Make it fold. Matal chips up. Vitsiak down to twenty bigs. <laughs> the newest member of Team Pro. I'm 41 years old. Uh, I've been playing poker for last uh, five years, and now I'm a team pro poker star for France. He's made the call. Oh wow! We have a result here in oh! Barcelona. It is Simon Vitiak from France who takes the title and trophy. Well, my life changed completely after this win on the spot. You don't realize exactly. You are just emotional. If I see the big picture, I would say that uh, for France. Uh, it has been a long time that a French poker player has, has didn't have won uh, an APT. Now this is my time, poker stars contact me. And this win is more than a win because I can make something of this win. I have big projects with uh, poker stars, so I'm pretty ambitious and I hope this is going to be great year. No doubt in my mind that Simon Vitsiak will be a great ambassador for poker stars and a great ambassador for the game of poker. <laughs> But he is on the short side now with 370, make that 369, make that 368 players remaining in this EPC Paris main event.
22 big blinds in the middle. Pas trop difficile. Seven pass, eight pass, ten pass, pass. It's difficult to shuffle that, that card or the same way? Mm, a tiny bit more difficult. The that material is, heavier, I believe yeah. it's different for you as well to build them, right? Yeah. A tiny bit. For me, it's the same to, to fall with this on the other. <laughs> but, but I know it, it makes sense, it's more difficult, yeah, because it's like better material. Mm -hmm. no. Not plastic. Luke Gill. 6970. Oh. Luke, I'm so sorry that 6,969 people claimed that ID before you. Right, so we want Spraggy, we want Spraggy, we want Spraggy. As we establish, Marley no longer in yeah, the EPC main event, and yeah. Ben does not reclaim the title of Spraggy until he makes the final table of this tournament. Yeah, if you have any other requests for any other players that might be going by a different now, name. Than Spraggy. As far as Benjamin, formerly Spraggy, Sprag is concerned, there is a chance that we will see him later on today. But no promises for he's not even a Spraggy, so, um, or the Spraggy rather, just not at top of the list. Styles pointing out that bottom tier Spraggy is still good Spraggy. Is he though? Seven of clubs. Vitsiak raising to five thousand. Seven pass. Eight pass. Ten pass. Vitsiak can be quite pleased to, in particular, get past the table chip leader Brian Paris. Probably anticipates that he shouldn't get too much light three betting from the two gentlemen to his left, but. Ryan, of course, is going to have many reasons behind. to mess with him. But now it's Ben Zerfa's chance Thank here. You. This is sort of right on the line of, you know, how do I really want to play this? It's, it's too strong. To just call probably right so we kind of need to just play this as a three bet what happens when our opponent shoves mm. if our opponent shoves Vichak of course should just be throwing that 9-7 suited into the muck at this stage mm -hmm. 
Nice little level here for Benzerfa. Has climbed his way up to 177,000, which is good for a little above the average of 147,000. Jack getting involved now, and only with one card. Seven pass, eight pass, ten pass. One pass. Surely we can give him a second card. He has a second card, and don't call me Shirley. Just haven't seen it. By the way, something else we didn't see earlier on this afternoon. When we were around to about 400 players, we lost a member of Team Pro. Finton Hand. Oof. Finton was KO'd earlier on. And look at this spot for Simon Vitsiak. We don't know what his other card is, but we know he has at least trip 10s. Madeira has flopped a pair of jacks to go with the 10s on board. I'm cheering for quads. It's been a while. I haven't seen quads in a while. Oh. Adira calls the continuation bet of 4,000. Turn card is king. We know that Vitsiak still has the best hand, even though we can only see one of his cards. Yeah, and actually quite a brutal card for Vichyak in respect to what Madeira has. You know, we should expect to see another bet from the Frenchman here. And, well, you know, Jack-8, you really find yourself pretty much near the bottom of your of your range on this mm. turn in a lot of ways, right? As far as your value hands are concerned, sure, you're going to have some straight draws sometimes. It's just easily fold like an 8-9. But you're going to have hands like Queen-Jack... King, queen, queen, nine. So jack eight really shrinks things up and I think can make for a fold. But having said that, you know, Vichyak could just have something like pocket fives and be two barreling here with the intention of trying to fold out a jack either on the turn here or on the river. Let's see how the Brazilian manages and quickly folds. And that, yeah, that, that card on the turn is just so brutal um, for both players. And a comment from so cool 111 on Twitch. Interesting that Vitiak's a new ambassador has been announced if he has a PokeStars username. Maybe he only plays live. Simon plays online. He is an online grinder. But remember, he plays in France. So he plays on PokeStars FR, which shares its liquidity pool with Spain and Portugal. So if you're in the global shared liquidity pool, you would not encounter him at the tables. says, how come I can't join FR from UK? I mean, do I really need to answer that question? Oh. Ben Zerfer has opened with aces. Corsi calling on the button with the eight of diamonds and a another card. And clearly we might have uh, at least one dead card in the deck where the RFID chip has broken.
Ivano is grabbing some bigger chips here. And again, the temptation of Kossi's right. flat. You know, if these if, if we if we assume that this is never really right. and a, half. a trap. Which yeah. Based on the way that the gentleman is playing, I think that's a fair deduction. You're gonna see these players more inclined to squeeze. We saw Vichyak thinking about it earlier with the King Jack Lisa. now in later mm -hmm. position here. Ufano does it with the 7 6 suited. You know, I would love to just see a call here from Ben Zerfa, recognizing that Ufano isn't always just going to be value heavy here. But the way that he is darting his head around makes me feel like <laughs> he's going to be more in inclined to, to protect this hand, not allow Kossi to just come in and go three ways. But it is a big squeeze, so, you know, can you find the discipline to just flat here and, and expect Kossi to fold sometimes, and then you go heads up to a flop where the SPRs, you know, stack to pot ratio is going to be just a little bit over one. You look at that 70K. It's going to be about 55,000 out there. But it's looking like raising chips. Yeah, just anxiously getting in more. <laughs> Let's cooler this gentleman right here. You don't want to have your opponent have pocket jacks or something and get away on a king-queen flop. But it is a very generous size from Ben Zerfa. Just 18,000 more. Ufano has 23 and a half out there. There's only <sighs> one word Man. I have to say to this raise. I mean, and I that might is call this with this <laughs> Ufano. Uh, I mean, <laughs> it's tough. I mean, you, you know, you've already put out near 24 out there. 18 more to call. You might just want to try to flop some equity here. You hate being in this spot, but... You know this seventy thousand. Forty-one and a half. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 tough. You're getting that price, and and you got you do have the big pair of slayers. You know the seven six suited. You know if you're squeezing in with the king jack and you saw eighteen k more, you run for the hills. You know you're not looking to cool yourself. Seven six of clubs can do some damage. <laughs> you know you can get that nine seven five one club club flop and then just decide to go with it. We are around 70 players away from the money. This 70,000 that Ufano has behind represents nearly 30 big blinds. It's a very tricky spot. Finds a fold. Good discipline. Benzerfa. Still the second biggest stack at the table. More than 200k, more than 80 big blinds, and still half this level to play. So this festival in Paris began with the FPS main event. And there are three more France Poker Series events to come in 2024. The series returns to Monte Carlo in the spring before going to Namur for the Belgian Poker Challenge a week after that. And then Isle Bain in the autumn. More details, key dates via the PokerStars Live app. You'll see details on future EPT events and other regional tours, including the France Poker Series. Obviously, Monte Carlo will be attached to the EPT Festival, so we'll be there for that one. We'll confirm nearer the time if we're able to stream the FPS in addition to the EPT. We return to our feature table. Blind still 1,000, 2.5K with a 2.5K <coughs> big blind ante. Samon says, can you enter this tournament tomorrow? If so, with which stack? Nope. It's now a freeze out. Registration closed at the start of day two. So the way it works now, players who play through the day and survive the day will bag their chips and come back with the same stack tomorrow. And we'll just continue over the next few days until 
We have just one player remaining, and that will happen on Sunday. A little old school open limp here with the Ducks. Covert Metal didn't want to raise in early position here on 35 ish bigs with pocket twos, and I don't blame him, but didn't want to fold. Posse now with the very, very large raise of 17,000. Shouldn't expect to get much of any action to a 7x unless your opponent is holding a very big hand. Bufano's like, really? How much is it? I kind of want to see a flop, but yeah, 17,000 is going to get me to out of there. JC asks, how many big blinds do you get if you buy in at the start of day two? So starting stack in the EPT main event is 30,000, and we started today with the blinds at 1K, 1.5K. So it's a 20 big blind stack if you late reg at the last possible moment. And sometimes when you do that, you can spin it up. As like we saw Spraggy do yep. earlier. Leo Terra TV writes, Pokestar sponsor. Yes, thank you for your comment. Corsi raising with Ace King of Diamonds. Very active. Come on, let's see a flop, Margolin. It's just one chip. Come on, man. Jack, eight, three. Well, it is officially domination rotation, but Corsi is not in bad shape here with oh, the diamond draw. Not at all. But if he doesn't hit that king or diamond, it's going to be costly. James just had to turn off his mic laughing it's too hard. Yeah, I mean, my sides have literally split. My guts are all over the floor. Also, he made it yeah. six and a half K on the flop. Now eight and a half K on the turn, Griff. Not trying to really fold in it, anything out here. Just sort of price setting. You know, doesn't want to check call twenty five K on the turn. Would rather just bet eighty five hundred. But Madera might start wanting to charge Kossi for these small bets. You know, if you treat this eighty five hundred as almost always weaker than your ace jack why, why don't we just start going for value here why don't we start charging those flush draws those worst jacks so that is what's spinning here you know had Kossi just bet out a large amount I think Madero would have just called yep. but now he's thinking to himself alright I think I'm prepared to feel very very comfortable about this hand strength and I think I can probably get called by worse hands. Now what does Kossi do facing this large raise? I mean, this is almost, this is 4x. Yeah, that didn't sound like a, an ask and fold, did it? There is the call, and this pot has now ballooned into the six figures. 
What does the dealer have in store for us here? The four of clubs. No diamond. No dicement. Of course, he checks. Madeira with a lock on this. <coughs> Neither player has pot behind. How do you play this if you're Madeira, Griffin? Are you still going for value here? I think I am against Kossi. Just, I guess Kossi could have queens or jacks, some kick queens or kings sometimes, but it's more likely going to be a hand like king jack or queen jack, jack 10. Yeah, and we do get the shove from Madeira. 75,000. All in. Probably just a bit of a hand funeral here. You know, Kasi making us all come to this the morning of this hand of what could have been. But maybe the wheels are spinning a little bit. Maybe he's thinking, well, wait a minute. What is my opponent saying he has here? Two eights? Two fives? Maybe he has something like nine ten suited. But of course, Posse does fold. And a nice pot there. Viva, Viva Brazil. Pedro up to 177,000 chips. Causey and effect. Madeira now third in chips at the table with 70 big blinds. 36 minutes on the clock until the next break. I can reveal at this point in time that we are going to have a feature table change at the end of this level during the next break. Who's going to be at that new feature table? Find out in around half an hour's time. Okay, so someone on Twitch did ask if I could do a recap of the last hour. Should I try to do my best in one big long breath? <laughs> you can say no. <laughs> you know I'm going to say no. <laughs> Unless you're going to uh, give a Stapleton-esque summary. They well, played some poke hands. Some people won, some people no, lost. No, I, I was going to try to like recap every single hand in one breath. <laughs> What's no. frightening is you actually probably remember many of the key details <laughs> yeah, of many of the hands we've watched in the last yeah. hour. Okay, I'll tell you whatever asked that question. If you ask me a uh, breakdown of the last hour of one player, I will, in one breath, tell you the important hands that they played. How about that? I can test my, my memory retention. Thank you for your question. Then Zephra has opened with jacks and been three bet by Madeira. Here we go. <laughs> ben Zephra does have the Johnnies. The Jack and Jill. You know, I can't think of any other two J names. Well, the James and Joe is a very specific yes, pocket the jacks. Specific suits, yes, Spades I know. Spades in the hearts. These are the ladles, the jam jars, the hooks. <laughs> and we get a 754 flop looking good for the jacks. Ooh, Ben Zerfa's intensity is uh, palpitating. He's just really staring him down. Not him. Adara is pretty chill. But we'll get back to Ben Zerfa in a second. Look how intense this guy is. Give me Jason Statham. Boom, boom. My, my camera kill. There he is. Now, I agree with you that he has an intense look. I vehemently disagree with you on the Jason Statham look like, just because he's bald. I know, I'm not saying it just because of that. Yes, it's you like, are. 
no, no. He has his, he has his shape. You know, he's a different shaped head for a star. No, I mean he's you know he's ri he's ripped. He's like transporter. Ooh. <laughs> tell you what, Madara, if you want to tell a story, well, that's the turn card to do it on. It's more like Moby than Jason Statham. Moby Statham. That's all. That's as far as I'll, <laughs> I'll compromise. I'll meet you in the middle. This is a big moment, though, for Ben Zerfa, whatever he looks like. Okay, so two overcards to the Jacks, oh, but... that shot. Do you see that shot? Jacks still good. <laughs> These guys. Let me tell you. Production team out here. Top of the class. There is an avenue now for Madera to win. You would hate to lose its showdown to two tens here. But if you did have something like Ace King, wouldn't you have bet the turn? <laughs> Isn't it now less likely you have something like Ace King now that an Ace and a King have come out? Oh, and Benzera makes the blockerish bet. Doesn't want to give Madera the opportunity to blast here with the bluffs. Yeah, sometimes you're just going to get quickly called by a. Um, you know, an, an ace nine that three bet pre and check back the turn, or maybe you get called by the, the you know the king queen that three bet. But at least you don't face a sixty five seventy thousand chip bet and have to fold pocket jacks because that's a near impossible call to make, right? Yeah. So I think Benzerf is just saying, I've decided this is my pot, and it's going to work. A really a really brilliant level. First hour of this level here for Benzerfa. Just everything gone right all the way up to, you know, near a quarter million chips. Let's go, Benzerfa. Playing close to 100 big blinds at the current blind level. to Ramesh Corsi, who has ace nine of spades. Raises to 6,000. Speaking of Jason Statham, did you see the beekeeper? See the what? The beekeeper. The beekeeper? Yes. Is that a real film? Are you kidding? <laughs> yes. This is about one, of, one of the best theater experiences I've had in a while. Come on. You don't know about the beekeeper? It's like 73% on Rotten Tomatoes, dude. It's peak Statham. It is a ridiculous film. It is so much fun to watch. <laughs> 6.4 out of 10 on IMDb. David Ayer. Okay. <laughs> I will wait for it to appear for free on some dude, streaming it, service. All the bee puns are ridiculous. It, like, you got to go see the beekeeper. Where, 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 where are my bees at? Give me some buzzes in the chat. I know you've seen the beekeeper. I went with three of my friends in theaters. It's a great time. So Madeira flattered the raise with sixes. Ufano looking at ace queen in the hijack. Yeah, I think this is a nice opportunity for Ufano to just shove here for 28 big blinds. Madeira probably not going to have a ton of traps here. Kossi playing a lot of hands. Not really quite enough chips to just three bet and see what happens. And I think Ufano probably knows that what that's what he needs to do. I think it would be a bit of a disaster to just flat. Time table for Oh, clock's been called. Gover Matal calling the clock on Ufano. That's a bit rich. Wow. Remember some of those tanks we saw from Matal at EPC Prague? Well, he's made his decision. 
And he has decided to squeeze three betting to 19,000. Tal folding the ace jack. Okay, here's a question for you. Brian Paris folding the big blind. Original raises out, and Madeira folds the sixes. Go, Do Griffin. you think that Govert Mattel resented the tank because he had ace jack and he probably wanted to, like, enter this pot and make a decision because he had a playable hand? I he don't know. thought he was fake tanking maybe because we're getting close to the money, and if he could just fold, then he would keep, keep making his, his check. I don't know if Govert Mattel even looked at his cards at that point. Well, that's what I mean. Do we think it's connected? I have no idea. Do you know that Matal is one of the shorter stacks at the feature table right now with around 30 big blinds? The only short stack is Lev Margolin, who's playing 13 bigs. And a pretty unassuming level from our table chip leader in Brian Paris. Yeah. Just feels like he hasn't lost or gained anything. He's just chilled. Really feeling at home here in Paris. Of course, from tomorrow, day three of the EPC main event, the shot clock will be brought into play. At that point, you have 30 seconds per decision unless you play time bank cards to get additional thinking time. Tal raising the button here with Ace-8. Salt Pastel and says, what about the shock clock that you were talking about? I have floated the idea of it being <laughs> trialed at a future PokerStars event. I think there is a feeling that maybe the EPT is not the right place to trial it. But I'm hoping that when we get to Dublin for the Irish Open, we can go with the idea of having the shock clock. No need for time bank cards, Griffin. He hasn't heard this one yet. 30 seconds per decision. Okay. Once your additional initial 30 seconds has run out, we start applying electricity. Yeah. And as the more time you're thinking, the voltage is going up. Okay. So high pressure situation, you think. I love this. You're I love kind this of, idea. You're starting. I would love to, to be a part of the, the guinea pigs. Yeah, I'm just you know, going there and test yeah, this I'm out. In one hand, I'm going there. It's going to be all fun and games until we kill someone. As I've always said, a poker tournament where when you're eliminated, you're actually eliminated is another one of my ideas. So I could be combining two concepts here. <laughs> That's right, Bear Totem. They did do it in a James Bond film, in an unofficial Bond film called Never Say Never Again, where they play a horrific video game that no one can understand the rules of called Domination. And you, you grip the controllers and it's giving you an electric shock. Oh, yeah. And if you let go of the controllers, you forfeit the game. So as I've, I've said to you before, James, and I'm sure you block it out of your memory every time because... It, it you know hurts who you are to your core, but I, mm. I haven't really seen many Bond films. I'm more of a you know Brosnan and and uh, and Craig guy. If there was one Bond film that you could watch with me and and introduce <laughs> me to either Connery or whatever those other guys are called, look like a classic Dalton. Bond film. Yeah, what, what, yeah, one that I haven't seen that you'd want to like show me. Connery, Goldfinger, more The Spy Who Loved Me, Dalton, oh, yeah. The Living Daylights. Those would be the three which I'd say you should watch. Okay. You've got, Griffin, you've got so much free time on your hands. How are you not watching Bond films? I'm busy watching The Beekeeper. <laughs> Pair of nines here for Govert Matal. Pair of fours for Corsi. you got to protect the hive. Well, she said it doesn't work if you move away. Ooh. Two pair now for Matal. <laughs> Not taking a fish. <laughs> and Gossy getting a little weird here. 
with this lead. Deciding, well, my hand has gotten worse, so why don't I just bet and see what happens? But Govert, not one to shy away. Probably going to want to protect against a rivered spade or a straight card. You know, this hand is so strong. You, you know, there is an argument to just call, but you want to you want to charge those hands. That, you know, if you think Kossi is leading here with something like a 10-7 yeah, like of spades, you want to charge the man. And there is the raise. And another great beard. Kossi going to let it go. Is that a B? <laughs> Did you hear that? Well, that was Govert Metal stacking chips. <laughs> now playing just shy of 40 big blinds. Three hundred and thirty-two players remaining with twenty minutes left on this level. No Balubi, this is not the final table. This is a feature table on day two of the tournament. We still have three hundred and thirty-two players remaining, as I just highlighted. Oh, Harkin. Harkin has been asking us to remove the black dot from the screen for the last two hours. And Harkin's like, I restarted the TV and the dot is gone. I said it was an MP, not a YP. I thought it was at your end. But good job restarting the TV. I'm glad that the river card is now unblocked for you. I got to be honest, I see the black dot. <laughs> Griffin, you've been seeing things for years. <laughs> Margolin sees something he likes in the Ace-King. For 14 big blinds, what else are you going to do but say, I'm all in? You could men race. Some people would. Others would shove. Either way, that pot goes to Margolin. Well, we're going to step away from the feature table. We're going to go out into the field. Spraggy, please. We're going to see a hand from one of the outer tables. Ask and you shall receive, Griffin Benja. We are going to check in on table Spraggy. Multi-way action here. We join it on the flop with Spraggy betting 6,000. His opponents, Eli Ross and Jose Santo. Ross calls the bet. Santo calls as well. So three-way to the river. The board, king, eight, six, seven, nine. This is a straighty board. Check to Spraggles. He checks. For that pin to drop. Spraggy firing what appears to be 19,000 or yeah. 14,000? 19,000 on this four card straight board. Six, seven, eight, nine, king. Eli Ross. Calls Spraggy's bet. Jose Santo folds. Spraggy announces oh. 10. King 10. So Spraggy, flop top pair, rivered the straight, wins the pot. Spraggy continuing to spin it up. Yeah, he got, got one. one. Got one. Sorry, I didn't see that. Take another one. And I can confirm that table Spraggy 
will be, be lose, right? our new feature table like after the next break. Oh, very nice. Yes, I hope you do two levels, then I'll be okay, back. See some more Sprag in action. And Zerfa continuing his epic level by now attacking the table chip leader in Brian Paris, who has two nines. We're going to see a flop here, people, yeah. between the big stacks. The winner have to win the table. Yeah. He probably should take it back home, but yeah, good idea. <laughs> Gretzky versus the dead man's hand. And there is an ace on the desk. So Ben Zephyr now with the advantage, 91 favorite. Yes, Seth, Tonka bust earlier on. But I would like to highlight that Tonka did secure a second place finish in the 2K FPS high roller for a six figure score. A tournament I understand that involves some drama around the bubble. Not sure if anyone has seen David Lappin's latest blog about that. And the somewhat harsh put down that he had for Tonka. Yeah, that wasn't funny at all. Harris, happy to tip his cap. Nice flop, sir. More than a nice hand, I'm sure. Has the table chip lead right now, and of course a lot of people rooting for this guy to win because as we established earlier on, if he wins, the headlines write themselves. Brian wins big in France. Yes. Slim asks, is it a record for entries at an EPT? No, it's the sixth biggest EPT of all time. We've had five bigger fields all in Barcelona. But it is a big one, I'll give you that. A lot of players to cut through over the next few days. Got to get this thing done by Sunday. Play down to a winner on Sunday. So it's the biggest EPT ever outside of Spain. Basically. Correct. Wow. That is pretty awesome. Zuha says Ben Zerfa plays smooth and controlled. Not as smooth and controlled as the bubble will be later on. Toby Stone will be in command, standing in the middle of the room, wearing his dapper suit, speaking into that microphone, telling everyone to sit down. They'll ignore him. The stone bubble, we like to call it here on the EPT. So we have played, well, once we get to the end of this level, we'll have played three levels. We are playing five and a half levels today, so two and a half still to go once we hit the next break. Which means we should be here until about 11.30 p.m. local time. Again, I, I'm guesstimating because you always lose a bit of time around the breaks and the bubble always adds time, right? Because they'll pause the clock for all ends. Mm -hmm. But I was highlighting earlier that generally speaking, and it's not a rule of thumb and there's no guarantee, but a trend I've observed is the bigger the field, the more tables there are in play, the quicker the bubble sometimes bursts. Interesting. Cut to hour five of Hand for Hand. 7.5. You might say you are always learning more about the bubble, both a student and a teacher of the bubble. Let's see, raising small to big with nines. I'll go in with ace three in the big.
And you know what? Of course, we can see Pichak has the nines. But if you're sitting in Margolin's seat, you just have your 14 big blinds and some aggressive upshot, you know, Euro superstar, newly patched EPT winner, 3x is your big blind. You might be inclined to say all in. So this is uh, not as easy as it might appear when you just dealt something as weak as ace three and finds the fold. And, you know, while I think that is incredibly impressive in a vacuum, yeah, you're going to be getting exploited a lot by someone like Vichyak, who's going to be raising a lot worse than two nines. But, you know, sometimes being results-oriented is, is okay, too. And uh, a nice getaway there from, for, from our goal and it's Raven asks, did you say we were hand-for-hand hand now? No, I didn't. Thank you for your question. Bad look-alike. Simon Vitsiak and Carl Reiner? I mean, that's not just a Who bad dat? look alike. That's a horrific look alike. Who that? Carl Reiner. Rob's dad. Yeah, this is a very weird look alike. Because the man was born in 1922. He died quite recently, right? Uh, yeah, in 2020. Yeah. He's. One of so, Ocean's Eleven. Yeah, I'm looking at the younger version, and he's saying, Vichyak looks like this guy? Yeah. No, this is this is dreadful. This is dreadful work. Can you ban that guy? <laughs> yeah, I can. No you problem. <laughs> Mattel with the hand edge, but if he just calls this, won't have the aggression edge. Is just going to call to see a flop. Let's see if Vichyak can... Uh, wrestle his way out of this straight jacket that is this complete domination situation. Oh, dear. No, no, not the board. Although four nines in the deck will wiggle him out. I think you can see a check back a decent amount of the time here from Vichyak, and he does quickly check back. And Mattel is going to kick open that closet right now. Reveal himself to Vichyak. This is a pot I am interested in. Here is 8,000 chips. Ooh, 10,000. Ooh, 10,005. Ooh, 11,005. 12,005? Pot size bet. And does Vichyak ever just find a fold here? With this mid pair and bottom gutter, I mean, this is not, shouldn't really be a bluff very often. You're not working with a lot of chips here as, as, as Vichyak, right? You only have 62,000. This, yeah. this bet's representing a fifth of your stack. This is not a spot you expect your opponent to be bluffing in. And look at that fold. It's a big bet. Yeah, yeah. see, the big, big bet scared him off. Big hands, big bet. Yeah. And this, you know, we saw a lot of impressive stuff from uh, Simon Vichyak when he won his EPT. But it's nice to just see the little sort of little moments on day twos when he's playing a 2x starting stack where he just sort of finds his way out of danger. That was pretty impressive. Someone's just unzipped. <laughs> or zipped up. It's, it's, you know, it's, uh, it's like a half glass full, half empty. Well, you know, which, which are you? I like to believe it was a zip down myself. Ufano. Jacks in the hijack. Uh, nope. Did you know Nope was an acronym in the movie? I did learn did that, that afterwards. Yeah. It's cool. It's cool little movie trivia.
Sonny Jim asks, is Rory Jennings still a note? Rory made it to hand three of the day and then joined us in the booth earlier on. Ryan Paris, king five in the big blind. You do have a big blind already in there. You know, you'd, you'd probably call this against the button. In this spot of the offsuit variety, maybe you'd call king nine, maybe king eight. But with all these chips, Paris says, you know what? I can afford it. Let's see a flop. Maybe I can suck out a hand like, on a hand like Jack's. But do. No. Six deuce deuce. Fifth aid says, I assume whoever said Carl Reiner meant Margolin, not Witsiak. Well, you know what they say about assume? It makes an arse out of everyone. Paris checks. Ufano bets 3,000, gets a fold from Paris. We're at Ted Rogers, 3 2 1. And players informed that we will have a We're change of feature table yes. during the break. We're going to say goodbye to one Pokestars ambassador and hello to another. Simon Vitsiak's table goes out into the field, and Benjamin Sprague's table comes to the main stage. Just to remind you. Tonka went during the first level. Finson went during the second level. But Spraggy is still in, and he's going to be headlining the new feature table after the next break, which is about six minutes away. What about Sam Grafton? He also eliminated from this very table. There you go. Pitsiak opening in the hijack with King Queen. A7 offsuit for Paris, a hand which is coincidentally known as the Spraggy. And the king of day two, level three, Yusef Benzerfa with the absolutely <laughs> stunningly crunchy 9-8 of clubs. He's going to be very happy to see a flop. Ooh. Open-ended straight draw. You know you love it so. But Two. your opponent has a flush draw. Better dodge those diamonds. Should expect to see Ben Zerfa continue to some capacity, whether that is a check raise or a call. Well, it's really up to him. Of course, you are drawing dead to the flushes, but you're going to expect your six and jack to be live enough of the time. And then also your eight and nine a decent amount of the time, too. But makes it a little easier to play it as a check raise, I think. But Vichyak not going anywhere. I don't think yeah. it would have ever been the intention to bet fold this hand. Ooh. Okay, so Ben Zerfa now drawing dead as Vichyak turns the flush. Yeah, immediately. Ben Zerfa rightfully waving the white flag. Board pairs on the river. Philip the Razor. Razor says James has a lovely singing voice. I assume choir back in school. Nope. Didn't make the cut.
Penzerfa with some machinations here. Uh-oh, finally a misstep. What's he doing, Griffin? He's betting big. But why would he do that? He only has nine high. Because he finds himself at the bottom of his range. Yeah, but you can't bluff when your opponent has a flush. Well, you can. It just shouldn't work. Well, it won't work, will it? Jack with the quick call. Shown the good news. And that is how you go to break. I mean, we technically probably have another hand. But at least one hand. It's still got one hand. 240 on the clock. It was just felt like a cool thing to say, you know? So Vitiak back up to around 100k, around 40 big blinds, although those blinds are going to be going up soon. And still below average. Average stack right now with 316 players remaining, being 166,000. Anchor says, has to shove if he's going to bluff that river. Would a shove work? I mean, it might. It's easier to say when you know what your opponent has, but you're kind of representing very thin there, like a 10-7 for a boat. Margol in. Probably a bit too many chips at 13 big blinds here at the hijack, but would be a nice pickup. Well, his stack's going to be a whole lot shallower in one minute's time. Touche. Round to go at Metal in the cutoff with ace at three. Raises to 5,500. Jack 10 of diamonds for Brian Paris on the button. <laughs> Paris calling in position. But Zerfa in the small blind has Queen Jack. I think we are finished. I think I need to watch this time in the television. <laughs> <laughs> so he calls as well, and then we have Ramesh Kelsey in the big blind. And he calls with King 4, four way to the flop. Some weird hands here. Kind of awkward holdings. <laughs> Eight, four, three. So pair of threes for Metal, pair of fours for Corsi. So it's the junk hands that have connected here. Ambitious bet here from Ben Zerfa. Obviously, trying to sort of represent because this should hit his range harder than. And look at that. It's going to work. It folds out the third pair from Kossi and the bottom pair at yeah. straight draw. So, you know what? Good for you, Ben Zerfa. That was a pretty solid level for Yusef Ben Zerfa. Has around a quarter of a million chips. Brian Paris still the biggest stack at this table. And a reminder that we are now changing the feature table. So these are the stacks of the players we have been following. And those 
are the blinds at the next level, 1,500, 3,000, so 93 bigs for Paris, just 11 bigs for Margola. But yes, new lineup on the main stage when we come back from break. We're back in 17 minutes, and Benjamin Sprague will be headlining our new feature table. More action from the Pokestars European Poker Tour here in Paris in 17 minutes' time. Pocket eight for Ben and Ellie. And I don't think it's a spoiler to say that it really can't go beyond this level. <laughs> 30 big blinds playing 24 big blinds. It is almost impossible for them to get out of this level without the money going in. Yeah, Ben and Ellie here with eights. It should have ended in the last level mathematically. <laughs> The math is broken today, Stapes. <laughs> oh, boy. We got a set of eights for Ben Dinelli. Oh, no. Top pair for Guerrero. I said the money was going to have to go in. These guys have played pretty conservatively and made some tight folds. So maybe it doesn't have to go in right now. But, boy, does this feel like it. Bendinelli firing 2.5 million or 250,000, whichever way you want to <laughs> Thank you guys. get out there. <laughs> and Guerrero just calls. The turn is a oh, jack. Wow. Oh, no. What a setup. Oh, such a cold deck. Cold deck city. Guerrero covered. I think the only light at the end of the tunnel is we've seen a lot of miracle rivers throughout the course of this tournament. Looking for the board to pair, except for an eight. Doesn't know that yet. Probably thinks he's got the best of it. Trips versus a full house. Yeah, and Bendinelli very... Clearly trying to set up a sizing here on the turn that can make it an easy all-in on the river. Wants to give Guerrero a good price to continue. Does it ever go in now? Guerrero has no idea what he's up against. Makes the call, so that's 23 million in the middle. Neither player the pot size bet behind. Jimmy really needs to hit this river. Oh, the oh my board God. pairs, oh. but it's the eight. No. It's quad no. eight for Ben Dinelli. Wow. This is unbelievable. This is the coldest of decks. It doesn't get any colder than this, Maria. I'm what? glad you got a sweatshirt for this hand. Oh. Insane ending, I assume. Oh, my goodness. To the most insane EPT I have ever been a part of. I could... A literal bad beat jackpot hand. <laughs> Jack's full. Beaten by quad eights. Guerrero bets. Oh. Wow. Oh. And Guerrero leading. Oh, my gosh. Put yourself... Put yourself in his shoes. He's got quads and you're getting led into on this river. It's the absolute jackpot payday. How is Ben Dinelli's heart just not jumping out of his skin right now? Oh my gosh. Ben Dinelli has been so patient, has folded winners. Had a chance to put this to bed. Announces all in. Guerrero hasn't snap called. There's just no way. There's the call from Guerrero. It's over. <laughs> he hasn't even tabled his hand. Table oh your hand. Ben Dinelli shows the quad. <laughs> ben Dinelli does it. Guerrero tables the loser. And Ben Dinelli swarmed by his countrymen. 
Somebody get that boy his mama. <laughs> Giuliano Bendinelli is the EPT Barcelona 2022 main event champion. Absolutely unreal finish to an incredible main event. And the chance will not stop. A nice kiss from Mama Benedelli. Benedelli. It's just not even real life, you guys. That is not a real life way to win an EPT. This is, is this real life, people? Seriously, look at what just happened. This guy came back from one big blind to be here to River Quads. It gets so complicated, it's incredible to try to recreate games over and over again and quickly. What does it take to make a movie these days? Oh, man. I mean, it's funny, you know, because, <clears throat> you know, over the last, I don't know, 15 years or something or whatever, 10 years, it's, I mean, in, in theory, it's gotten easier. You can make a movie for, you know, a very small amount of money. My, my first movie, you know, I did make for like $17,000. And a lot of people who are successful right now did make their movies, you know, for that for that amount of money. Um, but... <laughs> All that said, like the la I think the, like the last it was like the last five years or so, it's gotten a lot harder. Um, money, the money is just sort of more difficult to get. Um, so there's the money part, the finance, which is always usually like in some ways the hardest part. Um, I, I I personally spent a lot of time um, hoping and a lot of time writing. And you know, I've written a lot of scripts that don't get you know I, a lot of things just don't get made. So sometimes it's sort of like an abstract job. Of like hoping and like build building something that will never get made that happens a lot too but it's right now yeah it's very very hard to get a movie made if that's what it feels like so let's talk about the cast a little bit and our sort of association we play in a home game together or did play before i ended up getting super busy again club quarantine is uh and michael sarah obviously was a member of that game and was uh did you have a pre-existing relationship with michael and that's how he came to be in the game or did your friendship blossom during this game um yeah no i had i had um so i i met michael when i made another movie called person to person and i hardly knew michael at that point but we made him we made another movie together that i directed but and then and then after making that movie we became friends um and uh became closer um and did that we actually did play a little poker um off and on during that time period but yeah it was it was this zoom poker group uh, club quarantine that um that happened because of covid that um i got further i got deeper into poker but yeah i, I invited michael uh into that group and then sort of like my relationship with michael in terms of poker became deeper like we had we had played a little bit of poker but um together and he had he had played poker in his life um off and on but it was when he when he did molly's game he got deeper and then it got even more deeper during club quarantine because like he and i would um he and i would uh like play the game and then like you know oftentimes after the after the game we would actually talk about it and what went wrong or what went right we would like this and we would and we discuss the players and everything I guess I that's kind of where I wanted to go with my next question as far as how poker um, relates to this movie. Using poker as a device to show you how like how how impulsive and compulsive Eric can be. Was that your plan all along for Eric or is that just like a happy coincidence that you happen to discover, po you know, become sort of e deeper into poker while you're writing this? Um. Yeah, it, you know, like that that original draft that I was speaking about didn't have poker. I mean, I mean this cool. this other draft, this other draft that we were thinking of shooting and possibly going to shoot that we didn't, um, thankfully, um, was like ninety percent different than this this movie. Like I completely overhauled ninety percent of the whole thing, and and one of those things was poker. And in fact, I think poker was. In, in many ways, the unlocking of the script, I think, in some ways, because what ended up happening was that 
and and it was because of this this Zoom poker group that I had gotten deeper into poker and my relationship with Michael talking about poker. Really, that's that, I mean, maybe this movie wouldn't even exist without that, cool. because I think that th- I think this movie needed that aspect to it. But but the yeah, what ended up happening was that the poker really unlocked the character and the script for me. I had this other, I had this in, you know this perfect device um, that was. Uh, you know, in the film, it's about this person who has sort of stopped um, playing with or having any kind of imagination or like an unwillingness to um, participate in this childhood world with his sisters. Well, now he has this other kind of place where he can play this adult, more adult world where he feels like he can have some kind of control or some kind of power. And I think, you know, when he was young, I think he had control and power and like he he was sort of like the king of that sort of world with them. And, and now he's in, with, with the poker, he's like, he, he, it's a sense of like comfort and like some kind of control. Did you find shooting the poker scenes to be challenging at all? It seems like you did it in such a way that they, you, you missed a lot of the sort of mistakes that people make by not trying to show the entire scene. I think it also probably helps the fact that you knew the game, Dustin, because it is something that notoriously directors who maybe are not au fait with with poker really struggle with they find it that they reportedly found it really hard to cover it and ex- show the audience what's happening and get the key information out there i mean it's hard it is hard i mean it's really really hard to convey the information um yeah. just um just in a practical sense because like the prop person didn't know poker and that became like a that already that is something that's like really really hard because um like, you know, the prop people have to like reset the chips, reset the cards. And when they, and then when the cards are dealt, the right cards have to come out. It gets so complicated. It's incredible to try to recreate games over and over again and quickly. I did it. I, I'm, on Card Counter, I, I did that. That was my job to set the decks to make sure all, when all the players had to pull their chips back. You know, we had a very small crew on that one as well. It's, it's really uh, very difficult. But I think the way you chose to do it is perfect because things aren't perfect in these home games they're not perfect in the warehouse underground game yeah i'm so i'm trying to direct the actors and everything but like if the prop person doesn't you know the prop person not knowing poker not even knowing like trying to really understand it was really just like a big challenge we were trying to just but look luckily also michael was there to like he was also resetting things too we were the only two people in the room who knew poker so it was like really really crazy to sort of reset Kings for Notkin under the gun. Cowboys. Hang on a second. Here we go. So Notkin raises. Miller moves all in. What's Miller's hand? King Queen. Jacques with a decision in the small blind. He's got Ace Ten. Hiya. And he reshoves. Oh boy. What is happening? What does Rivers have? How is he even thinking about this? He's got two eights. OMG. Notkin's got more chips than anyone else. Notkin's got them all covered, and he's got the best hand. This would be absolutely rishnefulous. You're waiting for one player to go broke. You might see three players go broke here. That said, I think this is a fold. I mean, Rivers is definitely folded in less marginal spots than this. He's looking to ladder. That's what he's been doing all along. Why suddenly get carried away here with eights? I think this is a perfectly legitimate fold. A raise, a shove, a reshove by the guy who's second in chips. Honestly, James, I kind of just want him to call so we could maybe... This would be the weirdest end of a tournament ever. It would somehow feel appropriate. I mean, it would feel the the ending of the tournament was just dragged out so long, and then just an abrupt end all at once. Boom, done. Four to one in one hand. Is it possible? I'm pretty sure that Rivers is folding. 
it's not a simple case of just Miller shoving, it's the fact that Jacques has shoved over the top of him, and Notkin is sitting there knowing that he's going to snap when the action comes back to him. Oh boy, how do you even stay in your chair? And you better, because they might kill your hand. He's in! He's, he's all in! in. Holy Schneiky! And Notkin calls, putting the other three players at risk! I have never seen a four-way all-in at a final table where the guy with the other three players has got them covered. This is crazy town. If kings hold here, we go from four players to a champion and Robert Notkin, the online qualifier who got his seat for just $30, has won the Canada Cup. Notkin could be knocking all three players out in one hand. What a ridiculous hand. So just to clarify, Notkin ahead with Kings. Miller all in with King Queen. Jacques all in with Ace-10. Rivers all in with eight. Five cards to come. He's got half the equity four ways. Good luck to the dealer trying to work out side parts. Did anyone fold an ace? Jack 7-3, <laughs> King's holding. King's way holding. Notkin now a 75% favorite to eliminate the other three players and win the Canada Cup. Way bigger favorite now. 88% favorite, the river card. As a man once said, it's a brick! And Robert Notkin has won the Canada Cup! Notkin knocks out everyone! What a way to win the tournament! Can you hear me knocking? His friends and family came all the way from Toronto to see this tournament. And what a hand for them to witness! A way all in, which sees Robert Notkin claim the title, the trophy, and $366,000. Hello, my babies, and welcome back to the Poker Stars European Poker Tour. EPT Paris 2024 Part 2 Day 2 And here is the story so far Nearly 650 players took their seats at the start of the day Some of them we know quite well Team Pro Parker Talbot and Gail Bauman headlined the feature table But both were knocked out by Adil Tournee and a three-way all-in early into the session. Next level saw newest member of Team Pro, Simon Witsiak and Sam Grafton join us. Sam made a huge pre-flop call against Brian Paris, but missed his three outs and hit the rail before the money. It has already been a day. Joe Stapleton, Nick Walsh. Hello, hello. Thank you for having me, Joe. Here for the third session of the day, we've got a new feature. I can't do any Brian Paris jokes, guys. <laughs> what are you doing to me? You've really got me here. Paul Vas Nunes. It's been a while since we've seen Paul at a feature table. Benjamin Spraggy Sprag, your friend and mine. Poker Stars team pro member. All eyes on Ben. Basically, yes, Spraggy is still in. Main event there. Well, time for redemption. Spraggy with 54 Correct. big blinds. Yeah, finally. Table finally. chip leader Joshua Duce. Or Deuce. Deuce. A decade ago. <laughs> I mean, I'm taking a like deuce here on the feature years, table. Like three times, it's like, yeah, rolls I mean, I. That's the Australian fa flag? Okay. The good thing is they have a good sense of humor. He'll he'll understand either way. If it's the Australian fl fl flag, flag, everyone just calls him Deucey anyway. That's right. Big D. I don't know what accent that was, but I can't be accused of it being insensitive because it was not even close to Australian. What are you doing today, Deucey? There you go. All right. 
You going to win the poker? <laughs> Action has folded around to Eli Ross. Is that the guy, the horror movie guy? No. Ross folds. Fast Nunes folds. Nope. Made it 6,000. Sorry, got by me. Jack 10 suited. Great hand. One of our favorites. Today's the day for you. You're feeling good for you today. Thank you. I like it. I like a call. Let's take a flop. 6 4 suited. Beautiful hand. Let's go. Oberlieben. Does that mean over lover? Ace, five, tray, an up and down draw for six, four suited. Diamond out there as well. Jack yeah. 10 has, has whiffed pretty hard here, but does have the range and position advantage. True, absolutely. But it, oh, Oberlieben. Oberlieben. I was looking around for a clock. No. I'm going to get this right eventually. <laughs> Just some really fast action. I was too too excited to make that joke. No, it's Foss Nunes who has continued. As we said, with that range and position advantage, or we're leaving, deciding whether to just call, I assume, or do something else. Just call indeed. Darren Card, Queen of Hearts. Misses everyone, but Vas Nunes now has a straight draw of his own. Yeah, you got to imagine this is a good barreling card. You can get some fives to fold, some threes to fold, some six fours to fold, some gut shots to fold. And, of course, you pick up a little bit more equity to the nuts with your jack-10 with the gut shot. The king on the river is always a nice way to do it, too. And going to go for the 12K. I don't know if I love this size, Joe. Again, I think I probably just kind of expect a little bit of a larger size here on the turn at this stack tap. But you have to remember here as well, Oberlieben is actually quite shallow. Only nine big blinds behind. So actually, I take it back. I, I really like this size. The effective stack depth eluded me there. Didn't see how short stacked Oberlieben was. Happens to the best of us. And by the best of us, I mean me. So I'm using that term loosely. Yeah, hashtag, uh, hashtag confirmed. Love the size. It feels like the kind of size where you can still fold. It when does, you get absolutely. On. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 the threat, you know, uh, in relation to the total stack. This actually isn't the craziest check shove turn, Joe, with the straight draw, because you have to imagine from the cutoff, there's going to be a lot of combos that bet bluff the flop, bluff the turn. But I don't know if this is really quite the setup that you're looking for. I don't know if this is enough big blinds to accomplish that task, but it is worth considering that you have some fold equity and your opponent will be bluffing the flop and the turn very, very frequently. Not just with Jack-10, but with a whole bunch of other stuff, including complete air. Not looking super happy about this situation. Although I don't know this player, that could just be him. Oh, that was a big swallow there. Oh can be a gulp tell. Definitely looks nervous. Just wants to let it go. I think that's very reasonable. Well played there. I mean, it's, Vas easy, Nunez. it's easy to, to think shove there when we can see the hold cards. Sure. Trying to keep it, trying to keep a balanced perspective. Trying to imagine if we didn't know the whole cards, of course. But um, no, nah, it was pretty good stuff and nice adjustment there for the shorter stack depth. I do actually like that size a lot on the I turn. I stall like that for every hand. No one wanted to call clock because it's on TV, and everyone's like, oh, "I'm not gonna, <laughs> first hand. I'm not going to be that guy." Yeah, I was almost going to be that guy. <laughs> if Parker was here, you'd, you'd bet 20 seconds ago you'd have had a clock in here. Also, can we talk about Parker for a minute? Absolutely incredible performance earlier this week. Second place, 300-something K. Pretty cool. I mean, the, the kid's a good poker player. What can you say? Yeah, hate to admit it. I will say that Parker's got some family in town this week, and seeing him with his family did wonders for humanizing him in my eyes. I got to see Parker as a real human being and not just a... 
Don't want Genius. Don't give up the savant. <laughs> Terrifying <laughs> poker savant, yes. <laughs> nah, he's pretty down to earth usually. It was weird seeing him guy? be sweet. <laughs> oh, the bad intimidation. Might be the opposite. There he is, Senor Spraggles, fellow Team Pro, Poker Stars ambassador. Stills by Stormy in the box here, announcing this raise from Hagstrom. Hagstrom here, 14 big blinds. I like the open and not the shove. I know when you start to get shallower, you can be tempted just to be all in here. You know, just try and simplify it. You, you know, a lot of people feel uncomfortable when they min-raise here and they have to play against the big blind or whatever. It's at a very shallow stack depth, but I think it's important that we still have min-raises at the stack depth, and that means Ace-King needs to go in there. I think it's important that uh, we try and get action what you're even saying. as we're short-stacked. I understand what you're saying, Yeah, but I hate it. I know. That's why it's hard. But sometimes in poker, you got to do what's hard. It's a drawing hand. I prefer no action. Just let me 4.5 exit. I mean. Look, the min-raise worked. I mean, if anything, you can just say, hey, min-raising still works sometimes. You it, can still just does. pick up the blinds and annies. It does. You want to give other people the opportunity to, to get you all in with, you know, ace, queen, ace, jack, ace, ten. And you still want to get some action when you got a strong holding, even if it's just the drawing hand. Hope Phil Helmuth isn't watching. <laughs> Sacramento says, Vas Nunez looks like an AI rendering of Spraggy. <laughs> Somehow insulting to both of them? I don't... <laughs> Ace Queen for Espina and Oberlieben on the short side. Eight big blinds to start the hand. I think this is just all in. There it is. Spraggy has had a haircut recently, by the way. Three plus, four plus. He didn't have a haircut for like a good couple months and it was starting to get like shaggy from Scooby Doo Long. Spady day. Spraggy got shaggy. Espina makes the call. His hand very likely to end in a chop unless we see some four flush grossness. You know, anytime there's a four flusher, it is pretty gross, isn't it? Yep, absolutely. Ninety-six percent chance of a chop. Two spades on the flop. We're gonna need to see a turn. So you're saying there's a chance? And that turn is not a spade. So this hand will in a chop. You know what they say? No offense. Everyone, Everyone loves a chop pot. I just want some TV drama. You know. <laughs> Ober relieving. Lives to fight another day. Chips go in. The chips come out. 304 players left in this record-breaking 1,747-player field. Money at 255. So just about 50 players from the money. Six pass. Pretty sweaty at this point, Joe. Getting the min cash here is definitely the first step on the way to becoming a champion, of course. But uh, it's still pretty chunky payout there as well. So 8.6 is the min payout, it seems. We got a queen and a something for El Duce. Ah, the nine of hearts. Nice. 
A little loose from another gun plus one, Queen Nine of Hearts. What was that? A little loose from UTG plus one, Queen nah, of Hearts. Nah, this is fine. He's also one of the chip leaders as well, so. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, it, this is funny, though, Joe, because I find myself in this situation quite often where I go, oh, I, I am the chip leader, right? Maybe I should open up a little bit. Oh, he's all in. In your face. Yeah, it's. Uh, <laughs> when I change gears. Uh, it tends to it tends to backfire spectacularly, and there you go. Had to raise fold it. Seems totally fine though. I think this is a very reasonable um, range selection. Thriving up here. Thriving up here. Give him busted, yeah. Exactly. I thought that might be it. Look at that felt Joe. So pretty. The whole thing, very crisp. Yeah. Colors are great. Transports you to poker land. It does, man. What a great setup we have here. Very lucky. Another raise from who I will refer to now as the Duke. Three Thank you. King Queen offsuit under the gun. <coughs> yeah. And Hackstrom jams on the Duke again. Hackstrom shoving about 63K here, about 21 big blinds. Duce is going to start taking this personally. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Can I get a count? <laughs> he didn't ask for a count last hand, did he? No. Okay. <laughs> I think... Uh, I would just be like, clock! <laughs> I, I think this might be a little bit, little bit too much to call with King-Queen here, but... It's definitely feeling like it's close-ish. Maybe I figure why I bust it. TV player, huh? Uh, it feels good, though, obviously, when you're short stack, Joe, just to find two really easy shove spots. And yeah. you, you chip up pretty quick like that, too. Hagstrom's up to 25 big blinds now. You Puts do, but good. you eventually chip up to the point where you can't do oh, that yeah. anymore. You yeah. actually play poker again. Uh, Kings, it's tricky cases. like that. <laughs> wow, this guy's sick. This time, the Duke will be in the big blind. Right, it's Jose Espina, who will be raising under the gun. Yeah, Orbelieben's got a really pretty hand here, but uh, I don't see this ever going in the middle. And with just 10 big blinds behind, calling pretty much out of the question as well. He is going to move aside. Hagstrom, uh, couldn't find it this time. Whole lot of napkins. Do you like the idea that I'd be professional enough to check what you had on dinner break? I barely pay attention to that. <laughs> <laughs> the Duke with a perfectly reasonable hand to see a flop with. It's also a great one to crack jacks with. Ace 10 deuce. Probably not the cracking flop 9 8 of clubs is looking for. Quick C bet from Espina. We're about 53 big blinds effective here. It's just going to be a bet in a full, but I do like to continue there. Plenty of combinations give you action. Not going to have. All the aces in the big blind there, because, of course, some of them will be played more aggressively, the strong ones. And a continuation bet succeeds, takes it down on to the next one. Hand number 100, Joe. A hunch. A hunch. This is a uh, milestone hand, guys.
Yeah, yeah Shorty folds that 10 big blinds for Oberlieben. Spraggy has aces. Go on then, Spraggy. Oh, he raised. Took the coward's way out. <laughs> 6,500 the raise from Spraggy. He has been watching Mattel from earlier, has he? Being a king seven suited. Another hand folks are quite pleased to defend with. So Spina 57 bigs after blinds and antis, Spraggy 51. So we're playing pretty deep here. And away we go. Bill oh boy, King Jack Trey, one heart. Very dangerous top pair for Espina. Yeah, I think Sprague is just going to see back here every time. 6,500. Yeah. Quick call from the King 7. Turn card is an 8. Okay, I'm, I'm going to try this one more time, Joe. Joe. Speed going to check. Sprague is going to bet almost pot. Okay. I keep saying that's going to happen at these deeper stack depths, but... Nostradamic. What did we decide your name is? Nostradamic. Um, does Nostradamic. Nostradamus. I thought it was better than that, but maybe. Who am I kidding? It probably wasn't. Oh, a prediction. That's right. A prediction of nearly pot. 23,000 to 30,500. I'm going to call that one a, a swing and a miss on the prediction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Puts in a nice chunky size regardless. I don't see Espina ever folding top pair against one of our fellow team pro players. Prediction was what we went with, yeah. Well. Spraggy's got to be loving this. Feels like he's got him on the hook. Probably stronger hands would have check raised either flop or turn at this point. River card is a five. Not a scary card in any way, shape, or form for two aces. Check. Spina checks again. It's going to have to soul read to get out of this one. It's a great run out. Absolute brick. Feels like a go card for aces just try and get some more value from the King X, Jack X combos. 76.5. What's the size, Joe? I'm not in the prediction business. I just like to say what happens, and even then I get it wrong sometimes. That's 62,000. 62, Nailed it. Nailed it. So chonky. Remember, Jose Espina. Spraggy raised from early position. Is he triple barrel bluffing here that often? Is this ace queen? Just a call, and there you go. Absolutely massive one for Spraggy there, Joe. I mean, that's the way. That's the dream aces. Yeah, it really is. Dream aces. They flop top pair. The board doesn't get any worse for you. They call you down. Easy with aces. Didn't have, didn't get played back at at any point. Just ABC poker. ABC and always be chonking. <laughs> <laughs> that means Ben Sprague is up over a quarter million chips now. Eighty-eight big blinds as we're nearing the bubble. Gotta be feeling great about that. Nice for Team Pro. I am the captain now. Ben Sprague. 264 and a half thousand. 45 from the money. Spraggy got the baggie. Sasha, I'm with you. These people, these Five lunatics who say Five defend plus. the big blind with King Seven. Come on, right there. My sample size of one. You're nuts. 
just wait till Ike Haxton starts not doing it. Then everyone's gonna be like, "Oh, I never played King Sense King Seven suited against an early the race." <laughs> Pause. Jack Nine going to defend the big blind here, and as I already mentioned, quite a short stack here for Oberlieb, but only seven big blinds behind after the blinds and antes, and then also after the uh, the call. So 21k k behind, 16.5k in the pot. Oberlieben forced to check. Another woofy flop. Check, check this time. Four clubs on the turn. Ace high looking pretty good. I really like this check. As we get shallower, we definitely want to avoid giving our opponent the opportunity to check raise these boards. Obviously, 5x probably just check jams. 6x probably check jams. A lot of 4x will probably just check jam the flop. Sometimes they'll just have, you know, gut shots and whatever, just assuming your opponent might be firing a little bit too aggressively with over cards exactly like Ace-10. So at this point, Oberlieben is a, is a shorty, but does have the opportunity to represent these cards. And if Vas Nunez is looking at facing at a bet like, you know, even like 10K, it becomes really difficult to, to call down with some of these combos. So that was the opportunity for Oberlieben there. Las Nunez assumes that he probably would have represented something at this stage and decides to just, just try and take it down on the turn. We see the eventual fold from Jack Nine. And Paul Vas Nunez still on a pretty nice stack. Second in chips at this table. Alman Project says, can you give some information how the Portuguese players are? Yes, we absolutely can. Thank you for your question. I believe the Portuguese players are actually from Portugal, Joe. There's some information. There's some information. Vas Nunes back in action. King-10 suited. Oberlieben. Nah, dog, nah. Spraggy's turn to defend. Jack-8 off. Nine, five, deuce. No pairs. No real draws. King high in the lead. I'm digging the play from Vas Nunez so far. Seems to have a really, really good grasp of the game. Bet sizes are fire in my opinion. He used to be a real a real regular on the EPT, I want to say about ten years ago. Now I hope that he's just not been around and I just haven't noticed him, <laughs> but Speaking of folks that we might not have been noticing, let's take a look out outer table action. EPT champ Anton Wig and PCA 2023 final tableist Jamil Wakil have gone to the river. Looks like action is on Anton. Anton starting to resemble a Tim Heidegger character more and more. 
That's 67,000. Did not get... Oh, we did get a look at the board. 9, 7, queen, 8, 10. So a straighty board. No flushes. Jamo Quilt has been making some noise on the tour the last year or so, I'd say. Let's this pot go. Anton Wig up to 267,000. Okie dokie. Back up on the main stage. See the real no god. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> He's all in every hand. He's great TV. He's all in like three or four hands already. He can't stop. He says he always busts on TV table. He's trying really hard this time. Thank you. Does anyone know if Spraggy's still in? Yes, thank you for your question. Okay. All right, on to the next one, guys. Hand 104 back to our feature table. And he's back at it. I feel like we have seen Vas Nunez recently. Joe, I can't recall exactly where we had him on a feature recently, but I think it was I think it was last year at some point, maybe a few times. Oberlieben now has a possible combo that he might want to go all in with. He's nursing that six big blind stack, does make a good fold on this occasion. And Vas Nunez picks up another one. Done very well to chip away here. 79 big blinds after picking up the blinds and antis there. Just about time, though, for Ken Oberlieben. Yeah, I definitely think uh, you can call that danger zone territory. To Ken. Ken pass. One pass. Ken fold. Spraggy fold. Gary Mamu. Nah. Moo. Pass. Hagstrom in the small. Queen tray. 23 big blinds for Hagstrom. Al Ross 24, so very similarly stacked. Decides to come up with the call. Deuces like to shove here <laughs> a lot, Joe. Really? Yep. 25, 22 big blinds. First limp. Blind view blind. It's literally the lowest pair possible. Oh. Raise 8,500. I mean, that works too. <laughs> That's an effective all in. Sounds okay to try. You gotta put in a bunch of chips. And that will usually get her done. But you're flipping against Queen Three. You're not flipping if they're folding. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> wait, 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 hold on. How many ways <laughs> There's three ways to win a pot. You win at showdown. You win at non showdown. When it non showdown and you can get them to fold. And sometimes they fold, yeah, yeah that's right. Okay. Those are the three ways. <laughs> Seven bus, eight bus. I'm with Rip Roar here. People fold? That's right, Azan. Spraggy player poker. The other guys, they're chips. So that was some of the best insight we've ever had on an EPT stream. It's a classic. Here you go. This is the moment. Oberlieben's all in. Indeed, Oberlieben 
commits the rest of his chips. Sraggy looks like he has a hand that will gamble for the tournament life of Ken Oberlieben. Is Ken a particularly common German first name? I feel like I don't know that many German Kens. I mean, I feel weird about Gary Mamu also. Gary. It's usually not good. <laughs> it's not terrible. That's very good. Yeah, it's about as good as it gets when you're getting called there. Fair enough. Dominated a ton. Yeah. Reasonable. Plus, it's I'm against Spraggy, so. Then. Yeah. Spraggy, one of our chip leaders here. Looking to yeah, extend his lead. Dangerous man. Yeah. Quing suited against Ace High. Ooh, boy, that's you about as interesting that? as it can there get. You go. There's some TV drama <laughs> for you, huh? Never easy. Always <laughs> a sweat. Like sort of these standards, isn't it? <laughs> I need my elephant. No. Christmas special, perhaps. Dustin does poker, call him for the diamond one time. Not sure this is the time we want to use for Spraggy's one time. Unless you really hate Ken Oberlieben. Then maybe. Spraggy whiffs the turn. I'm the last one to see the card. <laughs> Oberlieben needs to fade the diamond on the river. And that river is the Ace of Hearts. Very it red. was red, Very but safe. Red. <laughs> Trip aces for Oberlieben. So unlucky. More than doubles up to 15 <laughs> big blinds. Yeah, had a good shot there. That's right, you couldn't quite pull it off. Still 77 big blinds behind and feeling just fine with that. Those are the ones you want to lose. You can't win them all, and yeah. you might as well lose those. You're happy losing the small ones. That's okay. Just got to win the big ones. Anna says, I have to say, Joe and James, poker host, everyone else, Mike's. Thank you. <laughs> One plus. Thank you. He's yeah, right. yeah. No, thank you. Yes, no, yes. Thank you. Thank he, I, I do mics. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Th 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 Four thank plus. you. Pocket tens for Eli Ross. No need to get hostile. Twenty-seven big blinds gonna be. Perfectly happy to get 10s all in the middle if they need to. Comes in with the raise, just the min. Feels good. The Duke. With Ace Deuce. Then? Decides to turn the ace deuce into Le Bluff. And I think pocket tens is just going to be all in here, Joe. 25 big blinds, pocket tens a little too big, a little too high up in their range. It's going to be winning way too often. Anyway, who three bet bluffs the button anymore? That's so 2001. No, I'm just kidding. I think this is perfectly fine. Plenty of combos that really I'd hate be, this action. I'd be worried, yeah. I mean, I would definitely be worried. I would be so happy. Never been happy to get 10s all in, ever. His really? History of poker. Oh, okay. Well, I'd look stupid now if I changed it, but... <laughs> Pass. Pass. Excuse me? Pass. Nick Walsh. This is obviously a cautious player. Okay, that was unexpected. Mm 
I mean, when one of the chip leaders three bets you on the button there, tens are an absolute gold mine, especially when you consider how many of those will just be ace rag. I think there's lots of three bet bluffing there with ace x combos. Maybe even some stuff that can still raise fold. Maybe some stuff that can raise call and you actually have them dominated. I was not expecting a fold there. I think that's a really good spot just to get the chips in the middle. I understand that a lot of people are justifiably critical of that fold. But some of you are only being critical because you saw it was ace-deuce. Yeah. Some of you know, like Nick here, how to be impartial based on what the hold cards are. Sure. But some of you being critical, if that was pocket jacks... It'd be like, best they'd be like what a fold. Yeah, yeah. Class. you would be amazed right now. <laughs> and I don't expect y'all to know which of you is which. But in your heart of hearts, you know some of you are being real banana heads right now. Ace, nine, seven, three spades, pair of sevens for Espina. Queen of spades for Sprague. Will Sprague spike the flush this time? Doesn't need to. Alex Rhodes asks, what place is in the money? First place. Second place. Third place. All in the money. Thank you for your question. Should I do more? Fourth place. Fifth place. Nick, can you look up? Can you see, can you see if sixth place? Sixth place is in the money. I'm confirming. Yep. Yep, definitely six. I, I'm just getting confirmation seventh is also in there seventh great seventh in the money i hope that answers your question thank you for it Come on, i'm really gonna have to uh have a word right, with spraggy later he's he He's not making my job any easier. Say something. You should be helping me out here. Mamu with queen eight suited. Interesting hand selection. Does get fives to fold. And king jack. And king eight. And something in the small blind. Just looked up the spot, Joe. It's about 50% shove, 50% call. And that makes a lot of sense, right? Because like we were How saying... How much fold? About 50%. No, no fold, sorry. <laughs> no fold. Yeah, I mean, when you imagine the combinations that do like to 3-bet, you have Woods of those dominated, so the call actually has some other value depending on your opponent and how, uh, how wide you think they're going to 3-bet you. If it, can, if it contains ace-deuce off, they're doing it a lot of the time, Joe. Like, that's probably getting pretty out of line, to be honest. I think uh, a lot of the natural three bets there are going to be from suited aces. But, you know, having the blocker anyway works. If you, people are going to be folding tens, that's fantastic. That's a great spot to do it. Oberlieben with a fine defend King Jack off and is the favorite, but has not made a pair. And Mamu elected not to continuation bet the flop, is going to delay C-bet this turn, which should make it happen. Cat Arena says, King Jack knows he's ahead. All right, we'll see. I'm about to find out. Oh, no. You can know your head and still fold, I guess. Sure. You have the right. Don't let anyone tell you what to do, Joe. We're not going to take it. We're not going to take it. Look at you posting your blinds sometimes. I, always, I don't know what you're talking about. I always post my blinds. I'm almost ready, attentive, paying attention, astute professional. It's good to see. I'm much improved, aren't I? Yeah, you have. The last 30 minutes skyrocket. Not my best behavior. 
Adversario says, you guys just answer the questions with the obvious answer just because you don't have high quality answers, right? <sighs> what a word salad that was. You guys just answer the questions with the obvious answer just because you don't have high quality answers. How about you don't have a high quality thesaurus? Right, 6,000. You banned. 7 plus 8 plus. Plus Nunes suited one gapper, and oh. Ben's gonna get to set mime here in the home of miming, Paris, France. Ah, uh, not only were no sets mimed. Left Nunes flops a flush draw, and Spraggy is three quarters of the way to being counterfeited. This is an interesting one, Joe. Trey's going to be the best hand here, a decent amount on the paired board. But also, if we know anything from Vas Nunez, he understands how to barrel turns really aggressively. So, how frequently do you really get the opportunity to call down? Um, Obviously, you should be brave and just do it anyway if you think you're going to have the best hand enough of the time. So we see Spraggy call. But I do expect Vas Nunez to fire twice here, even if he doesn't have the club draw at quite a decent rate. Trying to target some gut shots, trying to target some clubs, trying to target some uh, some pair of fours and pairs like deuces and threes, maybe even fives and sixes, some, something like that. Obviously, sixes would have turned the boat. But there it is, the second barrel, 15K. And it's just really hard for Spraggy to continue at this stage. And yeah, that's, he's going to take it down. It's, it's an interesting quandary because there are certain opponents where you can call and your opponent's going to play really face up on the turn. If they just have, you know, queen high or king high, they might just slow it down. Or if they have complete air, maybe they're just going to put you on something that you don't want to fold. I think when you're playing with a player like Vas Nunez, though, you got to anticipate the second barrel there. And... Very, very tricky to navigate there against uh, aggressive opponents, which is why it's such a good style. Take a look at the chip counts here, guys. Vas Nunez, 246K, is our chip leader. Spraggy very close behind him. Oberlieben did find the double versus Spraggy's king-queen. Managed to fade the diamonds to get the full double. But uh, needs to put in some more work. I'd like to see Oberlieben okay. trying to get in some pots here. And unfortunately, when you're that shallow, a lot of it is going to just be push fold. Ace seven for Eli Ross. Crunchy variety. <clears throat> that race has gotten through to the big blind. Along to Gary mm. Mamu, who folds the eight tray. Sacramento asks, have you guys considered having a few chat pros guest commentating around on the so stream? Power. Yes. I don't invite chat pros to commentate the same reason I don't interact with hecklers on stage. I'm afraid they're going to be better than me. Are you saying that you interact with hecklers off stage? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did hear uh, someone here in chat or read someone say that this bubble is taking forever. We are we are not on the bubble. We're not even really near the bubble. Like forty more players, something like that. Yeah, we're we're like a solid three hours from the bubble. Yeah. I mean, 
It's worth noting that obviously the short stacks here are starting to come under some ICM pressure, right? Defining that min cash right. is the difference between profit and not profit. Is, I mean, especially if you're on your first bullet. Oh wow! Somehow going after the spraggy light open from the button and Hagstrom not going for the cold four. You can see Hagstrom, you really wanted to make a comment, but there's still multi-way at the moment, Joe. Oh, the, yep. the yeah, Spraggy's noticed as well. He really wanted it, I had but a Queen 10's okay. going to get it done. Yeah. I like the wider open there, though. 8 suited suited is think I'm just utterly disrespectful, but I think it's really nice. I'm glad that Gary Actually, Mabu you guys folded between has you. a couple you moves. small blind, big blind once to me today. That's when I had the jacks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then the last right. five times, it's been raised from one of you That's or true. whatever, or he shoved on me. You three bet me about it <laughs> four times in three hands. That's true. Free money, right? <laughs> well, they'll see my hand on the stream and then they'll say, yeah, it is pretty free money just to keep doing that because I am an idiot. Maybe I would have busted if you folded it. My stupidity has saved you. It seems like it. <laughs> I hope that was the case. <laughs> A little insight into the mind of Benjamin Sprague, although you can get much more of that if you tune in to Sprague's stream. We're at gunpoint. He is forced to talk through every single hand. Twitch.tv forward slash Sprague. Been at it for years. Definitely considered one of the biggest Twitch streamers in the world on the poker category. And you know what? He's a darn good poker player. Check it out. An even better, excuse me, an even better entertainer, uh, if you ask me. Wait a second, Joe. Queens for Hagstrom. He's got 20 big blinds here. I think the shove is balanced here. At 20 big blinds effective, you're going to play most of your hands as jams here. Even some of your stronger ones. You have to ask yourself, do I 3-bet bluff off of this stack depth? And if the answer is very little, then the amount that you can do it with your strong stuff is limited, right? you got to be balanced in these spots. At this level, people will notice that kind of thing. Man, this one feels pretty gross. Miss Clicky. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Clicky says. Okay, so I was in a Gotta keep him guessing. Uh, all right. Never hand here. See, that's never enough to just talk about the event that so we're at. We got the next man. event. We got the Thank podcast. You. We got the Irish Thank Open. You. And, of course, we've got the Sunday Million Anniversary, the thing that started it all. Online poker, my babies. The flagship weekly tournament turns 18 years old in April. Calm down, you sickos. Eight million dollars guaranteed in the prize pool. A million plus for the winner. There will be a broadcast of the final table live on Twitch, Tuesday, April 9th. It's in my calendar. I lost 10. You might see some people playing it that don't normally play. That's all I'll say. Hey, Joe, I'm thinking about winning that, winning that one this year. There you go. Nick, is, you're going to play the Sunday Million. Yeah. Do you usually play the Sunday Million? No. So there's one of the people that I might have been talking about. That would be so cool. That would be absolutely bomb. If you just made it to our coverage, first of all. What, you mean like last year? Yeah, but something bad happened, right? It was brief. <laughs> <laughs> you pretended not to be super sad about it once you got on stream with us, right? Is that what happened? Yeah. Popped the bottle of champagne live on stream. I was pretty happy with, with that result, but I feel like a million dollars would have been cooler. Yeah. You can't put a price on um, 
No, you can put a price on it. It's definitely a million dollars for sure. <laughs> Should I pass along the favor? Eli Ross once again with a hand to open. Still around 25 bigs. Vas Nunes. Ooh. The three of spades and a mystery. Is this domination rotation? Top pair for Ross. Ah, pair for Vas Nunes. Ah, pair minimum. Now, Vas Nunes is a taller fella and does have hair in his face, but to call this the Jack Link's beef mystery jerky hand is a little rude, I think. Eight of spades on the turn. Chad Blob says he got a set. Cod says, what the heck is going on with the card reader today? Now, what I will say is this, is that it's not always the card reader. In fact, the way that the cards are read is that there's a little microchip. There's like almost like wires inside the cards, and they're fragile. It's delicate electronics inside a playing card. And so when players snap the cards or bend the cards, the cards can and do break. Wait a second, Joe. Raise on the turn. Does he have the set? Obviously, can be ace three, can be jack three, could be eight three. All of these are possible when the ranges are this wide, blind be blind. We saw Ross make a relatively tight fold with the two tens before the flop. Ross is more or less being put to a decision for all of his chips. Right here, right meow. I'd love, I'd love it if this was a bluff from Vas Nunez as well. All right, making the call, sticking around. Nice, nice work from Ross here. Well, we don't know yet, actually, do we? Ross with like a .5 stack pot ratio. So obviously, eight three counterfeited now. Aces and jacks with a ten is Ross's hand on the river. It does go check check. Vas Nunez. Mox. I guess we'll never know. And that was a crucial pop for Eli Ross, who now has nearly 40 big blinds. All you people saying it has to be pocket threes, jack three. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Why did he muck a full house? <laughs> yeah, solid analysis there, guys. Well done. Hand of 115 underway. Scraggy still chip leading. Oberlieben, our shorty, needs to find another Dublay to stay in this tournament and get that mean cash. Makes the fold. Yeah, we're down to 288. Money at 255. Another situation where we only know one of the hold guards. Ace of diamonds. 255. Probably good enough for a poke regardless of that other card. Plus Nunes, 10-8 suited. Going to three bet. Out of position. 19-5, right? Tough spot for Hagstrom. 24 big blinds after he puts out that raise. 
Very tricky to navigate this one. All in. And Hagstrom chipping up again. That's a 34 big blinds, putting in a good shift. Five all ins? Four all ins. Getting a lot of these all ins pre flop, okay. as Craggy points out. I like it. Hold? No? Four bluffs? Once again, we're <laughs> headed out into the field. <laughs> Not a single one. <laughs> With our last remaining gold pass winner, Noah Chan, the mixologist. Is it rude if I say bartender? Do I? The mixologist who qualified for 11 euros. Bets 10K on the Queen 775 two club board. It gets called by Luis Plaza. And Raunu Kivalu folds. River card. Eight of spades. Remember, you, if you're in a real money market where the promotion is live, can win your way just like Noah with a gold pass. Noah bets 25K, gets snap called, and Noah shows 10 high for the bluff. Plaza wins with top pair, top kicker, ace queen. Noah still has 265K, which is like... I don't know, 80 big, more than 80 big lines. So all good over there. Always rooting for folks who qualified online to go deep in these things. <laughs> Thank you, Super Mods, specifically in this instance, Raksha for answering that if you are looking to come to the Poker in the Air's 300th episode live taping at the Hippodrome in London and you are not on the UK client, you can get in touch with me directly. Give me your email address. DM me. And I will pass along your email to the reservations team. Now there is a fake client, excuse me, a fake tournament online that you can register for. If you are in the UK, you just click, it's a free tournament. The tournament will never run, but you click on it, we'll get your information from there, email you with instructions of how to attend. It's March 13th. It's gonna run from about 6.30 p.m. till I'd say probably right around midnight. So that includes a star-studded two-hour episode of Poker in the Ears, followed by a live Hyper Turbo Poker Tournament in which we will be giving away Irish Open Packages. So free show, free drinks, free food, free poker, and potentially a free roll into the Irish Open. Yeah, and of course, fantastic event, Irish Open. Pretty sure I'm going to be out there. I think, I think James might be out there as well. I don't know. I'm assuming you might be out there as well, potentially. What? At the Irish Open? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll be there. Very excited about that. Historic tournament series. The longest running tournament series in Europe. The IPO. It lived up last year. I'll tell you what. It was a pretty hype tournament. And it lived up. And Sprague opening this pop from out of the gun. Ten of diamonds. Now we saw the raise shove with the blank card. And we saw the check raise muck. Was maybe it wasn't a check raise, but just a raise. I think it might be an ace. I think the broken card that ace tray would have been a muck counterfeited, counterfeited. on the river. Yeah. And the shove speaks to it have being it was ace ace then. Yeah, could be. For Ross. Now we have Spraggy raising under the gun. All 
I like the mystery. It's like a classic whodunit. I like it too. And I think S S Spraggy's probably hoping for two Diamantes here as well. Is it the Ace of Diamonds? Check, check. Ace of Clubs on the turn. I don't know, maybe it's 10? Another shovelable hand. How did the 10 interact with the with doesn't, the 10 but you could hand. just be messing around with bottom pair there sometimes. Yeah. Well, like I said, I mean, cool spots have some bluffs too. Yeah. Maybe we'll see it show down here. Ross facing a second barrel. Excuse me, it was check, check, first flop. barrel, yeah. First barrel, yeah. Been a pretty good level for Spraggy. I mean, no disrespect, but we're not used to seeing him really mash on feature tables. He usually shows up with like 18 big blinds and then clings to dear life for the min cash. So I'm glad to see this happening. Spraggy played the FPS main event last week, and I guess he hosted a bunch of silver so my pass name winners. Is Jules Thomas. I'm from Paris, and I won the silver pass in January. And yeah, I choose to to play loud because uh, it's my first time uh, in a live tournament ever. Of course, I've seen pictures and videos of big tournaments uh, online. It's really different from what I expected. I had many, many uh, professionals at my table, and uh, it was funny to see how they interacted between each other. I didn't know Spraggy, but he had many cameras around him, so I was thinking, yeah, mm, he seems different from the others. <laughs> he had K3 and I had two, two queens. Good luck, sir. <laughs> What? <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Tough decision. <laughs> oh. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Again, bro. Again. Good luck. Nice play, mate. Unlucky. I was this guy once. How okay. half qualified? Qualified for zero. First time playing, and I just met him on the break. And he was like, so excited to be here, happy to be playing. And then I go and back. I didn't even think I got a chance to go to day two and uh, it was over so but it was over at like 8 p.m. so no big regrets that of course was Jules Thomas who Spraggy mentioned was a silver pass winner remember a silver pass is good for an FPS style tournament and Pretty cool to see his dreams both come true and crushed in the same video. Great job, Spraggy. Hashtag ambassador. <laughs> Hashtag dreams. All right, we've got another mystery card situation. Queen of Clubs from Under the Gun. Again, it's got to be a good. It's got to be a good card. Under the Gun. It's got to be a good one. Definitely on the hunt to figure out what that, what that card is now. Looks like Spraggy defended from the big blind. King, queen, five. Heart, heart, heart. We got another one. All right, so there's two culprits out there. out there were two killers and Spraggy has something worth sticking around for on this all heart to paint board who's got the heart which one of y'all has the broken ace of hearts Yes, Yoshi, they can switch the deck or something. Just sometimes it takes a half hour for them to realize there is a broken card. That's weird. It's almost like there's a 30-minute delay. Like there's a delay. So potentially chop opportunities here, Joe. If neither player has a heart bigger than a deuce. Well, you know, Spraggy doesn't have a heart. He just busted that silver pass winner. Pretty, pretty, if you do have a heart, it's pretty hard to have a heart that isn't bigger than a deuce. 
Some would say it's impossible. Some would say, but that's if you trust MSM. <laughs> never say never. That's what I say. If you believe what the media tells you, if you have a heart here, it's bigger than the deuce of hearts. But do your own research. Mamu's got a, uh, a look in his eyes like Queen Jack. <laughs> I have Queen Jack, but am I calling for a chop? Yeah, he's not going to call for a chop. Tom, you know how I feel about calling for chops. It ain't no chop. <laughs> had, a, had a flush. Had a flush. Did I don't think Spraggy would lie. Did, did he show the card? He did not show the card. Uh, now, I'm getting word that we changed the deck before that hand. And we'll also be changing the deck after that hand. For those of you who have had children, it's like when you change the diaper... And before you get done down. putting the diaper back on, you got to change the diaper again. What I'm saying is, this table's a real poop okay. machine. Is that every hand, new deck? <laughs> These cards are crappy. Oh, let's brag with exactly 250,000 chips. Oberlieben still needs to find a duble. We're down to 281 players. We are nearing bubble time, but not really, as Joe already said. It's going to take us a good couple hours yet In cash. to get to the real sweaty points of the day. Like you bother? Hmm? Like you bother? Like you bother? Like I'm bothered? <laughs> you have no idea. Sitting here watching your phone entirely? Trying to humiliate me on stream. We're all in the same boat there, I think. Ma Backer asks, what's the EPT main event attendance records? I would guess it's probably like a log or a file where they keep track of the number of entrants we've had in every event. Yeah, possibly a database. Yeah, a database. Yeah. Thank you for your question. Queen Jack, the open from Hagstrom, a tree bat from Ross, two jacks. What is Espina doing? I think this is a good time to take stock of your 20 big blinds. You could do that between hands. Ah, right. I forgot I had 10-5. My bad. Just wanted to make him sweat for a minute. Yeah, Pocket Jacks wasn't sweating. Oberlieben just not getting the cards at the minute. Does make the fold spraggies out as well. Ekstrom got about 32 bigs. Is just covering Ross, who has 30. Queen Jack suited... Definitely not a ridiculous defend here. But when you're UTG being 3 by UTG plus 1, Joe, the ranges are pretty tight. All right, Nick, you want to talk all-time biggest attendances I'd rather for you, EPT mains? I'd rather you told me, but yeah. All right, I'll tell you what. This event is the number one Non-Barcelona EPT main event. I'm going to ask you a trivia question. As the number one non-Barcelona main event, where does that actually put it? In the, it's in the top ten. I'm going to go with sixth position. Six is absolutely correct. Nailed it. Barcelona 2022 is number one, then 2023, then 2019, then 2018, then 2016, then Paris, then we're back to Barcelona 2015, then Paris again. From what year? From 2023. Correct. The only other year it's been held. Yep. And then after that's PCA 2011, PCA 2010. 
Now, we've already said this a couple times, but I'm going to say it again. If you guys are looking for extremely high value investment opportunities when it comes to poker tournaments, I would put some serious, serious stock in coming to EPT Paris next year. Because if this is what it's like our second time around in the new venue with more dealers, with more space, I think next year it's going to be even bigger. And I think we could start getting to Barcelona numbers. I feel like Nick saying investment in stock is not legal. So I'm going to just say that uh, he means investing in a good time. And um, this is not yeah. financial advice. This is, but not, yes. this is not financial We're advice. We're talking about value and size of field. Absolutely. I agree <laughs> with you, Nick. We could. I think that next year's Paris would eclipse at least one of those five Barcelonas. Yeah, absolutely. That it, it is true that Barcelona this year will probably also be top five. So it's going to be a bit of a bit of a weird one. That is a bit weird. Really enjoyed Cyprus last year as well. That was fantastic. I wonder how that's going to fare this year. You know what's weird about Cyprus is that the booze was free. It was all free. And I drank less there. <laughs> Than probably anywhere else that we've ever gone to. I think, I think that's it's absolutely like when they true. when you have like unlimited vacation time, and they found out that no one was taking their vacation time, and had to go back to limiting it. Yeah. Ober leaving with Ace King has dwindled back down to eleven big blinds. We're just a glutton for punishment, Joe. That's true. Hi, Jack Rays. Thirty-five five. He's gotten around to Ross. King five. Is this a is this a spot where we can start not defending? King five off. Uh, versus, Please. Versus the hijack, you're probably still going to want to. Oh God. Chuck it in. Ross doesn't want to play it though, and that's fine. Uh, sorry, excuse me. Overleaving was all in. Uh, what am I talking about? That was definitely a fold. Okay, good. That was definitely a fold. Sorry, I, I kind of stitched you up there, though. No. Yeah, I, I thought, I thought, I thought <laughs> we, were to, we were talking about a Joe defending the big blind versus like a min race scenario. No, definitely not a call there. And Overleaving now up to 14 big blinds. Looking a little bit more healthy. Going to have a little bit more ammunition to make some moves. Berlieben. 9 5 off. Goodbye. Goodbye. Ace 10 for Mamu. Gary Mamu. Seems good. Imagine naming a baby Gary. Oh, baby Gary. What would you name your baby if you had a if you had a boy or a girl? Soda. Duke. Middle name Nukem. <laughs> Did you say soda? Soda. Is that is that like for a guy or a girl? It's either one, yeah. Yeah. Soda or seven. It's always coming seven. Seagram seven. Sure, yeah. Cheers. You don't name a baby Gary. You name them that when they turn 19. They're usually called little guy. 
until 19th birthday. Good one, Bob. Cat Arena says, remember when Garrett had seven, eight of clubs and flopped a straight flush draw and was hero called by Robbie's Jack 4 offsuit? What is that? What are you even talking about? I don't remember that. Poker Night in America says, great coverage as always. Thank you very much, Poker Night. Pania. My old friends at Pania. Prediction here, eight deuce is going to go in the bin. Nailed it. Jack Sinclair in chat says, what about baby Rasputin? Yeah, that's another one. Tough at this point. Spraggy opening king, six suited. Mamu with the three balls. Yeah, I think we're deep enough to try and set mime here. Does call in position. And I think this is a nice hand to defend here in the big blind. Joe, 6-4 suited, plays nicely, multi-way. Got a really good price here with the call from Mamu as well. A uh, three ways. King, Jack, Deuce, two clubs. Oh, man. Top pair and a flush drive. I forgot this was even possible. I forgot it was even possible to fl to hit a flop this hard. So yeah, spraggy has been hitting some serious flops so far today. Great spot to put in a little continuation bet. Goes for 1100 Takes it down. Clop on top asking which episode of Poker in the Ears is the password for the Hippodrome tournament. Porig O'Neill. The most recent episode. That's Porig, spelled P A D R. I don't know, something. I don't, I don't know the rest. Episode 297. It's on Hustler Casino Live. It was the craziest hero call in poker history. Jack four off suit, one against two runs on the river, against a flop straight flush draw, called 150K with Jack four high. Not ringing a bell. No. Didn't hear about that one. Mm -mm. Weird. Is this a, this is a bet, right? Because I would have heard about this, probably. Sorry, guys. It was 11,000. Did I say 1,100? Sorry, guys. In the previous pot. As we see Mamu raising it up here. Very reasonable. Ace Jack. Abe says, worst players ever. No action at all. Guess what? You, you have no chat at all. No, that's the one next to the You banned. The steak free space. The Around the corner. Yeah. Ooh, baby. Paul Vas Nunes just calling with the two tens. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe hoping Espina gets a little funky in the big blind with six deuce off, but nope, just going to see the flop. There's a few nice ones up there. Thai plays, the steak free, and then uh, McDonald's. Oh, the McDonald's. <laughs> Queen eight tray, two hearts, rut row. It's gonna be tricky to play this multi-way. I'm not even sure if I'm Mamu here, I don't even know if I like a continuation bet here with the button calling. I think you're gonna run into Jack Ten some of the time, hands like King Queen some of the time, hands like Queen Ten some of the time, Queen Jack. I don't know how often you're gonna get through that button flat. Pocket tens in there, sometimes pocket jacks even. Definitely okay to mix in the calls with the tens and the jacks, etc. No folds. Repeat eight on the turn. Spina. Thirteen bigs behind. Uh uh. 
Please let me see a river. Please let me see a river. Please let me see a river. Is Boss Nunez going to give a free card here? Yeah, it's tricky to know what to do. No, yes, I mean. <laughs> here, and uh, I, I, I think you default to the check because obviously Espina can have some 8x. They can have some queen x that they're not so confident about on the flop, obviously, with some weaker kickers defending the big blind there. And uh, Espina glances at his chips here, potentially thinking about turning the missed flush draw into a bluff. If you're going to do it, you got to go big here, though. 41k behind it might just be an all-in to try and represent the Ocho. That's how you'd play that. Decides against it. That's fine, too. Check. Check. Paul checks. Paul's going to take it down. So back to this. So Guillermo now says, they are talking about the J4 offsuit call from Robbie with Jack High against 8-7 suited with a gut shot flush draw 8 high on the river. I don't know who this Robbie guy is, but it sounds like he made a pretty great call with Jack High. Are they saying Robel or Robbie? Maybe they mean Robel, yeah. Robo I've heard of. Nivez says that was Hustler Casino's cash game. I know Hustler is a magazine, but I've never heard of a casino. That must be weird. Adults only. I mean, they're all adults only, but... Was, was the hand history published in, in the Hustler magazine at some point? I don't know. I guess. Yeah, maybe they just... Um, Maybe it's like a card player kind of thing. Anyway, Benjamin Sprague under the gun, ace nine offsuit. Poker starts drags, thinks they might be talking about Robbie Williams. That makes a little more sense, I guess. Three bat from King Jack suited. The, the absolute cheek coming after Sprague. He's under the gun open like this. about something here. Maybe he's picking up on some weak vibes. King Jack suited is a great hand, but I imagine if you put in more chips pre-flop here, we would see the fold. I think just getting out of the way is very conventional, though. I think that's probably what you want to do the majority of the time with Ace-9. Yeah. It does make the fold. John Delano says, it's true. Poker players get Hustler just for the hand history articles. Yeah, that's what Dana's saying. Hustler's exclusively for reading, so it was an article. Hmm. I believe you. <laughs> Apparently. Oh, Ken's saying it was a guy named Lou. Rob Lou. Randy Lou, I know. Yeah, maybe maybe a, uh, a relation of some kind. Who's Lou? Action's folded around to Paul. Ace nine off suit. Dear Hustler, you'll never believe this bad beat story. Yeah, it's an article like that. <laughs> Spraggy with a defendable but dominated hand. Just five minutes left on this level, my babies. Then dinner break. And Spraggy with a domination... Almost rotation, unfortunately. That bottom pair, no good against top pair. And Ves Nunes with the redraw to the flush. Six, 
Raggy with just 4% equity commits 4,000 more chips. Uh-oh. And turns a second pair, a very costly, potentially second pair. As best Nunez also turns a second pair. Yeah, not a turn that you can fold. This is the worst thing to happen to Spraggy since the sun. The newspaper? <laughs> also pretty bad. Just a call, I imagine. River is a seven, so it does put a four card straight out there. Might be an opportunity for Spraggy to get away with again here. Is Vas Nunez going to fire yeah. or just check? Yeah, check, check, and it doesn't cost him any more. Bit of a scare card at the end there, so Vas Nunez just decides against putting in the third barrel. Looks like he's a bit frustrated. If that was a brick on the river, he probably knows he can go for uh, the third barrel and uh, get a little bit more value. In hindsight. Outer table action featuring Sam Greenwood with his head in his hand. Ian Bradley all in. This went raise from Bradley, three bet Greenwood, shove from Bradley, all in for just over 100K. So we're looking around like 30 something big blinds, 33 big blinds. Uh, Greenwood folds. Do you want to see? Greenwood shows an ace. All right, gents. I have some information for you. After break, your table will be TV table. Oh. So after dinner break, please come back straight to TV. Thank you. We're getting a flaming Bradley at the table. Also, Sam Greenwood, Roman Lewis, and chip leader Gregory Fournier. Really? The guy whose dad makes all the cards here is chip leader? Are you for real? I don't know. Unbelievable. His name is literally the same as the brand of cards, guys. Is nobody f checking this? Yeah, look out for this spot, Joe. I think there might be a call here. Okay, from the somebody A's needs nine. to take me off that injustice. All right, Oberlieben all in. Mamu in the big. Just pipped. This is only about 11 big blinds, guys. Uh, Ace nine is really part of this calling range, unless Mamu's got a different read on the situation. I think you just got to flick in the call for that uh, for so few bigs because you're just beating so much, dominating a bunch of hands as well. And unfortunately, just pipped, as Joe said. Domination situation. Oberlieben, the favorite to double up. Field ticker drops down to 272, 271. OMG, that is bad news for Oberlieben, who's likely to be Oberlieben. Two pair for Mamu, just the one for Oberlieben. Eight of spades in the turn does give additional outs to Oberlieben. And this is going to be the last hand of the level. Brick on the river. Last hand of the level. Last hand for Ken Oberlieben. He'll get an extra long dinner break. It's close. 
You're pulling. You see. Oh, I would pull your hand. Yeah. Eliminated yes. about so. 15 oh, from the money. He also knows. Oh, Lobby is a female. How two commentators for poker don't know about this hand blows my mind. Sorry, I don't watch every other stream. We'll get to the bottom of this after the dinner break. I would like to see this Rob fella play on our tour at some point. We'll have to Google that Lou guy. Yeah, we're going to Google Rob Lou later. Quick look at the chip counts from this feature table, which will no longer be our feature table when we get back. Paul Vest Nunes and Ben Sprague having pretty good levels. Lines going up 2,000, 4,000 with a 4K ante. And headed into the break, we got a short snippet of the players' party. So take a peek at that. And then a dinner break for one hour more from EPT Paris when we return. And Tonka all in. All in. All in with deuces. Wow. Griffin, yeah. suit up. I mean, this is this is how you want to play your ten big blinds. You're just hoping everyone folds. I thought Sukov had got involved from first position, but actually Sukov folded. So this is an open jam from Parker for 16k. Turi makes the call. It's a studio flat. And Parker just printing. It's exactly the kind of hand like Turi has here. Bowman, though. Oof. You know. Different from the Parker hand he had earlier with Ace Queen. But same, same. It's very tough. You know, you've seen two people enter the pot. For 10 big blinds, Ace Queen shrinks up, but she goes for it. Good for Gail Bauman. Wow, third player in with the Ace Queen. And I'll tell you what, Parker Talbot is going to be absolutely thrilled to see that. Good luck, guys. Not only is he ahead, but the outs are being shared by his two opponents. I mean, it's a good scenario for you. They're sharing aces. It's a very good nice scenario. Queens to fade in addition to jacks. Yeah, but if two people are in, you're, so, you're expecting someone to have the pocket <coughs> tens, and you got to hope those right. ducks are flying okay. together. Would be nice. Good luck. Well, of course, if we see some nastiness here, Turi could potentially eliminate two players. Get it out of the way. Gail has Tonka covered, by the way. Looks like we have a flop. Oh no, those are the three hands. <laughs> <laughs> Very deceiving. Two players all in. Gail Bauman and Parker Talbot. Quack, 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 quack. Joe, do the thing with me. Quack, the flop. Quack, quack. Is Jack high? And now, Adil Turi is a 70% favorite to KO two players in this hand. The Turi de France. Three. Do him dirty. Three, five. <laughs> they heard me. <laughs> okay. So, a couple of more outs. Gale has the flush draw. Tonka has the straight draw. Three of spades is a big card. A lot of life for Bauman. She was hoping to see a heart on the turn if it wasn't a queen. River card is the ace of spades. It card. is a double <laughs> KO. <laughs> That's not a good card for you. <laughs> oh, man. Fuck you. Oh. He loses. What is that, buddy? And he loses. We lose Gail Bauman and Parker nice Talbot in the same hand. Good luck, guys. 
The two short stacks dispatched by Adil Turi, who's reclaimed the table chip lead. All right, good luck, guys. Farewell, Tonka. You can't win them all or come second in them all. Yeah, excellent call there from Gail. Unfortunate not to get rewarded. Can she can she actually fold in her hand? Can you can she her hand fold? No. No, no. Turi now playing. 115k. 77 big blinds. King Queen seated, very pretty. Currently dominating the King 10. Straight draws for both players. King Queen still ahead. If you're gonna be, if you're gonna miss, miss with a draw to the nuts and a backdoor to the flush. King Queen suited going absolutely nowhere. It's just whether or not he wants to flat or check raise. I way prefer uh, just a flat here, though. I think it's uh, it's going to be the best hand some of the time, so you don't necessarily need to be turning it into a bluff. We probably see a lot more check raising with hands like 7 8 here. That's a good turn for King Queen. Very good. Especially when your opponent has King 10. Check. Yeah, it just feels like a really, really clean C bet on the flop with the King 10 continue on the turn. Why do I suddenly want a slice of cake? Madeira. <laughs> uh, this stack depth, I wouldn't be surprised for him to go close to pot on the turn here, guys. Oh, 11 and a half, okay. These guys are pretty deep. I, I did think we would see more sort of pot, sometimes maybe over pot turn, but I don't know if this is the right combo for that kind of action, but certainly want to continue turn here most of the time. 11 and a half is the bet. I think Paris just calls here pretty much 100% of the time as well. I don't know if you want to raise this turn too often. Does call. A river. Five spades. It's about as bricky as it gets, Joe. Yeah. Oh, man. Madeira has definitely got to be tempted to put, try and put in a perceived value bet here at this point. He's loading up. 41K in the middle. Looks like 20 something. 20 -something. Value cut. 27,000. And honestly, at this level, guys, I just don't see King Queen ever doing anything but call. Yep. Cool. Nice hand, sir. Good job, Paris. Hey Joe, you know how you know how James is like a walking EPT almanac. Yes, and he just all he he knows who won every year and, and all that stuff. He knows as almost as much about EPTs as he does about cake. <laughs> well, if Brian Paris goes on to win this tournament, oh, yeah. it might actually be an easy one to yeah, remember the first moving forward. Like all in, all in, all in, all in. <laughs> yes. <laughs> who won in Paris last year? Is that uh, your question? Oof, uh, <laughs> I mean, the headlines write themselves. Brian takes down French EPT. <laughs> 483 players remaining. 255 will get paid. World famous bubble coverage incoming this evening. By the way, we did get an update during the break. Maria Ho did not make it beyond the first session. But... Maria is going to flick it in, as uh, they're fond of saying, in the mystery bounty. Oh. So no Maria on the mic. Later in the week, we will hear from Ms. Ho.
Ace Queen versus Ace Queen. Margolin has raised in the cutoff to 4,500. Sam on the button. Sam with his uh, patented ultimate pout. It's one of a lot of millions, James, that pout. Is that how he earned the nickname The Squid? Is it because people think he has that kind of like, <laughs> kind of suckery kind of look? Looks like a sucker to me. Uh-oh. Brian Paris, ace king in the small blind. Man, what a great spot for a squeeze here. Definitely a spot where he's going to have some squeeze bluffs as well. So Paris now 82 big blinds, guys. Sam is 62 after he puts in the three bats. Margul in the shortest with 21. I think you, you just slam it in here a bunch. Yeah, I don't know if this is... I thought maybe just a four bet not all in James perhaps. <coughs> but you know, same thing. It's all good. There's loads and loads and loads of dead money out there. Margolin makes a really good fold. I'm just counting out his stack. I don't see him making the call here. I'm euphemous. You said you wanted. I blame you. Uh, yeah. Don't smile. Yeah, you enjoy it. <laughs> Thank you for the people. All into call. Ace Queen offsuit. So, James, I, uh, we've already, already spoken kind of about. I kind of expected him to four bet this, not all in, in this spot. I think when we do see these huge overbet, four-bet squeezes, it does tend to track towards ace-king a lot because people just hate seeing flops in these situations when they know they can take it down pre. I don't know. I don't imagine Paris does the same thing with aces, for example, so I think it does start to narrow it down. If he is in his value part of his range, it's going to be ace-king a ton. Wow. Sam calls it off. And it's a domination situation. Sam Grafton, a huge underdog here. Doesn't look happy. And of course, being dominated is not ideal here. I'll be honest with you, I was not expecting that call next. I wasn't either. I, uh, I don't know if perhaps they have a little bit of history before. But when I see somebody rip in 82 big blinds like that as a squeeze, the run out. <laughs> I, I'm thinking it's going to be ace-king a ton. And it's just, yeah, a bit of a sad story. Sam's equity reduced by a queen folded prey. Eight tray deuce. Not looking good for the squid. 9% shot of winning the pot outright. Drawing to two outs. Five of clubs on the turn. Few chop opportunities. Queen for the win. Four also saves him. Seven on the river, and Sam Grafton is eliminated. Run it up during the first level. We got involved in that huge pot against Brian Paris. And Paris delivers the knockout punch. Yeah, absolutely huge pot there for Paris. Now up to 155 big blinds. Wow. A huge, huge stack at this stage in the tournament. And, uh, yeah, I mean, look, maybe Sam's thinking he's going to have jacks a bunch. Maybe he's thinking... He might even have a, a pair as weak as 10s, but again, I don't know if that's the action necessarily that we're going to see. Once he's put in that 3-bet, if he does think he's going to be up against some pairs, he might end up having the right equity against range to call. But, you know, he took a shot. GG to Sam. And, uh, yeah, nice hand for Brian Paris. Just absolutely mountains now. 311,000. Yeah, that's nearly three times average. Mini Cooler asks, we can get him in the booth now, right? Yeah, 
generally speaking, when people boss 5k poker tournaments, I don't think it's a good idea to tap them on the shoulder and say, hey, do you want to go and do commentary? Maybe we'll hear from Sam later in the week. It's always a pleasure to get Sam in the booth. Great to get insight from that guy. I was on the wrong side of it today, but great ambassador and a great poker player. Unfortunately, it wasn't his day today. Very curious call, though, and obviously we'll have to ask him about that at some stage. As we get back to the action, about 30 minutes into level 12 of the EPC Paris main event, as we see the last remaining team pro at the table, Simon Vitsiak, open with king-queen. Ace three suited for Margolin. Dirty bird chirp. Is Griffin playing? No, Griffin was here during the first level of the day. And he'll be back for the third session of the day. Got a big blind defend from Ramesh Corsi. 9-6-5 on the flop. Corsi flops best. Two pair. Checks it to Vitsiak. Well, Simon has picked up a diamond draw on the turn. It went check, check on the flop. I think Corsi is likely to lead the turn, and he does. 6,500. I think perhaps you want to find a slightly bigger size here with the 6.5. I just think that um, probably what you end up doing here is punishing a bunch of diamond draws, right? If Vitsiak is checking the flop, he's going to have ace diamonds, king of diamonds, queen of diamonds in his range. And I think the way that you get max from this combo is on, on turns where you can actually get those kinds of hands to call. But so you want to really punish him with the bigger size here. Vitsiak being Vitsiak just decides he's going to go ahead and raise him on the turn, which throws a spanner in the work completely. But also you have to ask yourself, if there was a bigger lead, does Vitsiak find this raise at all? Perhaps he was perceiving cost he would be um, putting in a, a larger size here if he had a hand at strongest two pair here and that he's trying to pounce on that weakness now with the King of Diamonds blocker. Corsi counting out chips for the call. And we go to the river. Corsi better than a Two to one favorite. Fades the diamond. Of course, he checks. Does Simon want to fire again here? Continue telling the story. I'd be interested to hear how many flush draws Vitsiak would actually check on this board, James. Because you have to imagine a decent chunk of them are going to be two over cards and yeah. a diamond draw, which kind of don't hate betting ever because you can get folds in the flop, but also, also you're going to have tons of equity against the kind of hands that will call or potentially check raise as well. If he wants to continue telling the story, this is the time to do it. And there's 49K in the middle. I mean, four cards straight out there, potential diamond flush out there, 32,000 the bet from Vitsiak. And Corsi folds the best hand. Oh, the man. bluff gets through. Yeah, very nice work there. Max pressure. And we have a big hand in progress back on the main stage. Uh, Matal is up to his old ant antics again, Joey. Another limp. Matal limped ace king. Tungle to tungle. Jams for 26.5. Pocket tens folded. All right, Kelsey. Oh, did call. Sorry. Tens are in. A little behind on the graphics. Sorry, gang. And then Mattel now all in. Uh, I don't think you can fold at this point. Yeah. 
Okay, okay. He's yeah. like, all right, how much is this going to cost me? I called <laughs> once, I'm going to call more? Yeah, he knows that this can be aces and kings and like stuff like that, too, but he does have the best hand now for now. Uh, king also. Needs to win the flip against ace king and avoid the six while he's at it as well. So he has to win a flip and also win as a big favorite. Decent amount of action. did actually manage to get a fold by going all in versus the limp from Mattel in a previous exchange, Joe. There are the equities, 45% for the 10. That's pretty good in a three way pot. This total pot worth over 100K. What's that? He looked at, the, looked at the side pot, looked at the pot, and went. Yeah, I'm, I'm not adding those up. No. <laughs> I'm not adding those up. Oh, nice. I had four. Let's run it out. Oh, ace right in the window. Tungle. Likely headed for the exit. Kelsey's tens do have everyone covered. I, was, I thought you were going to raise, and then by the time I saw you limp, I had already started to like make the fold motion, so it's too late to switch. Two players looking for two outs each. River card. Nice. Safe for Ace King. That's going to be it for Tungle. Nice heater. He's going back. Yeah. You cannot destroy the metal. Like it was welcome to the tungle, and now it is welcome to the rail. Ours tungle eliminated. Double up plus for Govert Metal, who's now got 135,000 in chips. He had four big ones and came back to win. Almost a triple up. Happens. Yep, Those he's been employing that limping tactic a lot. We saw it with the aces. Yeah. We thought we saw it with the ace king. He's been doing it with some small pocket pairs. And it's paid off on this occasion. Definitely a very nice little scoop there for Mr. Mattel. And Ramesh Kausi. Still with over 100,000 chips, 55 big blinds. How, how much was first in the 1K? 470. Wow. Yeah. It's really nice to see the field sizes there. Yes, the record of the FPS. Uh, record, yeah, so yeah, record, yeah. Record. Everything's a record nowadays, and this all is a record, too. Yeah. Records, yeah. It's good to see. Online is really good. Die, but, yeah. Yeah. Online is dead, not die. <laughs> all right, take it easy. <laughs> uh, that's an immediate disqualification. <laughs> Pocket eights for Jorge Ufano. Yeah, live is live is huge. You don't play the blue uh, series. No, I played the um, the Master Classics in uh, November. Oh, but in Vegas, I mean the. Oh, the live. No, I because I'm resident in another one, so I'd have to pay the taxes. So. Yeah. Are going with King Jack offsuit in the small blind. Yeah, because that also breaking few uh, Right. Breaking records. That's right. Brian Paris does live in Amsterdam, Govert Matal, repping the flag of the Netherlands. This is really interesting, Joe. This was basically the exact same setup about one orbit ago. Mar Mark Lynn folded King Jack in this exact spot when he actually had slightly more chips. Huh. Now, now he's decided he wants to be involved with it's the small one. a bit of a feel player. He's feeling it out. Seven, five, four, two spades. Top pair for Matal, over pair for Ufano. Pocket Ace loves a bet here. Nice and chunky as well. I think you want to go over 50% over here just because you do get so much action from the 5X, the 4X, sometimes the 6, sometimes the 7, sometimes a combination of all of the above, sometimes the spades. You're unblocking the spades. Just feels great. I'd love to see like 7.5 here or something like that. It would be cool. Give me a smidge more. Well, 
All right, we get it. You know how to spin the chips. Let's uh, figure out an amount. <laughs> Is that 10? Seemed right. like more than seven. Yeah, that's good. I dig it. As long as it's big, more than 50%, I'm happy with this. Speaking of smidge, have we seen Podrick O'Neill? Uh, I saw him at the players' party. Well, I did too. I mean, have we seen him at the tables yet? Not in the main event. I have it. Doesn't mean he's not there. I think he's still in. Wish him all the best. Our EPT Prague winner, of course. An all-round lovely, what lovely guy. Man, does Gover ever just soul read this and just fold top pair? <laughs> Seriously, it's just Razvan Balea, final table, EPT Paris, last year. Oh, the opposite. All right. Matsal gets it in for quite a few big blinds. With a no good top pair. So, didn't ship it when he thought he would ship it. Shipped it when no one thought he would ship it. <laughs> Way to keep him guessing, Govert. Ufano, the 80% favorite to bust Matal. Yeah, 80% feels pretty good here. Still 20% of the time we're going to see it go Matal's way, though. So it's best of luck to both players. I mean, you would hate to see someone run up their stack from short stack to 50 bigs in two hands and then give it all back on the third one. Tennis spades on the turn. It does add nothing for Mattel. It's so big sweat. You're just sweating this so hard. And I think oh, it's yeah. Yeah, it was River card. I mean, even with the ace king versus ace queen, it's a deuce. Like, it's just like the cards come so slow. Yeah, yeah and the thing like. Oh, I see. Yeah. Ufano didn't have any chips. Yeah. That's what's yeah, going on here. Yeah. That makes more <laughs> sense. Yeah, we did. Like, still, yeah, like, still have like yeah, 20 like, big blinds though, yeah. right? Tortured. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I got. I respect yeah. that. You're like, yeah, you know like, what? Camera, I'm not going to play this game with you for yeah. two more streets. Here yeah. you go. I, I, I honestly don't think it's that bad. Let's figure um, out of my sevens. I do yeah. think that when he sizes that way on the flop of the two players, though, Joe, he is going to end up being slight, like on the stronger side in general, though. King, king eight on the flop. Corsi on course to win another pot. You know, sometimes when you make bad calls pre-flop, you get rewarded. And frankly, this is just um, a loose call here at the hijack facing the end of the gun open. Not how you want to play um, a 40 big blind stack, but sometimes you just flop trip kings. And it's that under the gun range. Gobert Mattel is going to come out firing. Aussie and effect coming up. Disaster striking for Mattel. You've now jumped in front of a hand like pocket nines, something like an ace eight suited or an eight nine suited, but you're still destroyed by a king. So, how is Mattel going to proceed? Is he going to set the price here? Now, the problem with betting here is that. Your opponent really shouldn't have much of a bluff range, just a lot of hands that are going to check back or bet for value that you're crushed with, right? The king is going to come out firing here for probably a bet somewhere in between 12 and 18,000. 
So maybe you do want to just set the price yourself. And Mattel does that under half pot, 13 and a half thousand. That is going to be a near min raise to 29,000. Very unorthodox, right? Wouldn't really have a bluff in this spot to play it like this. I think a bit more reg uh, regular to just sort of call the turn here, but Mattel facing this like in raise, kind of just like ugh, like need my hand here. And that is an experienced man with some good instincts. Wonderful. All right. Felt like you wanted a full. Is it a full? I love you guys. <laughs> <laughs> no soon anyhow. I love you. Enjoy the moment. That's it. Well done. Have fun. Well, Have done. Fun. well done. Well done. Well <laughs> done. <laughs> and that's the smile of a man who's having a great one time a, playing on the EPT. One hour and a half to see that. Maybe you. You love to see it. So it's good. Good. We are, we are all friends. We have a good time, but we are, we are very quiet. That's it. His internal emotion. Round two, Fano in the cutoff. Tal is going to fold this suited connector. Go, go, Govert. Oh. Defends with 7 4. And there is a 7 on the flop. Natal now an 85% favorite. Okay. It's always coming. The 7. on the turn but does provide a double gutter here a two for the okay. wheel six for the back end straight Barry Greenstein makes an appearance. Now, obviously, Mattal has a lock on this with two pair, but this could cost Vitsiak some chips. You know, as a beardsman myself, I like the way Mattal's beard sort of comes in here, this double. You know? 6,000. 
thousand. I'll find the check race, brother. Do it. You know two pair is good against this size. Twenty or more. Ooh. I think this is a bit too much. Yeah, all into call for Vitsiak with that rivered top pair with a pretty poor kicker. You know, might have gotten a curiosity call for <coughs> somewhere around 20,000. I think that this is going to not do the trick. <sighs> but it does look bluffier, you know. It does look bluffier than 20,000. Now, does my opponent really just have 8 6 here? Ace 5, Ace 7, 7 4. Yeah, good. Hold. Tal chips up, Vitsiak down to 20 bigs. Nice yeah, Shorty folds that 10 big blinds for Oberlieben. Spraggy has aces. Go on then, Spraggy. Oh, he raised, took the coward's way out. <laughs> 6,500 the raise from Spraggy. He hasn't been watching Mattel from earlier, has he? Spina, King 7 suited. Another hand folks are quite pleased to defend with. So Spina, 57 bigs after blinds and antis, Spraggy, 51. So we're playing pretty deep here. And away we go. Oh, boy. King Jack Trey, one heart. Very dangerous top pair for Espina. Yeah, I think Spraggy's just going to see back here every time. 6,500. Quick call from the King Seven. Turn card is an eight. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna try this one more time, Joe. Spinny's gonna check. Spraggy's gonna bet almost pot. Okay. I keep saying that's gonna happen at these deeper stack depths, but. Nostradamic. What did we decide your name is? Nostradamic. Nam does Nostradamic. Nostradamus. I thought it was better than that, but maybe. Who am I kidding? It probably wasn't. Oh, a perniction. That's right. A perniction of nearly pot, 23,000 to 30,500. I'm going to call that one a, a swing and a miss on the perniction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Puts in a nice chunky size regardless. I don't see Espina ever folding top hair against one of our fellow team pro players. Prediction was what we went with, yeah. Well. Spraggy's got to be loving this. Feels like he's got him on the hook. Probably stronger hands would have check raised either flop or turn at this point. River card is a five. Not a scary card in any way, shape, or form for two aces. Check. Spina checks again. It's going to have to soul read to get out of this one. It's a great run out. Absolute brick. Feels like a go card for aces to just try and get some more value from the King X, Jack X combos. 76.5. What's the size, Joe? I'm not in the prediction business. I just like to say what happens, and even then I get it wrong sometimes. Sixty-two thousand. Nailed it. Nailed it. So chonky.
Remember, Jose Espino Spraggy raised from early position. Is he triple barrel bluffing here that often? Is this ace queen? Just a call, and there you go. Absolutely massive one for Spraggy there, Joe. I mean, that's the way, that's the dream aces. Yeah, it really is. Dream aces. They flop top pair. The board doesn't get any worse for you. They call you down. Easy with aces. Didn't have, didn't get played back at at any point. Just ABC poker. ABC and... Always be chonking. <laughs> <laughs> that means Ben Sprague is up over a quarter million chips now. 88 big blinds as we're nearing the bubble. Gotta be... Feeling great about that. Nice for Team Pro. It was kind of like a, you know, a show I'd always watched, you know, with my mom. And, you know, she was always answering questions. And, I, you know, I always wanted to, you know, know more and, and be able to impress her, you know. And, and, and maybe it all it stems from that. We're going to jump around in time a little bit, Alex. Right? I want to find out, like, in the present, what is your current relationship with poker? Are you totally out? Do you play occasionally? What's what's the deal there? Yeah, I play occasionally. I fire up the, you know, the online every once in a while. And uh, obviously with, um, with things as they are now, I haven't played uh, live poker in, uh, in, in quite some time. And, 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 and I don't know when... Um, my timetable would be for, for going back to that. I guess uh, that's hard to say, but um, yeah, I wouldn't say I'm completely out. I'm, um, you know, I'm mostly out. I'm obviously not, uh, you know, traveling to the tournaments like I used to. That was a long time ago. And um, I, you know, I, I still love the game. I mean, uh, I think, um, uh, you know, way back when I kind of lost the love of it a, a little bit, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of getting back there. But uh, it, yeah, I, I guess, I guess, I guess, mostly out. But they always, uh, they, they always find a way to pull you back in, right? Did yeah, did, did that loss of love of it coincide with discovering this, you know, second life of being a, a, a game show slash trivia person? Um, I wouldn't say so. I mean, I, I think um, I've always like loved trivia and uh, just one day I was kind of like, you know, let's let's try this. Let's see if I can. It, it, you know, I kind of realized it was all out there and, and, and doable um, to kind of learn this stuff and, and, and get on the show. And it was kind of like, a, you know. A show I'd always watched, you know, with my mom and, you know, she was always answering questions and I, you know, I always wanted to, you know, know more and, and be able to impress her, you know, and, and, and maybe it all it stems from that in, in some way. But so. it wasn't like the, the distracted boyfriend meme where you like where it's like poker is the girl to your right and back <laughs> and over here is you looking at Jeopardy. Um, it wasn't right. quite like that. Well, right. I mean, uh, you know, I guess you could still you could uh, do both theoretically now. But I think my uh, getting out of poker and, and getting in and, and uh, getting on Jeopardy are kind of are kind of unrelated. Joe said we were going to dance around chronologically. If we rewind the clock 15, 16 years, I'm assuming this was not the plan to be a professional poker player and then go on to become a, a Jeopardy champion. When you first went to Yale, was there a plan or was it a case of let's just see where this takes me? Uh, well, when I first went to, I mean, yeah, I guess it's like a lot of college students, you know, you're not exactly sure what you're going to do. I guess I did have, you know, like an econ major, you know, I guess the theoretical plan was to be like an investment banker or something in, in that lane. Um, but it's just, I just never really, um, uh, you know, it never really interested me too much. And um, I, I got into um, trading later, you know, and, and that was a little more interesting. But, um, yeah, you know, obviously I, I fell into poker in college. And I, I mean, not really fell into it, but I got, I, you know, started playing a lot and then playing a lot of line and playing in tournaments. And, and um, you know, obviously the, the goal from that point was to, you know, just be a, a crusher. Uh, uh, forever, but um, you know, you don't always get, get what you want, I guess.
Tony raises to 2,000 with a legit hand. The cannon. 10-9. Calls. I'm, I'm known as the tightest player. You are. The tightest player in the world has joined me and made his presence felt. Daniel with ace-queen. I'm raising. He's out of position, but he knows Tony's likely to call light. 7,000 more. 7,000 on top. To 9,000. 9, I saw your VPIP. Can I fold that? Cool. You may. You may as well. Put that in the pot. That 800 I straddled off and just right, donated Tony. there. Tony's in. Elizabeth's out. Good luck. What is it? Dad? I put nine. I'm going to bet 12 in the dock. Oh, we're getting wine bets on the Are you calling in the dark? Yes! yes! That's Tony's what I'm talking calling. about. 7 6 10 on the flop. Tony hits a set of perfect 10s. I should have raised in the dock on that flop. <laughs> now I feel silly. You been in the dock again, Daniel? No, no, not with that board. Daniel has no idea how much he hates this board. Top pair for Daniel. Worst card ever for Daniel. What did I bet on the flop? 12? 12. He thinks he's good, but he's crushed. Daniel fires 28,000. Tony's just taking a second to daydream about what he's going to do with Daniel's money. <laughs> he just calls. Tony's got his fish on the hook. The river. The five of hearts. It's really too bad for Daniel because this hand would be so good against Tony in so many other spots. Daniel bets 60,000. 60, Tony puts Daniel all in, raising to 275 grand. The river may have saved Daniel a little bit, even though he's frustrated. Straight and flush draws both just got there. Not that easy with the G. What's the G? It's not that easy. No, I mean, I put I, a lot I, of pressure You're on. running good on me today. Running good. They run good too. I've been running good the last couple hours. Daniel frustrated. Let's see if he figures it out. Running I didn't even see that it was a heart, to be honest with you. <laughs> that I really out. didn't see it was a heart. I might have checked the heart. That full three of hearts is... Well, it was stupid to check a heart. I mean, Tony's known to have a lot of heart. <laughs> and commitment. <laughs> heart and commitment. Both Daniel and Tony's reps would suggest Daniel will stack off here. He doesn't. Good lay down. Thank you. Nice river. The river didn't help me, it hurt me. Oh, you had me already? I had you on the flop. Nice turn then. <laughs> I had ace queen. Yeah, you were drawing dead. Yeah. It's always nice. I mean, flop top set. Barry Greenstein straddles, so action on Antonio with pocket aces. Always nice to wake up with two pieces of ace. Raised to 2,400. Chow folds. Nine high for Rick Rahim. On the button. Folds. I'm amazed. Not my kind of hands, just my kind of game. 8 7 off suit. The loose cannon's out. Queen, Queen, uh oh. Fiffer could get in some real trouble here. Just calls and Barry folds. Does anyone else feel it getting cold in here? <laughs> the flop. Queen, Deuce, Nine. Viffer flops a set. This was going to be a cold deck either way, but this is just ice cold. And he slow plays it, checks over to Esfandiari. Antonio's in a very tough spot, impossible to know he's beat right now. That's 3,400. Biffer's in a great spot. He's got the nuts right now. Comes over the top to 10 grand. Very difficult to get away from this hand. There just aren't a lot of ways to be beaten, and there are a lot of draws out there that Viffer could be betting. Since Antonio has the ace of hearts, he knows Viffer isn't on the nut flush draw. That may help him a little, but even still, it's tough to get away from a hand like this, especially against an aggressive player like Viffer. Antonio re-raises to $28,000. It's pretty understandable to not be able to fold there, but by raising, you're only giving your opponent two options, fold or shove on you. If you're ahead, you don't want him to fold, and if you're behind, you don't want him to shove. Viffer shoves. Oh, it's so sick. Antonio probably has a pretty good idea he's beat now. 
It's been over 90,000 put in on this flop when there was only 7k to begin with. Pretty tough to imagine now that one pair would be good, but Antonio may feel as if he's pot committed. This would be for the rest of Antonio's stack. <sighs> this is this is this is probably got me, you know. But I'm pretty tilted and steamed. Antonio calls. Wanna run it twice? Whatever you want. We'll run it twice. Good deal. I have three queens. God, you just own me this. You really do. Looks like the magician's about to get the rabbit pulled out of his hat. So they've agreed to run it two times. We will see the turn and the river twice, each time playing for half the pot. Antonio's apparently agreed with himself to not show his aces to the table. Jack on the turn. Chow folded an ace, so you can see Antonio's got one out, singular. The first river card. Three of clubs. Viffer wins half the pot. Oh, I think I'm going to quit. Oh. It's not your day. It's not your day. Right, Chow Chow? Yeah. Well, me and you and Sembo. It's not Sembo. your day. It's not my day. I think it's time for me to go. Me and you, Sembo. That's exactly what I'm thinking. Do you have outs? I definitely have outs. Run number two, ten of hearts. It's a very good card for me. Antonio can hit hearts now. Looking for outs, that can't be too bad. Do you have flush? It's a very good card. The river. Antonio is saved. Ship it. But he's still here. <gasps> oh my god. I don't want you to leave here. Here. Oh my god, I'm staying. <laughs> I was about to quit. Raises to 2,000. Ike on the button. Out of here. Pocket pair for Jason Mercier, who's been awfully quiet so far. It's just a baby pair, but he's ahead of Tony's cutoff range. And calls. Oh, pocket kings for Phil. Raise pot. Raises to 8,600. Now Helm has got a real hand. Let's see if his giving action will get him some. Not from Tony. Tony G folds to another Helmu 3-bet. Can somebody please call for cocktails? <laughs> Jason's got good implied odds to try to flop a 3, and he doesn't know this, but Russ folded a king. You had a couple of hundred on, and I'll play every time free flop. Why don't you add some more money on, Phil? I'll give you a flip every time, then. See, see what sort of a genius you are, then. Tony would rather flip a coin for half a mil instead of a measly 100K. Jason calls... So Phil does get some action. Jason's a big dog here. Nine queen Trey. Mercier flops a set and checks to Helmuth, who has a flush draw. Mercier buku. Phil probably doesn't even think he needs to hit the club. Phil checks. Trying to control this pot. Queen on the turn, giving Mercier a full house. He checks. Such a good card for Jason. Phil's clubs are now dead, too. Phil bets 7,000. Yum, yum. Jason's probably thrilled that Phil's finally put some money in this pot. He missed a check raise on the flop, but he's getting a second chance at it now. Jason raises to 20700 This is a tough decision for Phil. The board doesn't look too bad for two kings. Jason's known for running some pretty sick bluffs, and Phil knows Jason knows Phil could be making his bet on the turn with nothing but ace high. You with me, Rose? I'm with you. The question is, is Phil following? Oh, you got nines full? Close. I got a bad feeling about this. I got a bad feeling about this. Have you ever seen like the Star Wars movies where the guy, Harrison Ford always says, I have a bad feeling about this. I think he says it in Indiana Jones as well, and Jason Molara Mercier over there is about to pluck your heart out. Phil calls and hits a flush on the river. Jason's got Phil in really bad shape right now. It's just a matter of how big a value bet he wants to make. Come on. Mercier all in. Come on. What in the heck is going on here? This is ridiculous.
This is what happens to me when I play in these freaking cash games. <laughs> now you're back to yourself. That's better. Thing. I couldn't hold it in. We were, I was worried I lost you. God, this is so brutal. Jason's betting big here, having a pretty good idea. Phil's got a premium hand. How much is it? 67.9. Jason could have maybe bet a little bit less, but in a pot this size, there's not much difference between 40,000 and 67,000. If Phil had two aces with the ace of clubs, he'd almost assuredly make this call. But Phil folds. That's a fucking nice. gotta show. Phil gets away from it and saves himself almost 70 grand. Donnie with pocket kings. Speaking of straddling, Cowboys. Raised to 3,000. Prahlad. Folds. <laughs> right? It's like, I don't want to play that high. Five out of the six times. Action over to Phil. Queen. Oh, boy. Queen. Uh, get the bleeper ready. <laughs> 9,000. A re-raise to 9,000. Donnie's in a spot where he could make a four bet, but he doesn't want to chase Helmuth out if he's getting out of line. We know Phil's got queens, though, and he'll call just about anything. Call. See, that's already a big game. Look at that. He just put in 9000 That's because there's a straddle on it, Phil. We're not asking for a double straddle, just the one. Both the straddle and the cooler <laughs> hand are to blame for the size of this pot. A juicy pot pre-flop, which comes out jack-8 king. A set for Stern. All Donnie needed was for Phil to not flop a set. Phil checks. Donnie's in position, so if he bets here, it will look like a continuation bet. 11,000. Phil calls. I was going to suggest that the king might bother Phil, but it doesn't appear so. Jack of hearts on the turn as Stern fills up. Phil's now drawing dead to someone pulling the fire alarm. Helmuth checks. Phil put Donnie on a jack. Maybe the second one hitting will save him some money. Donnie's trying to figure out how to get max value. He bets 30000 These guys both have their hands in their mouths, which, when unintentional, is a sign of weakness. Phil calls. In Donnie's case, it might actually be a reverse tell. Phil just called 30,000, drawing stone dead. The river. The ten of diamonds. Phil checks. I can't really tell how many that is, the, the yellows. About uh, 60. You have about 60 left? There's 100K in the pot, and Phil's only got 60K behind. It would probably look stronger if Donnie didn't put Phil all in. Come on. There goes Donnie putting Phil all in. At this point, all Phil Helmuth has is a bluff catcher. And I think he knows it. There's no way Donnie would be value betting any hand worse than a pair of queens in this spot. So Phil's either crushed or Donnie's bluffing in his eyes. Why is it just funny to watch him in anguish? I don't know. Six is the sickest stuff. I mean, just, I mean I, why, why do I even come here? I mean, I just ridiculous. This guy probably has ace jack and just hit some miracle jack like it was nothing. Maybe he's just bluffing it all off. I mean, uh, Phil's trying very hard to convince himself he can call. See you, Daniel. He knows this could be a while. Here's my thinking, okay? Can't be shit at 35,000 when he went up the call. I think this time he's got, he's got, he's not bluffing at all. I think it doesn't look like he's bluffing to me. I think he's betting because he thinks Phil is just sick and annoyed and he's going to call. 52. But I don't think, I don't think Danny's ever bluffing here. Do you think he's bluffing? <laughs> no. <laughs> Come on in. Huddle love. <laughs> for for, for love. <laughs> Oh, 100%. Everyone here. Phil and Donnie have had some history this week. Maybe clouding Phil's judgment. Oh, you might be bluffing here. 
I don't think there's any chance he's bluffing yeah, here. Like, almost like zero chance. Close to zero. He wouldn't have even bothered betting the turn. I think, I think uh, Helmuth has ace-king. You think he has ace-king? <laughs> he could have ace-king. He thinks he has queens. He might have queens. He, 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 hey, wait, he did race less. Actually, he has queens because he made it 9,000 before the flop. He has queens because like he, yeah. he only made it nine. He always reaches pot. Yeah. Yeah. I think he's lost. Is that the Brad Pack over there? <laughs> boys, he might be bluffing here, boys. <laughs> <laughs> he might be bluffing here. He wants to be a hero right here for sure. Wow, I have a feeling he's bluffing. I don't know if I if I can call it though. Oh, if he's bluffing and he calls, it'll be he'll feel like so the, the he knows he'll, he'll feel so like happy. Superman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's supposed to have me beat. I mean, I don't think Phil has a feeling he's bluffing. I think Phil wants him to be bluffing. I just also the way that Danny asked the way that Danny asked how many he's yeah. got is so Very natural positive. and so comfortable. Very it's like this is like yeah. just see what you got. He's like I'm all in. Yeah, it's like yeah. so come on, yeah. give me a break. You have it for sure. Should I also feel insurance? <laughs> you bluffing, Donnie? Wow, I just I just feel like you're I feel like you're bluffing. He wants to win today. He wants to win some yeah. good money. Yeah, so like true. this is his opportunity to make a be a hero. $68,000. Here we go. This is, this, is, this is the call before the storm. I want to see it when it happens. I want to get back. Go back? Yeah. Based on pot odds, Phil's not getting nearly the right odds for how often Donnie would be bluffing here. But I don't think this decision is about pot odds for Phil. All right, well, now that everyone's back and Phil's sure the cameras are back on him, we should get a decision soon. Wow. The last time I made a decision like this, I was wrong. I looked pretty bad. Wow. It's like my hand won't let me fold here. So weird. Once someone picks up their cards like that, they usually fold. Just queens, boys. That's all I have. Pocket queens. God, I hate to I hate to give this one up. Just hate to give it up. My read has not been perfect lately though, that's the problem. You just can't wait to flip over that queen ten or those two deuces or whatever. Phil folds. My contacts are drying out. Unreal. I tried, full, I tried to play guess. tried to play two big pots against this kid. He snapped off top two in Queens. Welcome back to Paris and the PokerStars European Poker Tour as we start the evening session in the main event in partnership with Le Club Barrier. 270 players return from the dinner break. 255 will make the money, which means it's almost time for world famous bubble coverage. These are the biggest stacks of the 270 remaining players, and one of these five players is going to be on the main stage at our new feature table. Gregory Fournier. We've established already. No doubt it's coincidence that Fournier also make the playing cards. What? He was the start of day chip leader. He's currently second on the leaderboard and he joins Sam Greenwood and Romain Lewis at our new feature table with the blinds about to go to 2,000, 4,000, 
with a 4K big blind ante. It's James Hartigan with Joe Stapleton. Hello, my babies. And we welcome for the first time this event, Maria Ho. Oh, hello. Maria, we saw you in the main event earlier. We then relayed to everyone watching that you were going to play the mystery bounty. The fact that you are here implies you are no longer in, said Mystery Bounty. It's not a mystery anymore. <laughs> and I definitely tried to re-enter more than once and was told promptly that uh, it's a single re-entry, which is why I find myself in here with you two. Your financial loss is the audience's gain. Everyone is very happy to have you here. Well, I am happy to be here. I love this venue, actually. I'm really enjoying my first time in EPT Paris. Yeah, no surprise you love it. It's in a shopping mall. Palais de Congrès hosting this event for the first time. An upgraded venue on 2023. The number's up on 2023. There were 1,606 entries last year, 1,747 this year. A prize pool of more than 8 million euros. A first prize of more than one and a quarter million euros. Six-figure scores for everyone else who makes the final table in the main event. But right now, the number that matters is that min cash, 8,650 euros. 15 are going to miss out. Everyone else will lock up at least eight and a half grand. And we can expect that to happen during the next level and a half. And that's what we've still got to play this evening. 90 minutes plus 45 minutes of the following level before we wrap day two. And I would expect that with 15 players to lose, or another way to look at it is 14 to lose until we're hand for hand, I would imagine we will hit the bubble during this next level. Level 15 of the main event. Cat Jam. So players returning from the extended break. And a new feature table. No, you can't. You can't put your cards yeah, inside the box. <laughs> Just keep the cards on the box a few seconds before, yeah, that's yours, okay. before you look at your cards. And please push the cards and keep forward because I can't reach on every angle. Okay. Apart from that, have fun. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Sam Greenwood has 222k right now, 55 big blinds. Average stack is just shy of 200k. So there's a lot of deep stack players at this table, Maria. Most of the players above the average. Yeah, it's kind of nice for us because we'll just see less stalling pre-flop because of that. That's no good. That's no players good. pretty incentivized to just play at a normal pace with their stacks. Are you going to even play? I don't know. Maybe I go up. You're in the uh, big blind. Ah, here we go. Action underway again. No, 2K, 4K blinds. Yeah. You're in the big blind. I'm in the big blind. Oh, I took much, your anti already. How much are the blinds now for? Okay. Get your chips out, buddy. Come on. Seven Ian Bradley five. folding under the gun. Guillaume Nole. Nole. Queen six. Everybody other than him, of course, with a little bit of a pre-flop tank there, but as expected. Yeah, Nole, the short stack of the table with 13 big blinds. Only player at the table who's in the danger zone. Danger zone. There shouldn't be any tanking right now, by the way. They have plenty of time to think during the dinner break. Threes for Terry Vlastos. Terry. Terry is one of my favorite names. Hope we see some of the Terry folds. Round to Artur Emig, King 10 of Diamonds. Mm. Cool. Interesting. A limp with King 10 suited. Huh. Four of us. Round to the blinds, the big stack. Gregory Fournier in the small blind with A6 of strawberries. Oh, why don't you just have your dad make you pocket aces? Oh. He calls, and a quick raise from Jonathan Swerdlow in the big blind with fives. 
The good news about limping with, you know, this suited Broadway of King Ten of Diamonds here is that you get to see a flop now against this raise. Obviously, you know, things get a little dicier if you uh, opened and you were three bet in this spot. Yeah, I would expect to see him call. YouTube is the best because YouTube, you can go wind. Cool. I can go back. Ah, uh, we Twitch. It's we just Twitch the live stream. Is, is it? it the live stream? Yeah. I don't want really to use Twitch. Yeah. So both Amig and Fournier call the race. We go three way to the flop. First hand of this new level. 10, 10, 8. Go Amig. I love a good royal flush draw that turns into trip tens. I feel like Swerdlow had a plan this hand. The plan, it seems, is to bet 55k into 49k on the flop, much to the fake confusion hmm? of Artur Emig. Right. Generally, you know, most hands wouldn't love to face this size, but here, of course, pretty locked up with the trips. Going to be really happy. Thinking about, you know, how do I, of course, <coughs> disguise the strength of my hand and maybe keep in the small blind as well. I thought the BAFTAs were last night, but we've got two incredible <laughs> acting jobs here. One guy faking he's got a strong hand. One guy faking not having one. Hmm. Hmm. Concern. Okay, call. Hmm. Well... Fournier folds from the small blind, so we're going heads up to the turn. Still confused. <laughs> Jack on the turn. Well, the board gets straight here. Puts a potential flush draw out there. Yes. Swirlow knows he should be slowing down at this point because a hand that's willing to call that size on the flop certainly has to be pretty strong. And when we think about some of the hands that Emig will limp call with, they will contain some small pairs, but they'll also contain some of these, you know, Broadway type holdings, you know, some of the 10-9 suiteds might be in there, etc. Jack-10 suiteds. What to do here is a real enigma. Especially when we look at SPR, right? 100K back, 159K in the pot. Looks like he's just going to shove. Why did I bet 55K on the flop? <laughs> Presto, that's why. Feels like a bit of a fake tank because, again, just not going to be many floats on the flop against that sizing. So you're really looking at some very strong made hands. You know, if you go a third pot, a quarter pot on the flop, then sure, maybe you'll get some ace highs coming in there. Some, you know... Two overs, backdoor straight possibilities, but you bet over the pot size on the flop. So that is certainly going to narrow your opponent's range. Swerdlow folds. David Lappin's watching on YouTube. We mentioned David's recent blog earlier. He says, loving the coverage, guys. Looking forward to this session. I really hope there won't be any tanking on this bubble. If there is, we'll make sure we get Tonka to weigh in. Santa? <laughs> so Artur Emig chips up to 261k. One elimination since the start of this level. 269 players remaining. 255 make the money. See the bubble on screen right now. It's 
so convenient that everyone has these really hard decisions. 14 off the money. No lay, no lay, no lay, no lay. Opening under the gun. Only seen one of his cards, the King of Diamonds. He's raised to 8,000. You know, these days, people certainly can have raised folds from early position off of this stack size. The fact that we're getting this close to the money as we see his other card is a king. You know, I would say that it's a little less likely that he had one of those raise fold type hands and it does indeed look like he's just looking for max action and of course if you just open jam even off of 11 bigs pre from under the gun it's not very likely to get looked up during the last session we had spraggy at the feature table this is the hand named after him ace seven offsuit good fold the disaster of a hand Named after a disaster of a human being. King 10 for Romain Lewis. And you see Lewis thinking about it because, again, just recognizing that there will be some raised folds off of this stack size. But again, just being so close to the money, I think that it's going to be a little less likely. I think if this was an earlier stage of the tournament, then you might find a hand where you want to try to put your opponent to the test. But this one is going to be one that you're going to go with. Oh, the irony of this question on YouTube. Is the drunk commentator was removed? No, and come and face that to my say. <laughs> <laughs> So Fournier, three bets from the button. Well, this is unfortunate. Seven bucks. For a moment, I thought Nole was folding kings. <laughs> he was just Maria said he did have some raised folds. <laughs> Not this hand. All in with King. Snap called by Jax. A domination situation and a great spot for Nole to double up through the table chip leader. But hang on. Doesn't Fournier know that his dad <laughs> gave Nole kings? I'm so sick of these Nepo babies. All hearts on the flop. Hearts not a factor, of course. We could see a chop here. <coughs> well, that gives no lay the set, but one more heart, and we're going to be singing. One time. Nope. Full house for no lay. 64? Yes, I think. He doubles up to just shy of 30 big blinds. Gregory Fournier still table chip leader with more than 140 bigs. He could afford it. Much needed double up as we're approaching the bubble. A lot of breathing room now actually for no lay with just under 30 bigs. Ice cream says this can't be live. I saw this yesterday. The very same think. I mean, time is a flat circle. This is not live. I scream, you scream. We all scream for ice cream. I think 
we're all going to be screaming for a clock pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> Ace Queen for Romain Lewis. Raise eight thousand. Five pass. Six pass. Seven pass. And Bradley Fold in the small blind. Yom <laughs> with nine eight in the big blind. Certainly could. Defend here. Do you ever just double up though and wonder, okay, like, should I test to see if perhaps he check exactly, or do I want to risk my newfound chips? Right, it could go either way psychologically. Like, do I? I heard something a long time ago that I'm embarrassed to admit that I really took to for a long time and that is that you have to give your chance your chips a chance to become a part of your stack that you have to you have to take ownership of them and if you if you risk them again too soon they're more easily no. able to part I with your stack I don't know why you ever feel like it's good to tell to these know. things to someone that Buys your action. Uh, yeah, <laughs> other room or? Confused. Yeah. Okay. Be honest, Mur. At this point, right, you're just buying his action out of pity, not because you think it's a good investment. Yeah, I mean. You ever heard of the sunk cost fallacy? <sighs> and the worst part is, you know, we don't have makeup. So. I don't think Maria's <laughs> down that much on me, to be honest. Especially if you, know, you if you if you eliminate the main event sh from this year. I'm. I don't really have a running like yeah. Excel spreadsheet that we're tracking. Maria, as long as you eliminate all the events he hasn't won money in, you're up. <laughs> yes, that's where I was going with this. So Nole has actually hit this board decently, pairing his eight. However, Lewis does have two overs, or rather one over, and a straight draw. Yeah, just recognizing that there's not going to be. <laughs> Too many great turns for his hand and just wants to get away now. Yeah. <clears throat> well, fair question from Grifo. Wow, why are they playing so slowly? Because we are getting very close to the money now. 269 players remain. 255 will get paid. So the bubble is looming and there's a realistic chance that if you just don't play that many <coughs> hands. There'll be enough action on the other tables to ensure that you can get into the money. Can we just go back to that last conversation for a second? Yes. So I've actually free-rolled Maria a whole bunch of times, too. She just wouldn't know it because I didn't cash any of those times either. <laughs> like in, in your mind, you're like, if I do well, I'll tell Maria. I'm going to give Maria 5%, <laughs> yeah, for, for free for having faith in me. And I still <laughs> haven't cashed any of those. But it's... The thought that counts. Right. Oh, wait. <laughs> no, it's the money that counts, <laughs> yeah. mostly, in poker. I did think about winning. How hard did you actually try to win? Clearly not enough, because as we all know, it comes down to who wants it more. And yeah. You just simply didn't want it enough, Joe. I didn't want it enough. I've also overpaid Maria a couple times and didn't say anything. Really? Yeah. And I, mean, I wouldn't want you to overpay by, me. By a significant margin, but that significant margin, like I overpaid you by like 30, 40%, but that equated to like another 80 bucks. Well, Math is hard. That's not how I want to get my money back for my investment, Joe, <laughs> but okay. All right. No late completes in the small blind. It is Sam Greenwood's big blind. We have Canada v. Canada. And Greenwood's got ace nine. I figure what I have to do is sell like 120% of myself for something and then I'll probably make the final table. <sighs> that are charity events. You can win those. I'm pretty good at charity events. Yeah. All in. They're all in. Greenwood shoves on Nole who folds. Has dropped down to 25 big blinds after playing those last two hands, but head above water. 
Two, six, seven remaining. 12 off the money. Sacramento says, Joe, start an OnlyFans and you can bankroll anyone. Now, I have considered starting an OnlyFans. And I know I'm guaranteed at least a couple of subscriptions because someone from Poker Stars would have to subscribe to just keep tabs on what I'm doing. So at least I got that money coming in. And Carl. Crazy Carl, sure. He's just a fan, Joe. <laughs> Lightning Souls says Spraggy was moved away from the feature table for being too entertaining. I'll be honest with you, would love to have seen more of Spraggy. His table's going to break really soon. And we can't have the feature table break midway through the level. It gets very, very messy. I mean, this with no disrespect to Spraggy, but he was kind of mashing, and it was a welcome change from what we're used yeah. to seeing. And uh, no disrespect to him, we just usually he shows up with about 20 big blinds, which is, you know, pretty common for anyone in a poker tournament. Yep. Those of you asking how many players are left, it is on the screen the whole time. We have the field ticker, which shows that we started with 1,747 total entries, of which 265 remain. And 255 is the number that make the money. Fournier has opened with ace-nine suited. It's Vlastos' big blind. He's got 6-4. The day won't necessarily finish when we hit 2-5-5. We are meant to play five and a half levels today. So we probably should play beyond the bubble. We should play into the post-bubble bust-out bonanza. Ooh, looks like a couple players spit the dust on the counter. Still going. Maybe maybe Spraggy's table broke. 262, getting really close now. When we're five away, the bubble will go red, <laughs> and that's when we officially kick off world-famous bubble coverage. You know, if I could bust out <coughs> at any time I would want to bust out before the bubble so that I can be in the booth for this. <laughs> Thank you. No rip roll. We're not for hand for hand just yet. Officially, we go hand for hand at 256. Sometimes we'll go hand for hand, maybe two or three off the money, depending on how much stalling. Toby Stone observes as he brings us a smooth and controlled stone bubble. Smooth and controlled. The way I imagine he does crunches. Carson says if I was player 256, I would not be happy. No, I... I think that's fair. Mm -hmm. My guess is that Arthur Emig is not going to have a single easy decision for the next hour or so. Six, seven, eight, nine. Open-ended straight draw. Greenwood with top pair. Is that iambic pentameter? And when you started it, did you mean for it to go mm. that way or it just... Yes, it was completely <laughs> planned and not in any way ad-libbed mm. or accidental. Well, this decision should be pretty easy for a MIG. He's definitely going to continue here, but does he just want to call? Does he want to maybe attack the fact that Greenwood is opening from the button here? So certainly could have a wider range that may not have connected with this board meaningfully. Hmm. Hmm. Hmm.
Okay, Emek has now paired his nine. Still behind. Quite an interesting turn because Greenwood recognizes that, of course, you know, some two pair combos could perhaps now be in a mix check calling range from the flop, you know, some of these nine sevens, et cetera. But also a lot of this, which is a pair and a straight draw. And so having top pair here, plus with the two diamonds out there, does Greenwood want to try to charge some of these draws, some of the hands that are going to have a pretty easy continue? Well, that's a charge. Yeah, 32 into 40. The price of drawing just went up. <laughs> I'm sleepy. It's a show. I cannot dance. So I'm Nick, just thinking about how, of course, you don't really want to fold your equity here. A pair in a straight draw is going to be pretty strong. You tried to show first time. And well, perhaps time maybe you. you'd be That's willing right. to turn it into That's a bluff right. if you don't feel yep. like your pair is going to be good enough at showdown. Having that eight in your hand. If you miss... Position to gain. Probably a good time to verify the bet. No, no, no. You think about it for 10 minutes, then you ask how much it is. Okay, all important river card. Barry Greenstein. An inconsequential Greenstein. What Greenwood a whiff. Still ahead. Open ended made a pair. Tail is all this time. Greenwood adds 55k to his stack. Second in chips at the table. We just shy of 70 big blinds. Certainly expect some of these bigger stacks to start applying even more pressure as we get closer to the money bubble. I was just about to ask about that. Meanwhile, we have retrospective analysis from everyday poker player watching on YouTube. All in bluff. Cool. Guess feeling that <coughs> Emig, having missed the river, should have tried to represent something there. So, Marie, we got a bunch of players bunched up here who are basically tied for second in chips of this tail, right? Greenwood, Lewis, Flastos. Do they have the ability to bubble boss... Uh, with Fournier, once Fournier folds, or is it really just Fournier who has that ability? No, I think it's certainly, you know, who is left to act in the hand when it's your turn. Also, who's in the big blind? Um, you know, if it's one of the shorter Back stacks, the, like the Bradley or Nolay in the big blind, then certainly try play, you want to be doing the targeting hand. the bluffing opening we'll wider really into those big blinds. Yeah, as long yeah. as you don't have a big stack right behind you. you. Yeah, much easier. Everyone always thinks you bluff. Right, yeah. So far, these opens have been pretty reasonable in terms of their well, holdings. Yeah, the hand, just, it's a really good chance to, 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 to win, and then doesn't. That, that works, too. Mm -hmm. Eight, nine, ten, six. Yeah. Five. I thought you might have better than Five. Are you going to train? Yes. Are you? Awfully. Yeah. I've just got quite a bit of work and things on, so. <laughs> oh, baby. Fix it. I will, yeah. 
Have you been to Jeju before? No, never, yeah. I'm going with my fiance, yeah, if we, nice. if we can, yeah. yeah. She's, she really wants Yeah, really it's nice to flop first. a flush. Yeah. It would be nicer if the, your opponent had a hand that perhaps then, they would uh, continue with. Like, I think the first two or something. Yeah. Not sure yeah, how much really action nice. Blastos like, like is going to get here. You know, and like resort and all that, but it like. I felt like around yeah. Jeju was like beautiful, like I on mean, the island. Yeah, it's nice. I mean, I don't, I don't really leave. I don't really leave to be honest, but uh, it seems like it's a little. It can be a little slow. Like there, there isn't that much. No, no. I think it's more sightsee. It's yeah. more like yeah, like Seoul obviously for slow, but so yeah, exactly. Sightsee. Yeah. Cat yeah, Arena so I, I liked it there last. Yeah. is missing their twice, favorite yes. poker player. Yeah. I wish Danny Negrani yeah. was playing this one. They d the first one was pretty. He's a real hoot pretty nanny. Small and pretty early. Yeah. Yeah, I've not, I've not been. I've never been to Korea, actually. Never been to Korea. So yeah, it'd be nice hopefully you can. Yeah. I mean, it should be good as well, yeah. Yeah, no. It, I think everyone's saying the... They're saying the hotels were all booked up. And well, I tried to change the room and they were, said they were full. Oh, so right. I tried to get like a slightly better room. Yeah. And all of the suites were, were, were sold out. I don't know how many they have, but yeah, I guess there's 20, 30. It's a pretty big. It, was, it wasn't even that expensive. It was like yeah. 100 euros more or something at night. But. Yeah, it's a pretty big hotel too. Yeah, so they were all sold out, which suggests it's going to be pretty good. Greenwood raising from the hijack. Rastos back in action with 9-8 of diamonds. He thinks it's so easy to flop a flush now. It's like, yeah. <laughs> can't be that hard to do it. Independent back -back. trials. Ace 10 of strawberries for Romain Lewis in the small blind. Year of Romain. It's a very pretty hand, especially against the late position opener. And with that collar in between, looks like an attractive spot to squeeze, but also you could opt to flat as well. You know, Sam Greenwood is a very tough customer and sometimes facing a tough player, that's the original opener, might deter somebody from taking these spots as often as they should. Slow the main down. calls as well. Gregory Fournier, 9 8 suited in the big blind, getting a great price. Flick it in. Let's go forward to the flop. Fournier to the flop. It's going to be an all club flop because blockers are real. You want to bet? Yes. <laughs> Four tray deuce. No clubs? What? Thanks for the analysis, Tanish. Vlasto should fold if three go to flop and a raise happens. Hell yeah. So, a press release. Tanish has just been hired by PokerCoaching.com. <coughs> nice little spot that. Lewis found to lead into yeah. the field there. Takes it down. Yeah, it's the year of Romain. <coughs> no, I think it's the year of Arugula. You got any? You know they don't really eat raw veg here. It's not their thing. They do love their undercooked meat. Oh, are you not? You're not a big... He's a well-done guy. Oh. Many, many a restaurant in this city has responded to my request to have a steak cooked medium well. C'est non possible. <laughs> yeah. When they're really it's mad, they just do this. <laughs> it's really embarrassing to go to like a steakhouse with someone who asks for their steak done more than medium. It's just 
Not a thing, James. Believe it or not, as much as I love riding James for being difficult, I think if you go to a restaurant, you should get your steak the way you want it. Thank you, Joe. Even if that is disgusting. <laughs> a disgusting brick. Even I, if you're going to need a machete to cut through it. I, I, I know it's weird because you, you should just say, well, then don't eat meat. I have an aversion to like any kind of like thing that makes it look fleshy or makes it look kind of like there's blood coming out of it. <sighs> But that's only for meat, not like fish, like sashimi. I have no problem with sushi at all. Okay. He also prefers it well done, though. <laughs> like, can I get the sashimi, but like, could you perhaps boil pan it? sear it? <laughs> yeah, boil it. <laughs> boil it. Oh. He likes it deep fried and wrapped in newspaper. What about a sous vide, James? A what? A sous vide steak. That's when they uh, put it in a, in a plastic bag and then boil it in water. Oh. And so it gets cooked all the way through, but it's still really tender. They usually finish it off, like, in the pan, though. They'll sear so it, it's yeah. Seared, yeah. It's actually re a really great preparation, if only I knew how to do it myself. I mean, Jay Rummel, I, I have to salute you. You're not wrong. Simple solution. Don't eat meat. Yeah, I mean, that's a very fair comment. <laughs> Julie Alice says, stop the food talk. Come on, should we do the thing where I read off every single action that's happening on screen? Is that what they want? We've not missed any significant action. We sure haven't. <clears throat> okay, Gregory. What are you going to do with 10-3? Come on, you're letting them off too easy. No, that would have been too out of line. Even for a bubble abuser, I think. Bradley could absolutely defend with King-6. Blind versus blind here. Cool. Cheeky. Yeah, but... You heard him. This guy, he's a sweet guy. He's not just calling. Just bad timing here as... I feel like Ace-Queen's a really easy shove against Bradley's stack size. 22 bigs to start the hand. Bubble approaching... Don't let the man get to a flop. You've got his queen. Ace, eight, deuce. Okay. I was going to say at least... You played it perfectly. Bradley has whiffed here and... No, nah, man, you got to continue this. No. What's the point? Yeah, it does feel like the type of board that Bradley's going to try to rep being the pre-flop three better. So, you know, I take that back. Now Swerdlow's going to make the maximum because if he shoved, Bradley would fold. Mm. And so we'll be results-oriented just this one time. Bradley bet 18,000. Swerdlow called. Jack of clubs on the turn means Bradley is now drawing dead. The day we stop keeping track of results is the day I'll stop being results-oriented. Check, check on the turn. Eight on the river. Check to showdown. Ian Bradley now playing 17 big blinds. Shortest stack at the table. Still has 53 minutes until the blinds go up. Okay, I'm going to have to do some banning here. I'm not a big fan of this false masculinity that calls out people for choosing not to eat meat. So you, sir, 
are banned. Yeah, that's pretty lame. It's pretty crazy that we live in a world where this is the stuff that people choose to want to cause a divide with, like of all things. Hmm. Greenwood opening with tens, forty-eight with sixes. Having said that, Maria would never date a vegan. How do you feel about, because I was asked if I would go vegan because this person wouldn't date somebody who wasn't. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like if you were a vegan, you think that's okay to ask your partner? It's to do really that? weird, right? Because if you truly believe that uh, it's you're murdering animals, it might be a hard thing to get over right. that your partner just doesn't care about that. I could understand that a little bit. Ace, 10, deuce. It's a set for Greenwood, but Fournier has nada. Oh, baby. I love sets. Love having sets. I'm obsessed with sets. Except, I mean, what feels worse than when you have set over set and the inferior set? That's pretty rough. But Greenwood here just hoping that, seeing as how he unblocks all of the ace is that maybe that type of hand is in Fournier's range. But Fournier going to check back here with the sixes. Ooh. <gasps> oh, no. oh, no. Oh, no. That check is going to cost Fournier so many chips now. Set over set. What, what was I just saying? Worst feeling. This is the worst feeling. Not yet, it's not. Now you're still happy. Just enjoy this moment. Maybe the river will be a scare card and, and Fournier mm -hmm. won't raise and risk doubling up Greenwood here. But for now, Greenwood looks like he's done checking. Look at the size over bet here. When the backdoor flush draw appears, after the flop goes check, check. This is what happens when you have unprotected sets. <laughs> is that the first time you've used that? No. That's really funny. Meanwhile, you'll notice that we are down to 260 players. You'll notice that the bubble has turned red. World-famous bubble coverage starts now. We're five off the money. Okay. I feel like that's one of the rivers where, again, I think if faced with a polarizing sizing i don't think fournier will raise definitely interesting because you wonder if Fournier thought that it was a little sus that Greenwood would chuck a flop that most people would see bet as the under the gun opener and then go for that big sizing on the turn. And depending on what Fournier makes of that, you know, you can certainly see a world in which he's not going to lose all that much more. I 
again, you know, if Greenwood goes for a bigger sizing, it could be a case of, you know, when you raise with sixes on this run out, do you think you're going to get called by worse very often? You know, even a hand like ace king, I don't know, you know, it d doesn't feel like even the strongest of two pairs are certainly going to raise an eyebrow to a, a raise on the river. So then you're losing to, of course, bigger sets. Queen Jack. Ooh. So 98,000 in the pot. And Greenwood over bets again. 120,000. How does he know? How is he that good? Oh, sure There's the call. E. That is going to be a not insignificant dent in Gregory Fournier's stack. Crash zoom on Greenwood. As he adds 174K <laughs> to his stack. He's now the table chip leader. With 444,000, more than 100 big blinds, Gregory Fournier dropping down into second place with around 400K. That was some really rough sets. Meanwhile, Ian Bradley continues to be the shortest stack at the table with 17 bigs. As we highlighted during that hand, five off the money now. Very close to bursting the bubble in this EPT Paris main event. Here's a, Sorry, Ryberg, you seem like a nice person, but here's a way to not get the joke. Going to need to see a doctor after all those sets. Ugh. What? <laughs> Is this like joking the joke? It's joking the joke, but it's not even really no, it's, doing it's the joke. It's not a joke. <laughs> Sorry, Ryberg. Yeah, D Dana Four, you, you don't really need to see a doctor. And also, you wouldn't say those sets. Well, sets must be nice. There you go. See, DJ Scotty B got it. Had a raise from a make with Ace King suited. What's funny is that um, I just retweeted. Max Silver, who was trying to unload some comedy tickets. And he said, uh, thanks for the retweet. They found a great home thanks to you. The funds going to charity as a bonus. So you can feel good about all the bad jokes you made today. I haven't watched any EPT Live. I'm just making an educated guess. <laughs> I love Max Silver. He's hilarious. Really underrated account, I feel like. <laughs> so this, of course, is the first stop of EPT 2024. And then there are four more events this year. Very similar. In fact, identical schedule to last year. Monte Carlo, Barcelona, Cyprus, and Prague. If you want to see the dates, key event dates, check out the PokerStars live app at this point, even though I can't confirm exact details, I would imagine you'll see a live stream from every single event. So Monte Carlo in the spring, Barcelona in the summer, Cyprus in the autumn, Prague just before Christmas. Oh, yeah, you heard, you heard the poppage. That's because we lost a player. We're down to 259 now. Thomas Martin wants to know, is Maria going to play the Irish Open this year? Well, I, I didn't really get an official invite, even though I guess I don't really need one 
to go, but sadly the answer is no. Thank you for your question. <laughs> but I lo- I really did enjoy myself the, the time that I did go out there and play. I think it was 10 years ago, maybe. It was a great event. It was 2012. Maybe maybe seven years ago. That's weird because 2019 was only two years ago. You haven't done this math in your head? 2012 was eight years ago. 2019 was two years ago. 2011 was 15 years ago. Hmm. Tanish is analyzing this hand on YouTube. Greenwood, oh pocket boy. deuces, very risky. <laughs> but still ahead. Michael says Greenwood aiming for another set, so I see he goes for repetition in his workout. We've gone to plaid. Ross does his seabet, gets through. James, someone was asking moments ago if yeah. we could get a recap on uh, what the deal is with the podcast, the live podcast, how to, how to sure. get involved. Yeah, so in March, before the Irish Open, in the run-up to the Irish Open, we are celebrating the 300th episode of the Poker in the Ears podcast. And we're going to celebrate with a live show at the Hippodrome Casino in London. It's happening on Wednesday, March 13th. So on the evening of that day, going to have people come and watch the show be recorded live at the Hippodrome and then have a poker tournament afterwards. Not too dissimilar to what we did back in 2017 for episode 100. But we've opened it up to PokerStars UK players. So if you are a PokerStars UK player, you can fire up the client or the mobile app, look for a dummy tournament in the lobby called Poker in the Ears Live at the Hippodrome, and you'll find it in the events section of the tourney lobby. And if you register for that, we'll be in touch. One of the team will send you an email, we'll ask for your name, confirm the name of your plus one, and we'll put you on the guest list. Thank you for that. Nolay with 23 big blinds and a pretty hand here. <coughs> now on one hand, you could just call in this spot and hope to connect. You know, pretty risky, I think, to try to put your tournament life at risk this close to the bubble. And Fournier doesn't have the stack that he did have earlier, so it's not necessarily a sign that he's trying to bully close to the bubble and open a lot of pots. He hasn't seemed to get too out of line. So I do like this flat from Nole. Especially with the suited combos, I think getting to the flop in position is quite nice. Ace Jack still ahead on a 7-6 deuce flop. And as you see Fournier checking over, you know, that flat off of that stack size does keep Nolay's range quite strong. So it's got to be nice to see no C-bet out of your opponent in this spot when you don't really connect. Finally, somebody connects slightly. <laughs> I 
Delayed C bet from Fournier. 15K. Gets the job done. Cat Arena asks Maria Ho, what place were you out? Paris? Thank you for your question. Let's just say that when you're so far from the money, when you bust, you don't really remember what place you got. But no, I would say like there was 500 players left. Uh oh, yeah, we've got an all in and a call here. Robin Ulatalo at risk with Kings against Ace King. See no ace. So that looks like it's going to be a double up for Robin Ulatalo. <laughs> well, it's back to the main stage, I guess. Just kidding. Nope. A three way all in. Wowza. Till Suplica at risk. Shorty Fedorka at risk. Frank Ladigic has them both covered. And that looks like we're going to see a single elimination as Fedorka wins the pot and Till Suplica is eliminated. And that's going to take us down to 258 players. <laughs> now we're coming back to the main stage. Yeah. 100% right. agree with you. I know it's hard here because no, no. you don't have silvers yeah. and it's a whole no, other I, thing, I, but yeah. 100% agree with you, yes. Yeah. Sam Greenwood talking to Toby Stone about something there. Now three off the money. Okay, well, we know that Vlastos has top pair. We've only seen one of Remain's cards, so we're not sure who's ahead here. Eight. I think it's safe to say that Lewis probably doesn't have queens or ace-queen, as I think those hands would have three-bet pre-against-the-button opener, but, of course, queen-nine a possibility that will have Vlastos beat. Yeah, Okie dokie. Yeah. Tooper. Tooper. Last toast doesn't love that four liner on board. Going to check back. And if Lewis checks here, it'll be a really great opportunity for Lastos to go for value. Optimus Kang says, can we say Lastos is ahead now? What if Romain has Queen 8 of Hearts? Hmm, right, sure. Well, this is bet 50,000. Do we go off with the clock wrong? Mm -hmm. I guess we'll find out. What, what is it? Well, it's 258, so I don't know if there's going oh. hand for hand three off or if uh, it's actually like 257 or 250. I guess they're probably doing the thing now with the county everyone's head to make sure. Yeah. Yeah. Number six. Against the sizing, it just feels like you might just have to cry call especially when you check back the turn with top two there. And, of course, perhaps 
Lewis, we see that he doesn't have this combo because we can see the queen, but of course there will be some combos that are perhaps like 6-5 or 7-5. You know, those hands that might be inclined to turn their hand into a bluff here. You know, that blocks some of the right, lower go. ends of the straight. It's definitely very uncomfortable against this sizing because they either have a straight or they don't. Yeah. Which one is it? <clears throat> Going to be opponent dependent a lot of the times. Of course, Lewis perfectly capable in this spot to turn some of those hands into a bluff. We obviously know that Lewis either has an eight under there or he's got nothing. Mm -hmm. Is having two pair, wow. Is it just like irrelevant? Is the same as having one pair there? Yes, against a polarizing sizing, it is. You know, against maybe a smaller sizing, then there's gonna be maybe some weaker value hands in Lewis's range, but when he bets over pot size there on the river, and he's really saying, I, I, you know, I've either got a straight or I don't. And two pair, last I checked, didn't beat straights. <laughs> so here we go. Down to 257, two off the money, and this announcement here from Mario is confirming that we are going hand for hand now. So two off the money. We go to full bubble mode, and we are playing hand for hand in the EPT Paris main event. Smooth and controlled. Tanisha's so done it again. Also, the point in the tournament we are in, the bubble, is just around the corner. Correct. Nice little emergency premium holding for Bradley here. Off yeah, right. 17 bigs, putting in 16 and leaving one behind. Case of fire on shirt. Break glass for pocket queens. How does Ian Bradley stack up against the other Bradleys? I'm thinking Cooper, Walsh. <laughs> it's really hard to... to compare oneself to Bradley Cooper. <coughs> Got to be the best Bradley. I don't know. Bradley Walsh on Saturday night was hosting The Chase on ITV and at the same time was hosting Gladiators on BBC One. Talk about cannibalizing your audience. I cannot tell you how delighted I am to have Gladiators back on TV. It's just as stupid as it was in the 1990s. Are any of the gladiators still around from the 90s, or are they all CTE'd out? These are, these are all kind of, like, new and improved. But also, there's not enough trash talk. Like, the gladiators, the contestants are all, like, high-fiving each other. Oh, you did well. You tried hard. It's like, no. Wait, so when you say gladiators, is it basically what American gladiators Yes, was? Maria, okay. but it's, it's an English I show, so it's not going to be called American <laughs> gladiators, is it? Why isn't it called English gladiators? I, th I think they were first, to be honest. So. I, so people say, but show me the cold hard proof. I mean, assault wouldn't matter how old you are. They could still bring back... Nitro was Ooh, Nitro. the was the killer. Nitro the was my favorite. Killer. Yeah, yeah, you would like Nitro actually, from what I know of you. <laughs> it's 
smiling face wants to know, what does the 1747 in the top right mean? That was the year the venue was founded. By Marie Antoinette. It's where they made her famous cakes. This is an all-in from Farid Jatin. Farid Jatin is a stone-cold killer at the tables. He is somebody who, from experience, will put you to the test a lot of times, especially when we're talking about on the bubble. He's liable to just have air here, for sure. He's a phenom. His opponent is custard in. Kostadinov. Full board has been dealt. <laughs> board, by the way, is Queen Ten Nine Five Trey. And that is a fold, so Farajatin's shove gets through. <laughs> Daniel says, wait, they play at Versailles? No, a different palace, Le Palais de Congrès. Has play concluded everywhere? I think it has. I think we can deal one more hand. 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 Back to the action at the main feature table. Mm -hmm. Folded to Sam Greenwood, Queen Six of Spades. Not surprising to see him open this at this stage. And the thing is, is other players at the table, of course, are aware that with Greenwood's stack, he is going to be doing this. But there's not a whole lot you can do. You know, you look at ace nine, it's pretty marginal. Do you really want to, you know, pick this spot to try to three bet Greenwood just because you know he's probably going to be opening wider than normal here? Doesn't feel worth it to most of these players to get tangled up with him right now. <clears throat> he was just waiting for permission from Toby to start printing money. Oh, is it hand for hand now? Cool. Give no, me them chips. But no one has permission from Toby to get out of their chair. In fact, they're specifically told not to. That's how we keep this bubble smooth and controlled. Well, you know, if we wanted to get into the minds of someone that does get out of their chair and thinks the rules don't apply to them, we could ask Maria. Because we see her out of her chair pretty no, regularly on the bubble. Not true. Absolutely not. I have... Mm -hmm. I would oh. like to defend myself oh, here, here because I've definitely used the bubble as an opportunity to go to the restroom. So perhaps you just saw me coming back from the restroom i've also used the opportunity to get some steps in because <laughs> i'm on a ten thousand step a day streak i wasn't states. look i wasn't out of my chair i was getting my steps in no it's prime time to do that though <laughs> i'm just pacing that's I'm why toby follower. says please stay in your seats unless you're getting your steps in 
We're going to one of the outer tables. I'm hearing we do have at least one all-in and a call. And it's one of our former feature tables. The table headlined by Simon Vitsiak. The newest member of Team Pro, the winner of EPT Barcelona 2023, is involved in the hand. Three-way action, Vitsiak. Ben Zerfa and Lev Margolin, and I understand that Lev Margolin is the at-risk player. So Margolin has moved all in, and he has been called by both players but you may have heard Toby say there that we're just waiting for action to conclude at every other table before we flip the cards over both players isn't good the board in this hand queen 10 9 5 tray any flashes I don't think so. Wow. <laughs> A really celebration. <laughs> really celebration. <laughs> What's this magical book he's reading from? Is it like a spell book? <laughs> you kind of feel the light should be on the other side, right? So you can see it clearly. <laughs> Don't tell me now if I can see it. Don't tell me. I like you, Jella. It's just like. Huh? Yeah. 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 Well, it looks like play may have concluded. In fact, I'm hearing that there are a couple of other all in calls. <laughs> World famous bubble coverage heating up. <laughs> With the crowd building. Yeah, still got action in the field, but in addition to that hand where there's the two players calling Margolin's all-in, there are two other hands, there are two other tables where we've seen an all-in and a call. And we only need to lose two players before we're in the money. It's all kicking off. Look at all the people getting their steps in. <laughs> I'm a rule follower. I'm standing by that. Uh, you guys, stop it. The urinating? Yes. The step thing? No. And please make attention, please. There are two finals, seven remaining, and three only So we're going to start with Vitsiak's table. Right now, so I'm going to run it here and go to the other tables. I'm going to ask you to stay in your seats so we can move around and the TVT can do their job. So stay in your seats also. I'll be running all the hands. Okay, so on table four we have three players, Yusef, Simon and Lev. Lev is our all-in player. There's a full board, so we're just going to turn off the cards and I'm going to announce the winner. Once again, Lev is our all-in player. Turn off your cards, please. Let's see who the winner is. Whoa! Whoa. Any pair? Oh! Whoa! Whoa! Whoa. 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 Whoa.
Seven three off suit. Bottom pair was good. It's always fun when the rest of the table gets to find out at the same time you do. Okay, so that is a triple up for Lev Margolin. And just to remind you, there are two other tables where there's been an all in and a call. So now Toby's got to deal those out. Now we get a two for two, though. To break the bubble on this hand. We're going to table number 24. What's happening at table 24, Toby? I can tell you it's Jonathan Susan who's at risk, called by Jerry okay, O'Dea. Table 24, we have Ben. Ben and Odim, and Ben is our at-risk player. Who the hell is Ben? We have a four-card board. <laughs> what Running are you doing, second. Ben? <coughs> All right, so Ben is our at-risk player. We have a board of ace, three, five, nine. Ben, our at-risk player. Let's see your cards, please. Ben has ace, two, and Odim has... A pair of kings. So Ben, our Irish player, has a pair of aces. Final card, please. It's Jerry O'Dean against Jonathan Ben Final Sousa. Final card is an eight. And that is going to be a double Still up for two, Jonathan five, Sousa. Seven remaining. What's up? What's up? Still 2-5-7 remaining. We're going to take... Ooh. Ooh. John John. Okay, so... The third all-in is Lorenzo Arduini against Jan Schwippert. Arduini is the player at risk. Arduini. So we've seen a triple up, we've seen a double up, and now we have our third all-in. Are we going to lose a player on this one? Is this going to take us down to the pure bubble? Looks like Toby's in position. All right, we're on table 33. Lorenzo, Lorenzo is an at risk player. Let's see your cards, please, guys. Turn them over. Lorenzo has two aces. Oh, yeah, aces two kings. versus kings. All right, so once again, Lorenzo is an at risk player. Let's see the flop, please. Ace is at risk, but way ahead. Flop is 10, 4, 8, turn card. Turn is ace. Boring. <laughs> That is right, going to be a Still double up. Two, five, seven remaining. Dealers. So Lorenzo Arduini doubles up, and we are still at 257 players. Greenwood doing his thing, of course, opening an early position with the Queen Eight of Diamonds, and Lestos just decides to fold, and you kind of see the power of not only a big stack, but somebody at, of Greenwood's caliber holding that type of stack. I mean, I feel like King Jack suited could have just found a flat there in position, but 
again, these players don't really seem to want to get involved right now. Just so close to the money. Even <coughs> when they have a stack where they can comfortably pl p play post. This is one that can comfortably play post. He ain't scared. He's a man with a plan. Plus, he's got a bone to pick with Sam Greenwood. After they had some really gnarly sets. Well, luckily for him this time, Greenwood doesn't have a pair, so can't really get set over setted. Could still get coolered in some way, just not that way. Real tough to get coolered now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Six of diamonds on the turn. Void beep says nobody wants to be that player. Nobody wants to be the last person out before making profit. Bear in mind, there might be a few players who are in for more than one bullet for whom a min cash would not represent a profit. Yeah, at that point, though, it's, it's a moral victory. Okay. A smaller financial loss. <laughs> You think Forty is a little shook, though? He's like, oh, does Greenwood just have sevens or aces this time? No. You don't, you, know, you don't feel that way? You don't feel that way when someone just absolutely kicks you in the you-know-what, and then now you get what seems like a dream spot? Nah, I'm a sucker for flopping a set. I can't get away from it no matter what. I think he stepped away from the table, called up his dad. I said, Dad, these cards are rubbish. Make me some new ones. <laughs> it was a dead giveaway when his dad put his face on the jack of spades. Looks like Greenwood is giving up here, just checking to Fournier after got that call pre-flop and then after the flop giving credit to Fournier for having a really strong hand here I'm sure if Green would turn some more equity he would have fired that second barrel but just gonna let Fournier have some of his chips back Fournier now once again the biggest stack at the feature table where play has concluded. Remember we're hand for hand so we're waiting for play to conclude at every other table before we deal the next hand. And awaiting information about what's happening out in the field and whether there have been any more all-ins. Someone on YouTube just wrote into the chat that they're at the table watching this, which does not bode well for this bubble ending anytime soon. <laughs> Isn't there some kind of hard stop here in France? A hard arrêt? Yeah, but nobody knows what it is. Don't worry. Toby Stone is on it, and we'll see how long it takes for us to get to the money, and crucially with the clock stoppages, how long it takes for us to get to the end of this level on what we need to adjust and what we need to change as far as the schedule for today is concerned. I think we've got at least one all in here. Two all ins, I'm hearing. Okay, so the first is at table nine. And the other is at one of our former feature tables. Pedro Madeira versus Jorge Ufano. Oof. Ufano. Oh, 
But first, I think Toby's going to go to table nine, where it is Daniel Kyosev against Shakib Mihiri. Is Toby in position? Are we ready to go? The answer is yes. <laughs> two passes have been made in two holding calls. Table number four, we're at right now. We have Pedro and George. And Pedro is our all in player. Jorge, George. Excuse me, we're on table number nine. Daniel and Shakib. Shakib <laughs> is our all in player. If there was a George at this table, he was probably real surprised. I was going to say, we were watching Pedro and Jorge earlier on. Those aren't Pedro and Jorge. All right, All right turn over your cards, please. Daniel shows ace king. Shakib, Shakib also shows ace king. Oh, it's big slick versus ace big slick. Next. Okay, let's do the flop. Next table. <laughs> Just media start moving. Flop is five, nine, Jack. Any flush possibilities? Any nastiness on the horizon? Turn is an eight. Not Final anymore. card, please. Okay, card so three. this ends pot. in a chop pot. <laughs> and you know what they say? Nine. Everyone loves a chop pot. As we move across to the other table, where it is Pedro versus Jorge. <laughs> Go, Toby. Now this is Jorge. Ace King again, offsuit for both players. Ace King again, offsuit for both players. All right, turn uh, floor, please. Top is nine, queen, queen again. Turn card. Turns a three, final card. <laughs> All right, and the final card's a five. To split pot again on table number nine. We're going to continue so? dealing two, five, seven. Remaining dealers, next hand, please. We have another Stand shot pot. pot. And you know what they say? Everyone loves a shot pot again. All right, I'm going to go get some steps in. Ah, Guys, you just let me know yeah, when uh, the bubble bursts. I'll be back. There she goes. And turn. Pivot. And turn. And turn. Is F tier commentary good or bad? F for fabulous? F for freaking awesome? For fudging great? <laughs> anyway, it doesn't matter. They're banned. If, if it was a compliment, I'm sorry. But, uh, you know, you can create another account. So still on the bubble in the EPT Paris main event. 257 remaining. We're in the money when we're at 255. Soren asks, where can we see the remaining players by name? Uh, their birth certificates, their passports, driver's license. Bank <laughs> statements? Bank statement, that feels like enough. Thank you for your question.
Mike says, get these nits out of here. I mean, they're trying. People are getting it in. People are calling. They're getting in with Ace King, and that's just a high card. It's a drawing hand. It's a drawing hand. Not even a pair. Some guy got it in with 7 3. What else could you possibly Bottom pair. ask for? A reminder of the payouts for the top finishers. Min Cash here worth 8,650 euros. Two more players to lose, and we're going to start paying players. We haven't got any super short stacks at the feature table, by the way. No one an immediate risk of elimination. You'd think that all of these players should be able to comfortably make their way into the money. The two shortest stacks are officially Ian Bradley and Guillaume Nolay, but Bradley's got 17 big blinds, Nolay 18 big blinds. And I think we're going to be heading out into the field in just a moment because I'm hearing murmurs of another all-in and a call. Oh, I hope it's another chop pot. What's the friggin' point? Daniel says, first of all, thanks for the commentary. Just want to know how they chose the people for the feature table. By height. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's table two where there has been an all in. Valentino Konakchev has moved all in and has been called by Santosh Suvana. And I think it's one of those situations where Konakchev was pretty much forced all in pre. So these do not have to be premium holdings. Yes, Vahe, anyone can play such live tournaments. The required money is enough. Have the money, be here, be able to prove who you are. That's about it, I think. The floor staff just double checking that play has concluded at every other table and then Toby will make his way to table two to deal out this all in whereas I just said Valentino Konakchev is all in and at risk against Santosh Suvana doesn't look like any board cards have been dealt yet What's happening? Right. Yeah, well, hold up. <laughs> okay, well, that's Queen 10 for Suvana, and the at risk player has nine deuce offsuit. Live. Queen on the turn, that's it. We are going to lose a player here. Valentino Konakchev eliminated in 257th place, and now we're on the pure bubble. to give another uh... 
No. Sorry? Kind of thing. Was it the year that Manic won? Sorry? What, what place did... What, was it the, in the, the money? The event in the Carlos Sunday. 2019. Yeah. yeah, so that would have been... Uh, I don't know, but it's not running. Okay. I don't know, right? That's funny. The Stone Bubble. Yeah, they said some, they lost somebody, but they didn't. I didn't hear what it was, no. No, I guess it was like all in on the way. What was that? I, yeah, I didn't hear. I didn't yeah. hear. I was getting some drunk. Because they didn't like run out of, like if it was, the dealers would have held it if it was all in pre-flop or anything. So. Yeah. It's a game of telephone out there, it sounds like. <laughs> I did think it was slightly weird that Toby didn't call that hand at all, and I understand why the players are like wondering what happened. Anywho, we've got a race here from Romain Lewis, and looks like it's raise and take it. So play concludes at the feature table. Year of Romain. Don't think since we went hand for hand, by the way, I don't think we've had a hand where there hasn't been at least one all in and a call. That's why it's taking so long. Yeah, because the clock pauses every time there's an all-in and a call. And we've seen a triple up, double ups, chop pots. The one elimination, though, and that's taken us to 2-5-6. One more player to lose. How many sub-5 BB stacks do you guys think are out there right now with... 256 players left. How many Two. It's probably a pretty good guess. Yeah. I would say there's probably like yeah. 15 to 20 sub 10 bigs. No, no phone and no phone. Maybe more. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, tens is. What? Tens are. I mean, no. I would Maybe they're straight. The straight is difficult for you to get to, especially with your turn there. Oh, no, check, check, flop. Oh, no, you yeah. might. You might. Yeah. You could have straight. I could have a straight. I could have tens. Okay, yeah. there yeah. is an all in. It is Ignacio Molina who has moved all in and is at risk here. Elliot Houdon has called the all in. So once again, we have at least one all in, still waiting for other hands to conclude at other tables. But we do have at least one all-in to run out. Ignacio Molina at risk. Seems pretty comfy. All-in pre-flop. <laughs> Well, apparently there has been another all-in. Toby is going to be coming to this table first, but there is at least one other all-in and call in the field. And again... Now waiting for a couple of other tables to conclude, and then we will run both all-ins, starting with the one at this table, table 19. And if we get one more bust out, if we lose one player in either of those two hands, we will be in the money. If we lose two players, by the way, they will chop them in cash. Everyone loves a chop cash. Graham says, did I see Barney Boatman there? Probably. Barney is in Paris playing this tournament. Okay, all other tables have finished play, so we have the two all-ins to run. 
and we are going to start with the table we were just at. Toby's making his way there now. A reminder, the at-risk player is Ignacio Molina. Elliot Hood on the other player in the hand. Good boy. <laughs> this guy wants to bend over again. <laughs> Sorry, I can't even finish it without, without laughing. Whoa. Woo! Just waiting for the other tables. But you're ready, yeah? Okay, cool. I think it's mid-deal. Are we good to go, Toby? <laughs> Five, six, seven, eight, nine, on diamond. <laughs> for these two rounds, each main in the main event, we have two holding calls, we're on table number 19. We have Jose and Elliot. Jose is our all-in at all-in player. Turn the guys over, please, guys. Turn the guys over, guys, please. Oh, our Aris player has jacks and he's running to Queens. Flop is ace, king, ace. Turn count. Turn count is a two. The final count, please. Jack on the river required. Final count is a four. No, Queen's hold. We have but we do have another rolling call. We're going to go there right now. So we are definitely in the money. Ignacio Molina busting in 256th place. Will he chop a min cash or will he be the bubble boy? We find out as we go across to the other table where Andrea Robovich is at risk against Johannes Verhagen. We did it, everyone. And by everyone, I mean you. And not we. Them. Pocket Jacks, huh? Who'd have thunk it? It's the James and Joe as well. Stone Bubble. People are going to start disliking that hand. Okay, let's run this out. Said, let's run this out. Ignacio stood there waiting to find out. He's going to make some money. We have Johannes and Andrea. Andrea is our all in play. We already have a full board. So we're just going to turn over the cards and see the winner. Turn over the cards, please. That's a full house. Tens full of nines. That's going to be good. And so. What? Sorry, two five five remaining. You're all in the money. Congratulations, <laughs> everybody. No, let's run it back. It's fine. So Ignacio Molina bubbles the EPC Paris main event. The other 255 players have secured a slice of the 8 million euro prize pool. And we play on. The bubble has burst. Now, because that bubble took a while, we're just running the numbers. 10 minutes left on this level. Mm -hmm. That means we're going to take a break at the end of this level. 15 minutes, because that bubble took its sweet time. 
And that means we'll then play 30 minutes of the next level, not 45 minutes of the next level, because we need to be done by 11.30. There is a hard stop. You're right. So we'll play 30 minutes of the next level, not 45 minutes, and then we'll play the rest of that level tomorrow, along with the rest of the planned agenda for day three. I was just getting into it. All right, so before chat can ask, when's the money? We're in the money. <laughs> now we're just looking forward to the post bubble bust out bonanza. Yeah. And with 10 minutes to play on this level and 30 minutes to play tonight on level 16, I think we will see a fair few eliminations. Uh, I had Ace King, and he raised, and the guy just flattered aces. Okay. And then the flop came, Queen Jack, and like three how to something. Dude, so, I, so I just won like a, no, I just won a really small flop with him, and I was just like, yeah. Three bad. How did this happen? Let me bad beat you. That's a good beat story. Five points for us. Okay. More and then we're done for the this level and then half an hour of the next level. Yes. And uh, one break. Be, be, be yeah. Do we really need the, Do we really need the, a 15 minute break before playing half half an hour? I hate to break this to you, Sam Green, but the break is not just for the players. It's also for the tournament staff. Uh, James, I don't know if you know this, but the only thing that matters is the players. My, my keepers here? I just maybe? thought we were all instructed all right. to table here for the next where it depends. Yeah, I don't think they're going to... I don't think it'll change it for half an hour. No. Is that what, what, like why I could hear all that noise when you were getting your steps in? <laughs> all that sloshing? <laughs> sloshing is such a good word when you think about it. Onomatopoeic. Totes. My goats. Emphasis on the P. <laughs> So one hour left on our live coverage today, and 15 minutes of that will be a break. Feeling giggly. I think it's my jet lag. Yeah, nothing to do with the hilarious guy sitting next to you. I already told you that orange is your color, right? <laughs> Free. Queen high flop, looking good for Greenwood. Sam Greenwood wins that hand. Everything back to normal now. Hand for hand over. You give me back one thing? Yeah. Somebody in chat's asking what the widget said. Oh. And I feel <laughs> like, James, you really don't care about the widget the way you used to. You really don't consult the widget on a regular basis right. anymore. Calm down, Maria. Calm down. <laughs> <laughs> Maria, you're hysterical. Are you... <laughs> Too good for the widget now that you're team pro? You have to remember that the widget is based on the beginning and ends of levels. And controversially, we're going to end play 30 minutes into a level. So the widget can't handle that. It's a very, very simple AI. Okay, what does the widget say at the end of this level, though? In eight minutes from now. Calm down, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> so, 1747, enter. The chat demands to know. I'm just their voice end of this level okay I'm, I'm doing the calculation for end of the day 
Uh, okay, end of the day, 209.6 players. Mm. It's going to be a, a hard... At the end of the day, with a 30-minute... After 30 minutes of yeah. level 16, we're talking about 209.6 players. I think that's going to be a hard no. <laughs> and if we have more than that, I'm going to say that we uh, are going to need... More of a bust-out bonanza early doors tomorrow. It feels like the times we don't get a full bonanza, right, that we get we cut short on the bust-out bonanza, it doesn't really continue into the next day. I think on this occasion it will, because I think the reason why we won't get that full bonanza experience is as soon as you tell people you've only got to survive another 30 minutes to make day three... They kind of yeah. slow down. They clam up. But then, once we get into day three, they go for it. So I'm going to say in the first 30 minutes tomorrow, it's going to be the second phase of the post-bubble bust-out bonanza. Now, I feel like once they pay for another hotel night, they try to stick it all the way through the next day. No, but then they see what they can reg that starts at 1 p.m., <laughs> 2 p.m. <laughs> Some BVB action here, and Meg is going to fold the king high. Hmm. <laughs> Do we already uh, find out where the next jump is? So we're at 249 already. Two uh, still, a, still a bit away from that. Calm down. <laughs> Jeez. Me and Maria's freaking out over here. I know. Us Americans. So demanding. Yeah, we're going to get to 223 players before anyone gets more than I'm in cash. Angry Daniel. Wants to know what time we start tomorrow. Same time as today, 12.30 Central European time. Sacramento says, James, do the math for me in American time. Yeah, because America only has one time zone, so yep. it's really easy for me to do. U.S. time zone. Next thing he's going to say that we only have one currency. Yeah, Bitcoin. Wow. Got a pump. To the moon. <laughs> Hodler. <laughs> well done to Mark of the Beats for giving an answer that is not a North American time zone. Ace 8 6 on the flop. What is it in Marshall Island time? Is that a real thing? I think so. <laughs> it's uh, two hours and seven minutes behind GMT. Japs and YouTube chat says, guys, bring back the big game, please. Hmm. Where have you been? Well, have I got news for you? Who's going to tell him? ETA indeterminate. However, in the works. Three minutes till the break. 245 players remaining. That means 10 of cash so far.
People in chat want to know if Spraggy's still in, but me personally, I want to know is Guile Bowman still in? Wasn't she in? No. Oh, she's one of the first no. players out today. <gasps> I, I was too busy getting knocked out myself to know, so what would happen to anything standard? Three way all in. She and Tonka eliminated in the same hand. Ooh. She was wearing dungarees, Tonka wasn't. The dungarees couldn't bring her any luck, huh? No. Nick Moore asks, are there slot machines at the venue? We go to our slots correspondent, Joe Stapleton, for the answer to that question. I don't know. I mean, they're certainly not in the shopping mall. <laughs> if there were slots, I guess they'd be at Le Club Barrier, right? Which right. is on the Champs-Élysées. If there were slots, Joe wouldn't be here right now. Joe would be taking an extended break. I'd be cashing a giant check right now, probably. Joe, not normally a fan of European slots. Goes check, check on the flop after this was a limped pot pre, and Lewis trying to get to showdown with bottom pair, but just a pretty nasty looking board. King. <laughs> oh. Oh. Neuf, c'est bon. Neuf à la banque. Squeeze in one more hand before we take the last break of the day. Just to remind you of the plan for tonight. 15-minute break at the end of this level, and then 30 more minutes of play. You're going to play the first 30 minutes of level 16. So that means the first session of play tomorrow is going to be an hour of level 16 straight in to level 17. So that's two and a half hours of poker without a break. Joe's got his excited face on right now. That's not all I have on. Once again, brought to you by... Depends. There you go. Depends, the reliable option for commentators everywhere. For when you just can't miss a hand. There's a little secret. What do you do? I love raising the hand right before break because people really will pass up on the marginal spots more often than not because they want their full break. I, I, I pass up on those marginal spots because I normally need a wee really badly at this point. That's the debate we should be having, not over masks. Is it okay to wear Depends and just go at the table? I mean, I suppose, you know, if the argument for masks, well, one side of the argument is that it's to keep other people safe and it's for uh, the other players at your table, then one would say that depends, probably not. So would you have a different rule for depends if it's the final <laughs> table? <laughs> what if it was for a legit medical reason? You know, sometimes you can call. What? Yeah, I mean, you only say <laughs> that in last for you. when you have what a hand that you can't option? call a three bet with. <laughs> right. Here's our fault. That's going to take us to the break. So during that session, we did burst the bubble. And we're going on break with 240 players remaining in the EPT Paris main event. And we are going to play into level 16 tonight. 30 more minutes of action before we close proceedings. 
and resume tomorrow at 12.30 Central European time. Of course, the blind's going up to 2K, 5K with a 5K big blind ante. Going to put the pressure on a couple of players at the feature table, those players being Guillaume Nolet and Ian Bradley. Gregory Fournier remains the table chip leader with 82 big blinds. So more actions. We continue to watch these eight guys and see selected action from the field on the other side of this short break. And then we'll close out day two of the Paris main event here on the PokerStars European Poker Tour. Wow, look at the trophies. Oh, I love the trophy cabinet. That's so awesome. I have, I have so, so good uh, background physique for you. <laughs> He's won an EPT trophy, he's won a World Series of Poker main event, and more importantly, he has won our hearts. Hussein Ensan, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, James. Good to see you. Good, good to see you. And uh, uh, I'm very happy to be guest uh, for your podcast. Thank you. Hussein, you always seem very happy. Is that only when we see you, or are you happy most of the time? Uh, I am one, one happy man, so I'd be always, <laughs> I'd be always uh, happy to my, my friends, my guests, and to myself also. This well, is I'm glad to hear that. You're, you're kind of a, a mystery to us ever since, you know, we first saw you uh, in that seniors event. We've always been very interested. Who is this person? So when you're not playing poker, what is your life like? Do you have a, 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 a job, other hobbies? Do you have a family? I have family. I have uh, my wife. I have my daughter. And I have one beautiful uh, dog named Filu. And <laughs> it's a big job. And one big house. And a big, yeah, it's a big job taking care of that dog and a family, yes. I guess. Um, so at what point in your life did you discover poker? Um, poker poker is uh, popular in in Europe since the beginning 2000. And uh, I met uh, this beautiful game in, in Europe. And uh, I fall in love in this game. And I started with that, but very small. And uh, at, uh, as I see my success, then I try to play the higher than before. And so from uh, from 2000, 2001, yes. Got it. Okay. So do you consider yourself uh, to be a professional poker player? So professional poker player, but what can I say? So I play a lot and... Uh, I uh, I take uh, a lot of uh, events in year and professional poker player. How can I say I'm professional poker player? Yeah. So before you discovered poker in the two thousands, what what did you do before that? So um, the, I am original uh, civil engineer. Oh, oh. cool! <laughs> but I didn't work in this uh, uh, in this job. I started with a lot of uh, jobs and my before, before, before professional poker player, I had my own uh, business with taxis and with drivers. And I was so flexible. I could play poker everywhere. Right. So, and uh, I, I, I see my success in poker. Then I sold my, my business and I started with poker. Yes. Nice. Well, it's certainly working out for you. Joe referenced that we first saw you when you won that seniors event in Barcelona. And all of us said, hold on a second, look at this guy. He's not old enough to play a seniors event. <laughs> and you still don't look old enough to no. play a seniors event. So thank you. Thank you for the compliment. So uh, I was in Barcelona and this year, nine, uh, 2014, I'm from uh, 1964. And I saw, <laughs> I saw uh, a senior event and you can play with 50. And I was already 50 in May. 
And I decided to play uh, for main event uh, qualifier. Then I see so senior event. Why not? I play senior event. I play that. And uh, I heard now it was the first senior event by the APT. Yes. And I am very proud of myself. The first one APT senior event, I won that. And then you play the main event, which was the 100th EPT main event. Yeah. You made it to the final table. You yeah. made it to the top three where you did a deal. I mean, what a great start to the European Poker Tour for you. So, uh, uh, I won my, my ticket through a uh, qualifier. And uh, then I tried. I had before my experience in small tournament. And I tried to do, and I tried to use my experience, all my experience on was I was so focused in this tournament. And uh, so fortunately, I got uh, last three player. And after deal, I was very happy with my game and with my, with my result. And this, this, this event changed my poker life. After that, I had my bankroll. I could play so some higher than before. And it was just over a year later, of course, that you find yourself heads up at EPT Prague. You became a main event champion. And the biggest takeaway is I now know never to mumble at the poker table because you need to be very clear whether you're saying I call or good call. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, it was uh, uh, James, I, I, I hear always uh, dealer, they give card, and my opponent. And uh, uh, I think she was uh, uh, the name. I forgot this name. And uh, she said to me, "Call." And that's why I, if I if I have nothing, I fold my hands. Yeah, like always. And uh, I said, uh, I heard uh, call. Then I said, I have nothing. I have just five. And. Uh, he told, he said to me, the, my, my, the, uh, the runner up, uh, club trending, he said, no, I said only it's good call. Then after that, I think about that. He cannot call with eight high. That's why I was, uh, so yeah. I accept this, uh, good call. Yeah, we we really like the way that you guys handled that. <laughs> I mean, that was a very, um, you know, very sporting way of, yeah. of of handling it and being fair about it, not really having to push an angle. But what yeah. I love best is the fact afterwards when you both realize that I thought I was bluffing, but I had the best hands. Like, Please don't bluff, but you had nothing. You had nothing either. It was just, <laughs> it was a great moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is is uh, is I I see I see this game like sport. And you have to be always sportly on the table. Absolutely. So, okay, we know that before you won the World Series of Poker main event, you had a life-changing poker moment, you just said, in the Barcelona main event. When you won the World Series of Poker, was that life-changing? Or was that just like a cherry on top? No, for sure, life-changing uh, in the sense uh, you have more money than before, it's for sure. And uh, <laughs> don't change, don't change my life. So uh, you have more respect on the table. And uh, um, and uh, you have to be always good ambassador for this sport. Yeah. And you have to, uh, you, you, have, you have always the uh, responsibility to, to, to media and- uh, Yeah, and like to, this. To, 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 uh, yeah, to society and uh, yeah, it's, it's not as winning. Winning the, the event is m much easier as uh, you be for always champ is uh, big responsibility. It is a big responsibility. I want to talk to you about your playing style a little bit. Uh, it is unique. Uh, it is not, you know, like people have a hard time predicting it. Uh, is there like a certain strategy or sort of philosophy you go along with in poker or are you just in the moment improvising so i can say in the moment live poker is not so uh, like uh, online online you have to uh, to take her always of mathematic how many big blinds you have and uh, in live is 
also the same. It's like a, a small difference. And uh, I try, I try always to confuse my opponent. I have, I go over sometimes with nothing. I made a big bluff. And uh, sometimes I have caught and take a best value from my hand. <laughs> and uh, I mean, I mean, strategy is, uh, is more important than mathematics. And day, day for day is, is different. So they want, for me, they want is the uh, stronger uh, day. And uh, day two is a different. If I have chips, I try, I try to work with my chips. And yeah, we can tell. <laughs> I try to work with my chips, and uh, for sure, for sure, I know uh, always how many big blinds I have, and how many big blinds had my 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 opponent. And I try if I if I have good hand, I try to get the best value from my hand. If I have nothing, I try to pressure my opponent. Its work is the uh, the uh, uh, other other question. So what he's saying really here to translate, guys, is that no matter what happens, he's trying to win every single pot, which um, <laughs> we can all attest to. We have seen that. Hossein, one last question for you. Obviously, we talked about Barcelona as the first place you popped up on our radar. Uh, it, does that mean Barcelona is special to you? Is it a special place? And will you be there this year? So, Joe, I have two uh, favorite city, three, now three, Vegas also. <laughs> before, before Vegas and Amsterdam. Amsterdam is not far, far away from my home. It's only two, two hours drive. And uh, I have to say, I learned my, my, my poker game in Holland and in, in Germany. Cool. And uh, two favorite city, first one, Barcelona, they changed my poker life. And it's a beautiful city, for sure. And... Uh, Amsterdam also and Vegas for sure. Hossein, I'll tell you what, if I get the chance, we're going to meet up in Amsterdam. How about that? Yeah, I come to London and I see you in London for many years. Okay, we'll, we'll see you in London then. Hussein, yes. it was... I was saying it was great to relive your past successes and obviously we expect to see many more on the EPT in the future. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for talking to us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for inviting and... Uh, uh, all the best. I hope see you soon in uh, in Prague or in uh, London or uh, everywhere of this uh, planet. Thanks, Dad. Love you. I love you too, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Paris and the PokerStars European Poker Tour as we enter the final 30 minutes of day two of the main event in partnership with the Club Barrier. We're into the money, we burst the bubble, and now we're going to play out 30 minutes of the post-bubble bust-out bonanza before we wrap day two. Same lineup on the main stage. Gregory Fournier still among the chip leaders. Sam Greenwood also a big stack. Couple of shorties, Guillaume Nolet and Ian Bradley. Now we are playing. 2k 5k blinds with a 5k big blind ante. It's James Haskin with Joe Stapleton. Hello, my babies. And we are rejoined by Maria Ho. Hello again. So yeah, with 30 minutes to play, we will hit our deadline. 11.30 is as late as we can go, not to break any rules in France. I don't want to piss off the French, that's for sure. Wicked 618 says, you mean two and a half K, five K with a five K big blind Nancy? No, I mean what the level actually is. 2K, 5K with a 5K big blind ante. Thank you for your comment. If you guys are going to come for James, you better come correct, you know? Don't try him. 
And I know that traditionally, and by traditionally I mean games where there is a traditional anti-play, the small blind is always half the value of the big blind. One of the interesting adjustments that has been made in tournaments around the world, not just the EPT, is where you are employing a big blind anti, an adjustment to make the small blind actually less than half of the big blind. Huh. It certainly, you know, plays a factor into what hands you're going to want to defend with and what hands you're going to limp in with from the small blind. Of course, it's, you know, it's hard to pass up a good deal when it's, you know, half or more, you know, when it's like such a good price that you're going to get to limp in from the small blind, but you can maybe fold a little bit tighter given the smaller small blind price. You know what would be cool is if every player individually puts in an ante. They should try that. I feel like dealers would quit. <laughs> it's so hard after the big blind ante to go back to that, especially for the dealers. But think of players like MJWK27, Ray, who wants to know, why do we have to pay the big blind twice now when we're playing live? Oh. Isn't it crazy? We were just talking about that, actually. How dare they? Inflation. Philip the Razor Razor says, I play at a club where the big blind ante is the size of the small blind, and it just didn't always confuses me. That's not a big blind ante, is it? That's a small blind ante, posted by the big blind. I play at a club where twos are wild and nines are twos. I bet you win in that one, don't you? Crush. <clears throat> That's a fair question from Raksha. Are the nines also wild if they're twos? No, just regular twos. Right, okay. But it does mean that you can have up to eight twos. Last of being... Well. Double quads? <laughs> yeah. Ox. Sorry, Maria, did you James, want to say something never, real? we're never going to play in this game. This sounds like absolutely no, I, circus I, games. I, I don't know. When he told me that double quads were a thing, I got excited. <laughs> the thing is, you don't need it because just the fifth deuce is enough. I was just commenting on how... Blastos folding that ace three suited from mm. under the gun is a little snug. It's a little snug, but, you know, things are winding down. People want a bag for day three. It's also going to be in Sam Greenwood's big blind that you're opening into, and he's a little intimidating. Sorry. One, one of the best. One of the best. Post bubble slowdown bonanza.
235 players remaining, so 20 bust out since we burst the bubble. 20 <coughs> players who will have been paid. All the way around to Ian Bradley, who is one of the shortest stacks of the table. Opens with Queen 10. Before that was a good year, wasn't it, Maria? Oh, yeah. The best. Yeah. Is it too much to ask for one more disgusting cooler before the end of the day? Ian B. Radley. He's open with ace eight of diamonds. No lay with 10-8 of clubs. Rastos calling in the small blind with King-10. Hmm. And 4-3 deuce with two diamonds looking good for Bradley. Has the best hand with ace high. And the nut flush draw. They're trying. You know, I wouldn't say that this is a spot where when the small blind calls a raise pre flop that the pre-flop aggressor is going to be betting range here. So certainly looks pretty strong, especially with the sizing that Bradley chose. All right, Elias says, do you commentators have any jokes? This is getting boring. Maybe later. We're going to check on some of the other faces in the field. Players not at the feature table, including one of our goal pass winners, Noah Chan. The mixologist who's made the money. Now, earlier I said Noah qualified for one euro. It's actually 11 euros, but still, that's pretty impressive to win a gold pass for 11 euros. And he is now in the money. Spraggy has cashed another EPT. As far as former champions are concerned, we still have Anton Wig, the winner of Copenhagen in 2010. We have... Last year's runner-up, Peter Jordner. <laughs> and we have the newest member of Team Pro, EPT Barcelona 2023 champion, Simon Vitsiak. Maria literally almost broke her neck looking at the Peter Jordner shot. 
it's just it's just a joke. Stay why'd you say that on air? It's supposed to I just mean be your a neck just grew three extra it's inches. A joke. Engorged oh, one might say. I mean, with, with, sacred. With, with the exception of one person, I'm not going to mention any Spraggies. I mean names. They were all handsome fellows. Oh, my goodness. Hey, Mick. Top pair. Right, this guy's becoming boring. He's getting banned. Oh, later. This guy's getting boring. He's getting banned. Double later. Well, that was a fun way to do it. I want to see that more often. I get tried to get away. Oh, no, no, no. You get back here. Not a great board for top pair. But Lewis really has... Very little showdown value, which is why you see him reaching for chips. Just going to test the waters. Just a little stab. Not going to get away <clears throat> just yet. I mean, hmm. you might have to follow it up with another barrel. And also, it will depend on what the river card is. But Nick's certainly just going to be calling here and deciding on the river. Just happy to try to bluff catch here with kings and nines. Again, Lewis. Not a whole lot of showdown in sight. Does feel like he is targeting a lot of these, you know, perhaps king x, jack x, queen x. These weak hands that, of course, doesn't love the four liner, doesn't love the flush coming in. Interesting sizing, you know, certainly mm. <laughs> makes it look like, of course, they could be value betting some better King X's, some hands that are just really hoping for a call, giving Imix such a good price here on the end. I mean, if this works, so that's such a great risk versus reward proposition for Lewis to go for this size. Uh, going to draw for hand. Like that's a big if. Doesn't look like it's going to work. But you can't blame him for trying. Did I hear an announcement, maybe? Yeah, clock has been paused because we now deal for the last number of hands to play this evening. And that number is three. Three more hands to play before the conclusion of day two. Is it the same table tomorrow? No. Redraw. Redraw overnight. Oh, there's another one. No, I just mean the, the table mix, yeah. I get too hot here. Yeah, like when the music, when I can dance. <laughs> Bradley with Queens. Eight 
A fitting hand for the near end here in the former home of Marie Antoinette. You get the music, you get to stack your chips in, in tens. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, I feel like that. Good. We should put some music in the studio. Let's, let's go for it. What's music? <laughs> Can you guys have the awful music here? Yeah? Okay. Yapanuna asks, Maria, tell the truth now. Isn't it way better finishing early in Paris? I mean, the world is your oyster now. It's true. Now I can actually have oysters because last night I went to dinner with a friend and I usually try not to eat a lot of raw seafood before I have to play because I had a couple of bad (laughs) (laughs) food poisoning incidents actually. But now, literally... Paris and oysters. That's on the agenda. Actually, tomorrow I'm going to get to uh, go see the Rothko exhibit at the Louis Vuitton Foundation. That should be nice. I heard it was. Uh, it's a really good exhibit, actually. The building looks incredible oh, from the does. outside. I haven't seen. I haven't seen it in person. I've only. Is seen that it a uh, charity that gives handbags to the less fortunate? favorite usually when I make a joke and it's very quiet like that it's because everyone's muted their microphones and they're laughing so hard that this was not one of those times <laughs> this was true crickets to be fair to you it's really more about the fact that it's quarter past 11 and uh, it's been a long day Maria's just afraid of laughing herself out of a Louis Vuitton sponsorship deal eventually. That would be the day. Glorious, glorious day. Penultimate hand of day two. Penultimate hand? Oh, it says it right there. Penultimate hand. Okay. This is it, Joe. You have two more hands to get a massive cooler. We can do it. King Jack of Strawberries. Mm. We saw the last of us fold King Jack of Diamonds against an open earlier, but that was when we were a few away from the money, so... This time it looks like he will play. Hmm. Fournier in the small blind folds. And Swerdlo folds the big blind. So heads up to the flop. Three hard flop. Hard, hard, hard. Ace, queen, nine. So, gut shot for Vlastos. Top pair for Sam Greenwood. Greenwood going to check. A little pot control here, especially because, you know, Vlastos could have the better ace is pre also with a couple of draws on board you know, certainly there's going to be a lot of hands in the mix where it's going to be hard <coughs> to get multiple streets of value with top pair and a lot of bad turns as well where you're not going to love where you're at with top pair either I 
don't think I've ever seen Sam Greenwood fold the best hand. I don't think he's going to fold <clears> now. I think he's just going to check call and decide. You know, so far from what we've seen of Lastos, he hasn't really been out of line. Doesn't seem like, especially post-flop, right? Just hasn't necessarily taken a lot of liberties. So Greenwood, of course, probably thinking about that as well. But Lastos with a little bit of showdown now turning a king, of course, you know, not going to beat any of these ace -Xs that played as a check call. I don't think Sam with the flush draw would have checked the flop. I think he's going to be betting a lot of those himself. You know, maybe some queen X's like some queen jack type stuff might have been a check call, but now you're beating those with your pair of kings. This is an interesting bet. Good for you. Keep on trucking. Do not envy you playing against Sam Greenwood in or out of position. Greenwood doesn't block any straights or flushes. Oh no. The live read. There you go. I saw it. I seen it. Sam Greenwood is capable of folding the best hand. Doesn't seem very happy about it though. No, he looks pained, troubled. Haunted. And it's the ultimate hand. Yep, one more hand left to play. And the surviving players will bag and tag and come back for day three. Finishing the day halfway through a level, or not even is the coward's way out, in my opinion. Your opinion ain't worth <laughs> Believe me, I've been told that all day today. <laughs> Last one. Last one. Last time. You can hear the, the <laughs> murmur in the room. Everybody all chatty. More than a murmur. I'd say it's a hubbub. There is a hubbub, you're right. Look how happy he is. Well, Nolay's going to try to get away with this open before the day ends. Bag up a couple more BBs off of that short stack that he's been playing since the last level. Three pass, four pass. <clears throat> After that double up with Kings against Jax, really wasn't able to get any more momentum, but <laughs> just getting away with this one would be pretty nice, <coughs> and it looks like he will. All right. Yeah. It kings last time. Raise and take it on the last hand of the day. Yeah, yeah. I don't have jacks. Yeah. I, jacks, I, I, was, I didn't want jacks. In, I yeah, yeah. Thank you. And that will do it for day two of the EPT Paris main event, the day that we made the money. ID card in the bag. Play concluding at all the other tables as well. Looks like we'll be returning tomorrow with Vacheron. Two, two, two players. And these are the stacks of the guys we've been watching on the main stage. Blinds will stay the same. Remember, we've still got 60 minutes to play at the 2K, 5K blind level. So, Guillaume Nole, whilst being the shortest stack, still has a fair few hands to play before he's in real trouble. These are the overall chip leaders. It's Elliot Houdon who'll come into day three as tournament boss with close to a million chips, close to 200 big blinds. Farid Jatin, 
is a top 10 stack, sixth in chips overall. And a reminder, Spraggy has made it through the day. Simon Vitsiak has made it through the day. So Team Pro is still well represented. Check out stories and updates from the European Poker Tour available to read on the Poker Stars blog. And make sure you join us for day three of the EPC Paris main event. We will be back tomorrow at 12.30 local time. That's 12.30 Central European time. But for now, from Maria Ho, Nick Walsh, Griffin Benger, Joe Stapleton, and me, James Hartigan, it is good night from Paris. Thanks for watching day two of the European Poker Tour. Breaking the waves Stand up like you